Space now. Can you see that we are better? Better than. Hello, hello, welcome, Moose Wars 2. Uh, we are coming at you with Magma Mayhem 1v1s. We had a fantastic ride with 2v2s yesterday, but right now, me, myself, Graffiti, I am joined by the wonderful, fantastic, everybody say <laughs> hello to the one and only Barhu. How are you doing? I'm, di I'm doing real good, man. I appreciate the intro, man. I'm excited, man. We got some great matches. Hi, if I'm do same most myself. We got Magma Mayhem going on. Up first, we're going to have Luna and Snowy. They are teammates, so this might be a bittersweet ending, you know what I'm saying? But I'm excited, man. Appreciate the intro, too. How you doing, bro? I'm doing pretty good, and I've actually had a lot of fun following along with this bracket. There's been quite a few interesting developments to get us here, and Luna facing off against Snowy is no exception. Now, the PR14, Snowy has been... Um, playing or focusing his attention a little bit less in ones in the past year or so to really hone in his skills in twos. And uh, it's really been paying him off because right now he's in the running to be one of the best 2v2 players in the world. And there is, I mean, after his performance in twos recently, it's kind of hard to deny that. But also after what we saw, he got, uh, I think, like seventh at Dallas recently, right? Yeah, yeah, he was playing really well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And, you know, you can see the earnings, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, Snowy more known for his 2v2 playing, but both players, man, they got a substantial amount of earnings, so anything can happen, man. I'm really excited to see it. Luna definitely more known for his 1v1 play, so he is technically the favorite in this situation, but I've been watching a lot of Snowy streams lately, man. He's been working, and he's been, he's been playing some Vector, so he might pull out this series, but I really hope he pulls out this Vector, man. He's been going crazy at the Vector piece. I'm hoping to see some, you know, different gameplay for sure. Yeah, Snowy has also been really uh, expanding the pocket of characters he can always toss out. Because for a while, I think it was it was not really that many characters he could throw out. It was uh, the Rayman and the Zul for a little bit. But now he's been kind of expanding around a little bit. Like you said, we had the Vector and we got, also got the Asuri coming up. And he's also really, really been refining Canon. And he has been... Uh, He's been aiming for the skies with it, but right now uh, we are going to be locking in with fully default Asuri. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're getting into the map selections here right now. It's looking like we're going to be starting game number one on Demon Island. You know what I'm saying? We got some demons. It's only fitting right here. Both championship <laughs> players, you know. Let's get right into it. Surrey, default, like you said. Default, Lucian. Brit. Gameplay is definitely not about to be default, man. Let's get right into it. Two of Hypnotic's most accomplished players start out in winner's quarter finals. Luna immediately chasing Snowy around the map with Guitar. Snowy's able to pick up Sword. Maybe Snowy now have to play a little bit more defensively to try and uh, give us off a little bit more breathing room against Luna's Guitars, but throws it away, hoping for Blasters, but Snowy is able to snag Guitars right out from under his nose. Luna still trying to maybe like bait out an attack or uh, predict where Snowy's going to move, but now Snowy is on top of it and has reclaimed control of this game but that is only before luna has picked up the blasters this could sway very quickly now oh no for sure like you said luna i'm off all snowy starting to take control of this first stock right here luna did have it in the beginning but luna's definitely not gonna back down luna is insane with these blasters not afraid to go all in sweating bullets but still throwing shots there goes Ooh. the recovery for the kill first stock going to luna has a little bit of ground to make up for, but he did build up a pretty nice early lead in the beginning. That's definitely going to be a huge favor. You can see just how far that unarmed Nair was able to send. Guitars are going to be good to build up a little bit more damage, but I think he's hoping to switch to Sword. Maybe not. Guitar recovery sends on Demon Island, mind you. So that early lead serving Snowy a huge favor and is so far, yeah, no, is able to stop Luna from building up extra credit, is able to keep the game even. Although he did have a little bit of a, a speed bump when Luna first got uh, blasters, Snowy has now really reassessed the game state, starting to get some reads on the Luna, and is he in a bit of a lead? Yeah, he is. You know, he just was behind, you know, Luna taking the first dog, but, you know, Snowy taking control back of this game. This is really important. You do not want to let another player get too far ahead in these games, you know. Right now, Luna in kill percentage right here. Snowy going for that sig, not going to hit. One kill, one heavy hit will do the trick for both these players right now as they're both in the red. Yo, good weapon toss to throw out the sig. Nice. Luna weapon in hand. Snowy trying to get his footing. Jeez. Ooh, nice slide uppercut for the finish. Snowy taking control right now. Up one stock, but he is in kill percent. Has to be careful. Try and get as much extra credit as he can right now before he goes down. Uh. Snowy is able to get that clash, but doesn't quite convert into anything. Snowy just trying to find his way back to stage, but Luna is able to get the reversal. But still, all the extra credit that Snowy is able to build up still persists. And uh, yeah, no, Luna might have to play a little bit from behind and chooses to play this game with Guitar. Hey, this is a Guitar showdown right here. Luna trying to show who's the man right here, but Snowy keeping, keeping Luna on stage. Luna makes it back. Damage deficit in favor of Snowy right now. So he's in a position to take this game. Sarah gonna get him off stage. One kill. Oh. Luna going for the ledge guard situation. Snowy sweating bullets. He touches ground. He's safe for now. It is not over yet, though. Even though Luna's in red, he's somehow taking the control of the tempo of this game. One hit. Not gonna do it. He's another one of those recoveries if he wants to take this game number one. GC recovery is gonna do it. <laughs> Game number one. Favor is Snowy, wasting no time, no change in characters, right back to the map select. And I'm thinking we're gonna see Demon Island again, and yes, we are. Snowy proving just how he was able to top eight at, uh, at uh, Dallas, considering right. all of the odds stacked against him, all of the numbers that went the opposite way than a lot of us predicted to go. So in that game, uh, Join Finning Knight pretty comfortably in. I think Snowy, now that he's finally kind of started a master two, might be able to shift his attention a little bit back over to ones. And I think we also could be seeing the start of Snowy being the top of the leaderboard of both game modes. Because usually for the past few years, he's really only had to choose one. It's either top three ones or top three and twos. But we could be seeing a brand new Snowy who is chasing top three for both games. I, I agree. I really think it's the Snowy era starting in the ones, you know what I'm saying? He has won a couple 1v1 championships like the Winters here and there, but I think, like you said, it's about to be started with something consistent. Right now, the set series in favor of Snowy up 1-0. Who will take this first stop? Oh my god. Nice GC side series. Weapon toss, classic, recovery, constant pressure coming out from Snowy right now. Luna's struggling to find his footing. First stop going to Snowy. 
also Snowy had some very, very uh, patient gameplay along with some good decision making. You can see there, <laughs> chooses to does not get, uh, not get hit by the skill check and chooses a pretty decent punish to follow up after that. Although Luna is able to uh, uh, cancel Snowy's uh, recovery, or, yeah, cancel Snowy's uh, re return to the ground of that end sig. Snowy's decision making is looking really, really good. And at times where he needs to be patient, he's playing patient. At times where he needs to play fast, he's able to play fast and fantastic awareness of the game state and luna you can even see chase dodging a bit around trying to dance a bit around is only weapon starving snowy having a very hard time adapting to this new and improved snowy 2.0 bro he is putting the beat down with the unarmed punches kicks coming out everything's connecting snowy does he have the download does he have the luna pod oh my god weapon toss no sweating bullets Ch chase dodge helps him get back but you know Snowy wants to win this, man. This would be such a big mental victory right here. Moving forward in the bracket, taking out the brackets. Like I said, right now, being honest, most people, Luna, got definitely the favorite right now. So Snowy taking control, like you said, Snowy 2.0. Oh, the ground pound, double G. Ah, oh, that's it. We going into Luna, first lead of the series. Or a set, uh, game, my fault. Can he keep it going, though? Can he secure this game number two right here? Trying to get as much extra credit as he can. He also has Luna downloaded very, very well. You can even see how patient Snowy is off stage and almost completely costs him. Snowy being so confident off stage, saying like, no matter what you throw at me, I can always try and find my way back. I do not need to roll back. I am just a navigator and that end sig finds his path. Yeah, no, Snowy, you can even see a lot of times that Luna would try to throw out, a text, uh, uh, throw out attacks. Snowy is either already out of the way of it oh or just knows how to react to it and is always ready for the next attack. Oh but God. Luna is stepping up the pace with the unarmed and immediately taking Snowy's spot for uh, best unarmed gameplay in the tournament. <laughs> now unarmed into guitars and give it a match still. No, he said right back at you, man. Like, in my opinion, I think Luna is honestly the best unarmed player in the game right now. And he is so good in these high pressure situations. The way the game looking right now, I think he takes it. And yes, he does with the NSYNC for the confirm. Even in the setup, one to one. Again, wasting no time. Getting right back into the map. Bands. Looking like Demon Island going to be banned, man. Can Luna take control in this series and close out, man? One to one. Everything's even right now. But, got to be careful, this is a very high level gameplay, very high level players, and they do with that, man. Let's see, does, does Luna have the Snowy download, man? Uh, I think he's, in my opinion, he's definitely one of the best players in a 1v1 situation when it comes to adapting and when it comes to high pressure situations. Yeah, Luna is the guy. Even the times where uh, like a huge upset happens and he's not PR1 and he falls down like two or three, he's still the guy to beat. Even if he's not, at the top of the level, he's still always the bar to reach. And whenever someone tries to step up the bat, usually there's the question of like, is he better than Luna? And a lot of the times the answer is kind of hard to say yes. There's a lot at there's a lot at play if you want to try and beat mm. Luna, but Snowy starting to uh, really pick up the pace, prove his point of just how much he deserves to be in top eight winner's side. Because reminder, this is uh, these are top eight qualifiers, and if you drop this set, your chances of getting the top eight are uh, they're lowered pretty drastically because you've got to go through a lower uh, lower bracket set as a, uh, as a entirely separate top eight qualifier, and that match is going to be so much more difficult than this one. So although you still have that safety net, you got another set to go through uh, to get in the top eight, and that's a very tough, but difficult situation. Oh no, yeah, for sure. This is double elimination tournament. You want to keep both oh. guys. Oh my God, that sends him off stage, sweating bullets, and he's gone. I think. I think it was worth it, man. I think it was no, worth that was it. A good yeah. Trade, yeah, that was definitely a good trade, man. Both players, white stock, Luna up a whole clean stock in this game number three right here. Snowy's gonna have to pull up something miraculous if he wants to take this. You know, like Luna, he's he's the super villain of Brawlhalla in my opinion. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's Snowy the superhero though. Let's find out, man. Right now, down the whole stock. Like I said, Luna's so good in these pressure situations. I see him extending this lead more and more as we keep playing. Oh man. Luna's putting in pain with these blasters right now. Snowy's struggling it. They make a comeback. Yeah, Luna is uh Luna's hits are really starting to find their mark a lot more. Probably spending some time in the Ooh. target range, honing in his <laughs> aim. And after that second nice. game, I was about to say I would still be a little bit worried from Luna, because Snowy still had down 
Lu Snowy still had Luna downloaded so well, and Luna was o only able to take, uh, only able to deal hits whether or not it was situations that he forced her off a of chip damage, and that game was mostly in Snowy's control, and it was just one breakaway that right. let Luna bring the game to basically dead even. But that game was looking a lot more triumphant, for sure. and now I'm a little bit less worried for this Lucid. No, uh, yeah, for sure. Like you said, first two games, extremely close. Game number three. He thought some Snowy had Luna downloaded, but he got some new files, man. He's looking very strong right now. Oh my god. First stop. Yeah, no, taking no clean. damage. That's zero to KO, yeah. 15 seconds into the game, bro. Zero to death coming in from the super villain Luna himself, man. Bro's trying to move on, go to top eight winner side. He is not trying to waste any more time, man. Oh my god, he like you said, finding his mark, man. Luna really starting to find his rhythm in this series. He's he's really not starting to miss anything at this point. Like you know, I said, the gameplay is uh, giving me like, some vibes up right now. Word. Like, if you uh, you saw Pierre take second place, and I'm pretty sure it was Autumn's of uh, last year, 22, right? Yeah. And you remember just how creative Pierre was with his combos? He was hitting like GC side lights that no one ever should be able to hit. Thanks, thanks. Luna's giving me vibes of that. Luna <laughs> is being so creative with his combos. I'm on the same character too. Pierre was playing Lucian, and look where Luna is now. This is, I think Luna's learned his lesson from almost giving a first oh to Pierre, and has really taken a page out of uh, Pierre's book. And these, these are combos that I don't even really think you can hit the training room. They are so specific to this match alone. No, thanks. Luna really taking control of this series, man. Like I said. He's, he's, he's not uh, one to falter in these top pressure situations. You know, you give him a lead, he will run with it. You know, Snowy's been fighting with his back against oh. the wall these past two games. Right now, Luna with a full stock lead. Right now, this KO, next KO will be huge. Snowy needs to get it as soon as possible if he wants to stay in the series. <gasps> the D-Light misses. Trying to go for a D-Light instead of just a raw recovery. Bites him in the back. Snowy now on bracket stock. And Luna is making a pretty triumphant Turn, but needs to return back to stage and Snowy keeping Luna at bay. We're starting to see a lot more of the weapon throws that we know Snowy for, and they are starting to work out mm. and a ground pound to seal his fate. This is not a three star. No, that was a mandatory ground ground pound. That was much needed. Snowy needed that ASAP if he's trying to stay in the series because he is down two to one currently. Last stock in this series. If he goes down here, he will be on the loser side of things. So he needs to lock in right now or he will be coming up from a mountain in that loser side. Oh, so now running out of options, but just barely evades the dare and able to get a touch, and also is able to dodge out of the end light. We can start to see Snowy playing a bit more defensively, trying to take a few less risks, and really only landing attacks that he knows that he can hit. And also, Snowy still has Luna downloaded a decent big, because a lot of the attacks that Luna are trying to hit, a lot of times Luna tries to break neutral, land the first hit, Snowy's always ready to dodge away, or is just never in the spot that Luna wants him to be. I'm forcing these situations and Snowy just playing the neutral so well. Having Luna downloaded is not going to be able to escape that combo, but he's still evading a decent amount of his attacks pretty quickly. But Luna adapting mid game and making this uh, look a lot, making this game five look a lot less likely. No, nah, yeah, first Snowy's playing amazing neutral. He was doing a great job of taking no damage, you know, closing the gap as much as he could, but Sideways. Luna's not letting go. Yeah, Luna's not letting go. He's Ooh. he's here to take this game. You know, he is on the Surrey though. He could make a miracle happen. You never know. One end sig on the Qatars after this KO. He gets this KO. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> oh man. And Luna taking the set. 3 1. Man, well played to both these players, man. But man, ultimately, the demon, the super villain, moving on. Top eight winner side. Snowy, though, he is not out. Make sure y'all stay tuned. He will be making a loser's bracket run because this is a double elimination attorney. So he is not going for good yet. But well played to both of y'all players, man. As we're going to get to this uh, last clip with this last stock. I can't tell if that was just a master level read right here. Luna threw his weapon up pretty early. I'm pretty sure before oh the ground pound even started, but was so perfectly timed. That was either a master level read knowing like, okay, Snowy is not going to do this the whole set except for this one time. Or <laughs> if Luna just like bet the entire game on that. And that was just like a Hail Mary. This either will work or this will not. One of us is losing to this maneuver. Oh, and no. Even if he I, lost, you know, he had a start to play with. He's just having fun at this point. That's when it gets <laughs> dangerous. When you're having fun, oh, my God, it's dangerous. 
You know what I'm saying? High level gameplay, having fun versus being nervous. You, you definitely want to take having fun over that. You know, Luna's yeah. always got the style points to end the series, man. Got to give it to him. Oh, well played Snowy actually, too, man, man, you know. Yeah, well played too, Snowy. For sure. Been playing that a little bit nervously too, because there were times Snowy almost had the KO, but was just scared of that 2% chance it wouldn't work. Scared of the 2% chance that an attack would whiff and would not follow up on a lot of these potential confirms that he didn't have complete confidence in and was just trying to find something that he knew for a fact to have that 200% chance of working. He did not want to drop anything, but ultimately I felt like that cost him because, you know, like the whole thing about miss all the shots you don't take. He was taking a lot less shots because he was worried about missing one, but then and it ended up just being Luna taking a pretty risky shot to end up working so yes playing defensively worked out incredibly for snowy's favor almost even out the stocks but sometimes you kind of have to let loose and land a clip every now and here again luna taking a pretty comfy spot in top eight what is, what is uh, what's the uh, what's the next match that we got going on up next man we got radish you know what i'm saying very well known player versus the boy clem is going to be an electric matter of fact Magma game, <laughs> me and about to come up for y'all boys right now. I'm excited for this on myself. Radish, one of my favorite players, you know. I'm really excited, hoping for that uh, new legend, waiting till he's tournament legal, because I already know Radish is about to go crazy, and he's known for his boots work. He's known for his orb on the Petra. Most likely gonna be seeing some of that Petra right now in this set right here. Clem, he's been going crazy on the Barraza. His guns, you know, they're different. You know, don't count them out. I know you see the earnings, you see 37K, 2K, you know, but Clem is a demon. He is not to be slept on for sure. You sleep and you will get woken up hard, man. So this is going to be a good one for sure. I'm excited, man. What you think? If you have any thoughts, any predictions, what you thinking? I think this is incredibly interesting uh, place for these two stories to kind of intercept because Radish, I think, knows very well what it's like to be in Clem's position right now. A lot of these other players that we got coming through, like Luna and Snowy and uh, Impala and also Java, a lot of the other players that we got coming through top 12, it's been a while since they've been at like that semi-pro spot. They have been in the top 10 of the region for years. Clem is still... Uh, is still kind of building his resume and still is just a few more steps to take before people stop sleeping on him. Radish has only really just found that groove. The first uh, tournament that he had a huge breakout in was co just completely winning summers. And although he was powering pretty well there, he was able to, you know, grab a top 12 every now and again. It was when he won summers when people find, when the majority of people put him on uh, their radar. That was when the world took note of his name. Of course, there were warning signs beforehand. Uh, Radish was able to pull some massive upsets in communities and also in winner's bracket of, of majors and, and pools. So Radish definitely were trying to uh, fire off the sirens, but people really only, uh, a lot of people really only listened after Summers and Clem has really yet to have that moment, even though he, he's currently in a similar situation that Radish once was, where although he's not really getting that many top eights, you can see a few top 32s. You don't get that just, you know, by doing nothing. You get that by playing Rahala, but still, it's really only a few upsets that have people uh, muttering his name. There's yet to be a huge, uh, uh, like, there's yet to be like this huge kind of uh, event to finally get people to put Clem on their radar as he so deserves. So Radish knows very much what it's like to be in Clem's spot right here. No, yeah, for sure. I'm really excited to see some Radish too. You know, we're doing a lot of talking about Radish, but I don't know if you guys watched the last Moose Wars. He got sent to losers bracket very early and he made a crazy losers bracket run. <laughs> Not dropping games to nobody, three owing everyone with the likes of Sandstorm and so on. Made it all the way to the grand finals, ended up losing, but you know, it's tough coming out of losers. You know what I'm saying? It's such a mental fatigue type game. and. I'm excited, man. I think Radish has something to prove here after that last Moose Wars. Yeah, Clem is also a lot more to prove because that PR22, he's looking to bump that up. We do got Radish in the lobby. And Radish has also really been um, expanding his, uh, his character pool because for a while it was kind of literally just Petra. But now we got a few more options that could be coming out. We did see the Tesca a little bit, and he also has... Um, 
uh, there was there was another character I'm trying to I'm forgetting, and he's also you know as we've said earlier, he's pretty excited for uh, Red Raptor to be legal right. pretty soon. But, but there was there was another character that Radish was spending some time on, I'm having a hard time remembering. Do you do you remember what that was? No, nah, I don't. But you know, it was I another know. one. Right now we're struggling to get the boy Clem in the lobby, so we might not be seeing Raiders versus Clem Ooh. coming up. You know, worst come to worst, not too bad. Don't worry, we got another great set coming up just for y'all. It's gonna be the Dream Hack San Diego champion, the BCX current world champion, Impala versus the boy Zen. You know what I'm saying? So either way, we're about to have a great set on hands, but we'll see what happens, man. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, and. Um... So if we don't got Clem in the lobby, this match of Impala versus Zen, for people who might be a little bit confused, uh, Zen is Cutie. I think Cutie's trying to uh, change their name, rebrand a little bit. And uh, yeah, that would be, uh, they both play pretty similar characters. They both play Kaya a decent bit. So there's a, uh, a good chance we'll be having a Kaya mirror match if that so comes to be. But also at the same time, I feel like I feel like one of them might switch off a of Kaya. I feel like <laughs> both of them probably don't want the mirror match. Although if we might have, if it turns out to be game five, we might have you having a mirror match. Like you gotta stick to what you know. You gotta put your best foot forward. Right. But I got a good feeling. I don't think the whole set's just gonna be Kaya, 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 Kaya. If anybody switches, it's most likely gonna be the boy Cutie, Zen, yeah, whatever. Easily, yeah. Because I honestly, I don't think I've ever seen him follow switch off a Kai. So <laughs> <laughs> I think we're logged in on one side. We're gonna have at least one Kai in the building. But Zen, you know, he's really proficient with the spear. He has legends like uh, Wu Shang under the belt. Like you said, the Kai. Uh, he also has the Onyx, but more of a two v two character. So I'm thinking we're gonna see, you know, either a Kai or Mary match. Or some Wu-Shang action. I'm not too sure. Though. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm very interested to see what's going on here. Because Zen is more known for his 2v2 gameplay. And Paula more known for his 1v1 player uh, gameplay. So, as of right now, he technically is the favorite. But don't count the boy out, man. Don't count the boy out. They both pressure for a reason. I'll tell you, they're here for a reason. This is winner's side, too. You know, look at the earnings disparity. Might fool you. But I promise you're going to see some... Some magma action right now. The boy Zen definitely gonna bring something to the table for us. PR12, although the numbers might not say it, this guy is pro material and is mm -hmm. definitely, I mean, he's up next. He is one of the guys to be looking for. If you've seen his performance, and I'm pretty sure uh, San Diego, he got pretty far in that. I'm gonna take a second to double check but he had a pretty good run in san diego to really prove that his performance is not now very soon to be at a level where he could be taking some very very big dubs um i'm gonna look through his yeah no he got um ninth at 2v2s in uh dallas with uh dog they're also really um zen started out really announcing his name onto the scene with um uh with twos started out as a as a twos main and then has really been moving over to ones especially recently in 2023 and has been really really hungry to prove uh prove his skill in ones has been doing so quite well at san diego got i'm pretty sure 17th so that is not something to scoff at he's got a lot to prove right now unfortunately bracket moving kind of slow so we're going to go on a short break, but make sure you guys stay tuned. We're not going nowhere. You know, we still got these games coming for y'all, but we will be right back, man. Take care. See you soon.
And we are back, man. Better than ever, too, man. We got the games ready for you guys. You know what I'm saying? We got Megdi versus Java coming up, man. Two very notorious, well-known players in the 1v1 scene. I'm really excited to see what we got going on. Megdi, you know, a demon in these tournaments, land tournaments as well. No gold medals for uh, either of these players in the ones, but very well-known players, top eight players for sure. And I think we will see some gold medals coming up for soon. But right now, Magna Man, best of five, winners, quarters final, I believe, right now. Winner side of things. Let's see who can keep continue on to top eight and who will remain in the loser's bracket after this set, man. What you think, Graffiti? Um, Impala versus Meg D. Uh, I mean, oh, yeah, no, I'm getting my uh, words and Oh, they switched mixed it up. up Whoa, yeah, my fault, my fault. <laughs> I was reading it. Yeah, my fault. I'm sorry about that. We have Impala <laughs> versus Zen. I'm sorry. The graphic on screen had me a little confused. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it messed us up. Yeah. Man, all right, man. Impala versus Zen. We were talking about them before. Impala, DreamHack San Diego champion, BCX current world champion, Zen, the notorious 2v2 player, 2v2 demon, trying to make a name for himself in the one scene. We got the Kaya mirror match going on right now. Impala with the classic Kaya drip, you know? This is gonna be interesting, man. I wanna see will oh. Impala push him off of this character. I mean, most likely. I mean, just like you said, I think you're right when you say it's very hard to push Impala off of uh, Kaya. If you listen to Impala talk about the game, he, he's always constantly talking about adaptation, able to snag that D-save 20, uh, yeah, like a good 35 seconds in. Not really touched on his first stock that much, but yeah, Impala talks a lot about the adaptation and the mental fortitude it, fortitude it takes to play the game. And so I don't think Impala's gonna be switching off Kaya anytime soon. Zen, on the other hand, has got a few other picks. I'm pretty sure we've seen a Rayman and also has played uh, quite a few Spear characters. I'm tempted to say that we've seen uh, Wushong and maybe one other Spear character somewhere in the bag. That is actually a pretty cool Spear skin. If you're gonna be a Spear main, you kind of have to have a cool skin and I think Zen checks that box. No, oh, yeah, right Ooh. now, Zen. And staying in the game, he is behind a little bit on the damage lead, but at this level doesn't mean too, too, too much. You know what I'm saying? He could definitely make a run, take the lead in this game. You know, Impala playing amazing neutral right now, winning most of the interactions right now, which is the reason why he does have this slight damage lead right now. D light recovery. Oh, GC side light not gonna catch him. Right now, blow for blow, I mean, Impala looking to take this step, so, or second stop pretty handedly, put himself in a nice lead. Ensign gonna catch it. Big hours coming out from Impala. Looking to take this game number one right here. Free choice of weapons, Impala weapon starves, doubles down on the bow. Meanwhile, we saw Zen earlier throw bow in favor of Spear. So I think um, that actually, I think if they're planning on playing opposite weapons as they do synchronized and light in the middle of the stage, if they're planning on playing opposite weapons, I think the chance of both of them playing Kaya a little bit longer, I think they both might play Kaya a little bit longer than expected. Although Zen is probably feeling a little bit uncomfortable thinking like, no, I gotta be on Spear. I think could be throwing at any time, but no, does not want to give up the pressure and tries to continue the ledge guard, charges up the GC side sig, and Paula sees through it and starts to push Zen deeper and deeper into red, but Zen is able to push back and although we have stocks even impala just needs like one or two more owls and then we got ourselves one up on the board that first one miss for sure i think one confirm might do the trick for impala right here zen back against the wall you know he has been a that's the Ooh. game man impala taking that game pretty convincingly man you know no character swap so far you know zen gonna opt to stay on that kaya same map brawl haven you know, we got the super epic time coming on from Impala, man. What can I say, bro? He's showing y'all why he is the world champion, man. Been playing that Kaya for a minute. I don't see him switching. He's not about to get diffed on his main. What does stop the glaze mean? <laughs> you mentioned super epic time, so I'm like, oh, we're going through we're going through clans. Like, yeah, that's a cool clan from Impala. I like that. What what is the glaze? He's saying he don't like glazed donuts, man. Ah, uh, alright. Dude. Nah, but for sure, let's get back to the gameplay, my boy. Zen looking strong in his game number two right here. Big lead coming in. Finding all his hit confirms. Nice there. Weaponless right now, but finds it very quickly. Paula, not gonna let this lead get out of hand. Paula is actually trying a bit more spear 
here so far. Mm -hmm. At least that's just the first stock. Zen is pretty comfortably oh playing God. spear recovery, just barely catches. We're pl still playing a little bit of footsies as uh, Zen could capitalize. Very, very big here. Trading Pogo Dare after Pogo Dare and like keep at the day, and we do have a weapon on stage, so if one person wants to run oh star for the other, D light into Nair. You would have thought that would have been a recovery for a confirm. Use out of options. Nah, yeah. It is the end sig to confirm, and Apollo also catches that diagonal weapon. Bro, those dudes are pretty hard to watch. Uh, catch for yourself. I mean, like, the game of catch for yourself. Those dudes are pretty hard to do. Cutie, I mean, yeah, Zen on bow, able to snag a D sig and free choice of weapons. He sticks on bow, actually. Oh uh, yeah, and Paula putting the masterful spear work on full display that first time. Uh, unfortunately, he did not have enough options for that recovery. Ended up finding the start with the NC. Now with both players on the bow, let's see what happens with these bows. Right now, Zen. Finding him, finding the doubles and neutral. Nice D-Sig offstage, gonna put in Paula in a pressure situation. There catches. Nice D-like, bro. Not enough, though. Paul is still hanging in there. This would be huge if he gets this stock right here. What we're seeing is a lot different from game number one, where Impala, you know, controlled the game, maintained the lead throughout the entirety of the game. But right Ooh. here, Paula flips the script and takes the lead for the first point of time in this game. Let's see, the spear back in hand for Impala. Let's see if we can see some more masterful spear work. <laughs> Paula needs to try and stay in this second stock to keep a lead. Is able to dodge out of a lot of these uh, attacks that Zen is trying to throw at him. That's also another good thing to note. Impala sometimes has Zen read a little bit more than other times, but Zen does not have Impala downloaded whatsoever. And that is, uh, especially considering how the first game went, how the second game is going, that is a little nerve wracking if you're rooting for Purple Kaya. Because, mm. I mean, yeah, if he goes down here, going down 0-2 is not something you want to do, especially nice against the reigning world champ. But nonetheless, he keeps on marching. And that orange, I mean, a high defense on Kaya definitely going to make that orange a bit less boring to look at. But, uh, yeah, no, Zen needs to find something quick. Impala is still keeping his dodges so varied, so hard to predict. But also, Impala starting to back off a little bit, respecting yeah. Zen's space, recognizing, I don't want to give away this lead too much. You're really, really, really chasing for it. So I'm going to I'm gonna step back a bit. I'm going to give you more steps to cover. And uh, I'm going to try and tire you out. Man, Impala showing you that candy cane is not to be played with, man. You know, <laughs> his spear is on full display. Oh. He throws it out the hand. Not going to connect. Bow in hand. Let's see what he can do with the bow and arrow. There we go. d light there. Zan back against the wall. One confirm might do the trick for Impala. He does not want to go down 2-0 in the set against the world champ, like you said. Weapon star coming in from Impala. He's trying to end this. Both players in kill percent with the right hit coming out. Zen can't steal this game. Is the DC coming out? Oh, Ooh. the dare is gonna do it with the outro. Come on, man, win, win. Oh my God. That entire game was so stacked up against Zen as uh, they're both repping different dream hack, uh, yeah, dream hack titles from this year. And, um, Three. Yeah, we're going right back to Brawl Haven. And Zen also wasting no time. That was some pretty quick uh, character picks and map banning. They're wasting no time. We're not trying to catch our breath. We're trying to keep the momentum going. Sometimes you got to run an entire game off of the adrenaline alone. Right now, Bow versus Bow, and we are just going blow for blow. Yeah, a lot of guy action. No second guessing at this level of gameplay, man. Right? You know, after you win like that, why would you switch? You know what I'm saying? But right now... Zan looking solid in this game number three. Light, slight damage lead in his favor. Nothing too big. At the same time, nothing to be scoffed out. d sick puts him off stage. Ooh, there's not going to connect. Huge potential right here. Yes, sir. Exclamation points coming out. Yep. Applying pressure as soon as he sees the opening. Nice movement. Oh yeah, no, Impala is really starting to lock in this game, realizing that that last game fell through his hands. Impala was winning the best of a lot of these uh, neutral, uh, yeah, these neutral engagements, but the moment it, it came time to close out the game, Zen just adapted 
too well and just got hit by less and less attacks. Keep in mind you, Zen was unarmed for most of that game and also still proving his dominance right now. Zen was unarmed for a considerable amount of that last stock. He still was just able to dodge out of the reach of Spear's long range, land a few more bits of chip damage before sealing that game with a bow dare. So although that was sudden death, that was still looking really good from Zen to have some very good adaptation, getting hit by Impala less, win out more, win out neutral more and flip the script, but also just survive and clutch that game out. Nerves of steel on this purple Kaya right here and is still making this stock last a considerable amount of time and Impala really does not have Zen read that much at all. Oh, also, he's yeah. a very hard time finding his way into Zen. Boy, Zen doing a great job of extending his lead right here. And Paul is struggling to find that knockout punch, you know. And, and Zen taking full advantage of that. Oh, Nice read. Oh, doesn't get to extend off of it. Is he going to quit Paul at one stop before he goes down? That would be huge. Yeah, Zen has finally had Impala downloaded a lot of the nice. times. A similar situation with Luna versus Snowy. A lot of the attacks that Impala wants to place, most of them hit, but that uppercut's able to find its mark when it matters. Impala starting to clutch up a little bit more, and the pressure's getting to him a bit less, but still, there's a lot of, like, these, um these smaller interactions that he really needs to start winning more and have uh, really bring his success back from game one. <laughs> Nice air. Knocking yeah, him on that... stage. Putting him on his last duck abruptly, man. Zen trying to extend this lead before he goes down. You know, he's in a position to take this game number three, go up 2 1 in the series against the world champ. That would be huge, man. You know, Impala, much more known for his Kai gameplay than Zen. Right now. Zen is. Yeah, Zen's really starting to pick up the speed, chase yeah. Impala a little bit uh, more around the map, and that's actually probably something that Impala was mm. not expecting, because Zen was playing pretty defensively the rest of this game, but hey, maybe it that's what? what it takes to step this up. The moment Zen starts to try and pick up the pace in the game, saying like, alright, I'm in control, I can start having a bit more fun, Impala immediately reminds him why that did not work in game one, and I think Zen is really starting to take the note and realize mm. like, alright, yeah, no, I got too hungry, I gotta, I probably gotta put my fork down and uh, <laughs> stay a bit more calm, maybe hang a bit more back. We're climbing right. just a little bit more. No, yeah, he ended up stabbing Can't himself with the far. fork right there, man. You <laughs> cannot lose this game right here. This would be terrible. You know, when you're up so strongly in a game like that, if you end up losing it, that could really be the momentum shifter. So, you know, fortunately, he had a solid lead. So, right now, he is still in a position oh. to take this game. <gasps> That's Clash. it! The ground pound's gonna do it! Paula steals the game number three, going up 2-1 in the set. That's gotta hurt, man. That's gotta hurt. Being in control the entire game and losing it like that. That's insane, man. Props to Paula keeping his head in there, not giving up, man. It's also kind of exactly what happened in uh, game two. Game three was just a complete opposite mirror of that one, where one player was in complete control, but it just takes drawing out that last stock to kind of clutch and steal it away. Oh, that's tough, man. That's tough. You gotta wonder what's going through his brain right now. He gotta look towards the future, though. He can't be looking in the past, or that will haunt him in this game, man. All right, now. Uh, yeah, Paula's got to be feeling good be. right now. <laughs> Dennis probably already starting to look into the future a little bit because, like I said, I think he still got uh, this red Kaya red a little bit more. And Paula is actually really starting to put on a lot more pressure. He's not even really choosing to attack after most of the times he's approaching and dashing. Really just trying to actually Zen's also taking note. They're both just trying to dash in and out. A little bit of Meg D Tech as well, just trying to bait and attack out. They're playing uh, for so much punish and they're playing. Uh, they're really just trying to get in each other's personal space and punish anything that the other player tries to throw out as d in and Recovery not quite going to send, but Impala now has some pretty good stage control. And also the D-Sig to bait out an attack to punish with the M-Light. Zen is still locked in, but the movement from Impala is also trying to step up a little bit. Ooh. Oh, first stop going to Zen, but he did a great job. He was down a little bit to start the game, but put a lot of damage into uh, Impala before going down. You know, so he's still in a position to take this game. He's not too far behind, behind as long as he gets that knockout punch quick. 
You know, he can't take too much damage, but there it goes. Nice. I was about to say, Paul is racking up a little bit of damage to his favor. Let's see what Kyle can do. Oh, Kyle going crazy right now. We got Kyle on Kyle, man. Nice end to catch the jump. Yeah, there it is. Impala immediately taking it back. Zen is now on bracket stock and needs to have uh, needs to have a repeat of that second game if he wants to bring it to a game five. And I think that means we probably having probably having the game slow down a little bit more. You can see both of them doing a little bit of a mega team. That, that's dash jump in and dodge out to try and bait out an attack and then be safely on the ground to uh, find a way to punish it. So both these players, you can even see it again. They are so desperate to try and find any opening they can and just find a way to just barely open the door open, just a, just a jar, just a tiny bit before they can make their entrance. So we have damage even, but stocks quite the opposite. A lot more end lights and uh, Sarah's starting to miss. We're playing a lot more often Nairs than anything. So both of these players, yeah, no, they're being very careful, especially when I think the past five hits in a row at one point were Nair. <sighs> Oh man, Zen, you gotta do something ASAP. It's now or never. Oh, one more confirm, and you're pretty much gone. <gasps> there it goes. Gets the stock. Now he's gonna have to pull out something crazy if he wants to stay in this series. Down 2 1. Back against the wall. Last stock. What can you do, Zen? Let me see something. Ooh, Zen is starting to pick up the pace. This really yeah. bit him in the back the first time that he tried it, but it's working out quite nicely. Although Impala's movement really starting to pick up to try and play the part and counter it. Zen also starting to chase Impala around a little bit more. Zarn is shift him down into orange soon to be red. A Nair going to give Impala some good stage control. Chooses not to uh, weapon starve and double down on spear or bow. Chooses not to uh, grab the weapon. At least cover his head from, the, uh, from Zen trying to find a new landing space. Zen. Impala hit after. Hit the outro, this game. Oh man, you see the owl with the style points to end it, man. Like I said, man, that game number three, Impala coming back from something like that was such a momentum shifter for Impala. That was huge. That was pivotal to the series. And just like that, Impala steals the series going up 3-1. That's what happens when you play the world champ, man. Keeps his cool when he's down, pulls out things like that, and he's able to keep series in his control at all times, man. Shout out to Zen, though. I was really liking that Kai, man. You was really going blow for blow with the champion, man. So props to you, Zen. Very nice Kai on display. I was loving the spears. I was loving the bows, man. But ultimately, Impala taking that set 3-1, moving on to top eight. But don't count my boy Zen out just yet. He will be making a loser's bracket run, and his day is not over just yet, man. Our next set coming up will be, uh, I'm pretty sure, Radish and Clem. These, uh, like I said, just a bit of a refresher of what we said about these guys earlier. Um, Radish knows a lot about what it's like to be in Clem's spot because only just recently has really started to find that top of the food chain placement and it's really only been like the past year or so that Radish has been like one of those guys and has been on everyone's radars and uh, Clem is still looking for that big breakout as we do have Radish in the lobby. We are just waiting on Clem to find his way in and lock in character. Uh, both of these players also having a bit, of a bit of a similar history with their characters and they do mainly play, um, they, they have a dedicated main that they spend probably about 90% of their time on, but they do have like another pit, few picks here or there that they can switch to if they really have to, but they don't usually really go to that. It takes it, it takes a player like Radish for Clem to switch off Baraza, and it takes a player like Clem for Radish to switch mm -hmm. off of um, Petra. No, yeah, both these players, lots of experience, you know what I'm saying? Radish, a lot more of that mainstay, big time experience. But it's Bro Harlem, man, anything can happen. Both players are here for a reason. We are in the winners, quarters, finals of the Magma Mayhem. So. And it's about to be real hot gameplay. I'm telling you, don't count the boy out, man. Clem's here for a reason. I know most of y'all want to be like, mm, Raiders got this, but just wait on it. Believe in it. Man, I, I like the jerk, though, man. I see Raiders. I like the jerk, man. It's crazy. I like He's definitely got that flaming skull orb. I'm already knowing. Level 100 Petra, bro, got the experience. 
and the boy Clemothy in the building, ready to go <laughs> take on Raiders, man. Let's get into it, man. A man of focus stepping up to this. That's a very intimidating looking uh, Petra. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good setup. I'd be scared of that. Yes, sir. We're going to flame it or with the new Raven colors. I'm loving it. Man, I love Clemens Blasters. I haven't seen a lot of uh, clips on Twitter. Stuff he's been pulling out, bro, has been going crazy. Right now, Raiders starting off this game number one strong, you know? I'm not staying out the way, though, making sure he stays in this game, going blow for blow. Raiders ooh, going, ooh. oh my god, going oh my all in. God. Unable to connect. Clem is starting out strong, wasting no time to try and get any reads he can, try and just chase Radish around the stage and that's actually I'm kind of happy you brought up the, the clips you see someone's going around on Twitter those are usually that's usually what gives blasters it's huge breakaways it's big clips it's having your opponent red chasing them around the stage and placing attacks I mean kind of looking like a chosen bot placing them perfectly every single time although switching over to Axis wow. trying to get a KO but Radish is able to read the spot dodge snags the N6, sends Clem down a second stock, juggles weapons, and I think doubles down on Orb, and is not quite able to nice uh, picking up the weapon. We have stocks even. Clem dancing a little bit to celebrate. Very well deserved. Yes, sir. Quick yeah. neutralization coming from Clem. Not letting the game get out of hand. Right now, everything even. Nice end light to catch. Oh my gosh. Ooh, he went the wrong way. Right now, he's a good screenshot. Decent. He's piecing with these with these glomers. Finding nice streams. Getting lots of damage per engagement right here. Oh my gosh. Ray is starting to run away. Sarah to cancel out the um, <clears throat> GC delay. Clem is uh, Clem is actually outspacing Orb very, very well, and it ends up being uh, Gauntlets that is doing a lot of the work for Radish, and I think Radish has finally accepted that switching over to Gauntlets at the very least for the KO, but also might just be uh, I think his main focus might also just be to weapon star Clem, as both of Clem's weapons are very, very strong. But it's also really the blasters doing a very good job of dealing a lot of damage. But no matter how much damage you build up, KO efficiency is going to be an incredibly uh, important skill and also a difficult task to try and learn and master. Because look at how damaged Radish is. It almost took an unarmed Sayer to take Radish off the side wow. and a blaster Sayer to bounce against the side of the stage to take him out. If Clem was able to get that KO uh, earlier, was able to find the blaster Sayer just a few seconds earlier, he could probably still be in a pretty decent lead and doesn't quite have Radish downloaded anymore. And I think the rhythm is uh, blasters or orb respectively to deal damage and then switch to axe or gauntlets respectively to find the KO. Oh yeah, for sure. Right now, it was once looking like 100% Raiders game. I mean, Clem's hanging in there. You know, damage is still in Raiders' favor right now, but don't count Clem right out. Oh, tough offstage position. Is Raiders going to take advantage? There it goes. Ooh. He's like ground pound going to seal the deal. Game number one. That was a great game number one, very close. Could have went either way. So I'm excited to see what we're going to see in this game number two, for sure. Most of it was pretty dead even, but that entire last stock, that that was that was just the Raiders show. That was just yeah. Raiders' game. That was a stock. And although Clem was still probably feeling good, like, yeah, you know, I was able to keep a dead even game against Raiders. You still have a lot to answer back for from that last stock that Raiders kind of just ran away from, or ran away with, rather, and you're going to have to maybe find this KOs a little bit sooner or maybe not let Raiders build up 200 damage on you in 20 seconds. That is going to be... Most of that game was looking great until the last 10 seconds. And now Clem has to come back with that. Man, it's easier said than done, bro. Right now, Clem doing a very good job. I mean, I went against Raiders myself oh. in Dallas. And he fried me with the gauntlets, man. His strings are not to be played with. He is so great at turning one hit. Attacks to three, four hit strings, bro. His follow-up game is out of this world. It's full of, full display right now. You can see. Right now, Clem looking for some 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 axe gameplay right here. Nice D light thing. Super damage. A good Sarah could do the trick. Sound like Sarah bread and butter coming from Raiders. That's the orb classic right there. 
and now Clem is in a spot that he has been in multiple times. This set needs to try and be a bit more efficient with this KOSD light recovery going to work as it does every other time. Clem dancing around the stage a little bit. His movement is looking really good as it needs to be, mm. but Radish is unarmed, maybe looking a little bit better as Radish almost had a huge opportunity to take Clem off of the side, and although Clem was able to make some very good use of some blasters and two ranges on arm, it's just on arm, who's just so good, and also his confidence off stage. He was actually able to build a pretty decent lead that now Clem needs to try and come back from. He's been playing, I think he might have to play the rest of this game from behind, because mm. Radish could snag the KO with Gauntlets and give him a probably one of the bigger leads that we've seen this set. Usually the other player is deep in a red, like barbecue sauce Brendan, and it's just like a single stare. You know, reverse the game, take the stock, yada yada. But this is this is I think the biggest lead we've seen in the whole set. Red is just right. stepping it up. No nah, facts for sure. Like you said, this has been a whole lot of back and oh. forth when someone gets a like, That's also KO. options. <gasps> right, you want he another side? Yeah, see, he's all right, he's all right. But no, but that's gonna be it. Nice GC side suit coming in from Raiders. That was definitely a lot more convincing of a game number two than game number one, man. Great victory coming in from Raiders. It's looking like we forced him off of the Barraza, man. Ooh. Clemothy pulling out the hollow Knicks, man, the dark Knicks. Let's see what he can do. Well, like we're going to switch from Axe to Scythe. Raiders is feeling it right now. For sure. Yeah usually see Radish hit like a, a cool clip like that, but when he does, you know he is feeling it. This man just locked in Clem, just like you said, anyway, locking in the mix. So trading out the uh, the um, uh, the axe and also some pretty good defense out for Scythe for a bit more of a, of a, a, a balanced stat set. That is a very, very interesting trade-off. So for the sites they're actually doing very well, catching right off, off surprise. And I think given a little bit of extra movement means that Clem's gonna have a bit of an easier time, a bit of a better tool trying to uh, dodge his way out of mm. Radish's uh, orb game for the end sig. That was like, that was dry. That first end sig was just raw and it worked. Bro, it's such a good sig. It's so fast, it catches the jump. There's a lot of damage. It's, it's probably his best sig in his kit in my opinion. Radish, he's a chase. Oh my god. <laughs> he's feeling it. He's feeling it. Yeah, he's feeling it. himself for sure, man. You can just tell. He's having fun. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. Oh. Uh oh. Clem said, don't play, but it's not over yet. I'm not ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Tournament game, he cannot lose. Another game where he will be in loser's bracket. So he does not want to. So he's going to lock in real quick. Make sure he can do everything he can before going down. Now, Radish, man, he is finding everything. Everything he's looking for, he is. Oh. I'm starting to put in some work with Blasters. Almost takes Radish off the top. A very early stock. Probably would have uh, gotten him a little bit more respect as uh, Clem. Weapon starving Radish. I think Radish, yeah, Radish is starting to hide down a little bit mm. as he's having a hard time finding his way in. And now, even though he has Orb, Clem has been very good at spicing out the Orb, not getting hit by as many of these attacks, but Radish is also adjusting. I'm still dancing a little bit, still throwing out a few more signatures. I think we're used to seeing him uh, use. It was just a small little kind of a dry area mm. where we couldn't find a weapon and couldn't find any damage. I think he's back in it. Clem does need to force some more situations where maybe Radish's back is against the wall, but he's found his way out of that situation quite nicely when he was able to force it just that one time a few seconds ago. So Clem either needs to stay on top or just stay even. I mean, right now, he's on his last talk of the series, potentially, if he doesn't win. But Sarah, Sarah, that Sarah, Nick's Sarah, defense Sarah, is going to come Sarah, in clutch. Sarah. He needs to try and take little to no damage before taking out this stock. Ooh, that's a little bit more than little Yeah, damage. it's just a little too that... much. Still doable, but it's dangerous. Oh, no D-Light. That's crazy. It oh, very... good strings coming in from Raiders. Oh! They're <laughs> 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 not going to connect. Radish has a lot of momentum right now. It does get slowed down as Clem has him on the wrong side of a ledge guard. Sare to punish the signature. Clem needs a quick second. Calm down and saying like, okay, not over just yet. What do we like to say in Brawlhalla? It is always too early to call it. It's not over until it's over. 
uh, as Clem is starting to back off a little bit, make him saying that like, okay, you know, Raiders is chasing me now, so I gotta just back step, back step a little bit, give him a few more steps to cover. Maybe within that space, I can find a bit more breathing room and. Enough. With the outro, man, spirit bomb, skull, and I didn't even know that the orb is in the middle of the sig. That's crazy, <laughs> yo. That look, that look too cool. But nah, congratulations, Raiders, taking that series pretty handily, man. Three old Clem not able to take a game off of Raiders, but congrats, Clem. Well played. Your tournament run is not over. You will have a chance in loser side of things, but ultimately, Raiders taking full control of that series. Advancing swiftly to the top eight, man. Congratulations, both these players. The past three sets that we have had have been two three ones and a three zero, oh, but that three zero oh also could have very well been a three one if that first game just went a little bit different. But Clem, hmm. whatever work that he needed to do to try and make that game even, has to bring that fight to lower bracket. We will be going, I'm pretty sure we will be going to a quick break now, unless they've already deceived us once. Not sure if it will happen again. Next set though, break or no break, get ready, because next set will be Meg D versus Java. I was talking about them earlier, they didn't show up, but now they're here, believe me, they here. We got Meg D, you know what I'm saying? No for his sword, no for his gauntlets, even a little Chun-Li action. Very, very, very proficient in the 1v1 scene. We got Java, the Hammer King, ready to put a nail in the coffin, trying to end this series. You know what I'm saying? Make sure he ends up on the top eight side of things in this Magma Mayhem bracket. Look at the earnings. Pretty even. No gold medals for either of these God, players. Yeah. Two silver medals for both of them. You know what I'm saying? So this could definitely go either way. I'm excited to see something happen. I'm really excited to see Java's Hammer gameplay. We had a, not too long ago, a pretty recent Hammer buff on the D-Light, you know? So I'm, I'm hoping Java shows us something crazy, man. Both of these players, their story and their rise to power is actually oddly similar, where it was really only uh, over the pandemic where they started to take names and the world took notice. But their play styles are also very different. Meg D having a mental of steel. You cannot break this man. He will drain out of the match. But Java... Java sometimes speed runs games and is also one of the most confident players off stage. Not playing hammer this match though, still sticking a bit with spear. Meg D still playing guitars, but also changing out the sword that we sometimes see him for on a Surrey for bow. And that bow, I mean, he has played Ember a decent bit, and I'm pretty sure there's probably another bow character that he's played. Um, but this Ember is not something he throws out all the time. So, although it makes sense for Meg D, it is still a bit of a curious pick. And the game, I think, is so far gone in Meg D's favor because Java's having a very hard time landing hits right now. If this was any other player, Java would have like, taken two stocks. Not for sure. Meg D right now taking control of this Ember. This Ember does have low defense, so one or two strings, and just like that, like I said, low defense, game's even. But honestly, this, this Ember is the first character. Uh, I'm, I've known Meg before. Like when I first started watching him, he was doing things, amazing things with his uh, Ember character. So I have a lot of faith in it. But right now, Java taking that first stop, putting himself in a nicely, not even in the red yet, hoping to do some more damage before he goes down. Java, I think, uh, agreeing to play Meg game and just dance around him. Yeah. Make you doing everything he can to not let this game get out of hand right now. Java, there, dodging the weapon toss. Makes it back to stage. That's huge for him right there. Not Ooh. gonna find the end light recovery. Make searching for that KO. He's trying to find one immediately before this game gets out of hand. Java playing the slow game pretty nicely so far. Weapon starving Meg D. Spear into unarmed. Gonna be a very, very good way to continue his lead as uh, Meg D, I think, is um, starting to have a bit of a hard time finding this, uh, finding his way into the Satori and Sig to take him down to last stock, but still that, low, not last stock, second stock, but that low defense Ember, especially considering how good Java can be with some of these signatures on the Satori. That is not going to be that many more hits. Java just needs to win like a few more interactions and that will be Meg D on last stock. But if Meg D has um, 
Meg D is able to keep Java at bay, push him away, you can see, is not quite able to get the read and gets punished for it. Java, for most of this game, has seemed quite even, but it all it took was just revoking that second stock, and he's in a pretty comfy lead. Do you think he might speed up the game and try and just finish it up after this? Nah, yeah, after he took that first stock, he's been pretty much in control of this game, you know, Meg D hasn't been able to do it too much about it, but make the in a position. If he gets one read, ooh, unable to get it confirmed. He's back <gasps> in this game. No. <gasps> oh, Java slips. That might cost him this game. That would be terrible, because right now this game is all even. Few hits in Java's favor, but that is nothing. It could have been a little worse. Because <laughs> Java, Java was starting to shift into red in that last stock, so it was, it was a little bit, you know, it had it had some wear and tear. It wasn't factory new. It was probably starting to get down to like a kind of tested or, uh, or maybe not battle scar. But it was still kind of I'm trying to find a way to compare it. So I guess it could have been much worse. He could have lost that stock a lot earlier. So if we're just trying to be positive, Java didn't give up a huge lead. Just a, a decent one. Not for sure. I mean, you know, main thing though about stocks is finding that KO punch. You know, that's the hardest thing to find. It's not really the light attacks or anything like that, but. Java ultimately giving it to him for free, but it's looking like it doesn't matter. Java fully confident right now. He's playing away. He's chilling on the platform. He says, maybe I'm up. You got to come see me, man. <laughs> maybe he's actually starting to push in a little bit. And sure. start to see him. Uh, although sometimes that is where it kind of falls apart. I think two of the KOs, yeah, I think either one or two of the KOs that Java's gotten has been punishing Meg D for speeding up the game. But it is so far working as he's bringing it close to, close to even. That's and it. Java is only just barely <laughs> the able to that side sig. <laughs> so, I mean, he's feeling pretty confident because you could see that uh, that emote coming at the end. But considering the amount of ground that Meg D was able to bring up last minute and also change his approach, Meg D has been punished for his aggression a lot that game, but was able to find something new. And I'm not quite sure what it is, but Java, I think, is starting to catch on. Okay, this is when Meg D's. Uh, this is. Ooh. This is new. Java agreeing to the. Um, uh, Java agreeing Queen to nine. the Qatar's mirror match, and has Three, two, is we're going with one of the lowest defense characters to one of the highest. This is very interesting. High attack, high defense. I think that's what he's thinking. But it's strange. He he won the match. You usually don't switch when you lose, but maybe he felt something as he was the match was going on. You know what I'm saying? He knows better than us for sure. He's in the game. He's filling it up right now. He's starting off strong. With oh, oh 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 oh! I, I love Queen 9 clips. I love seeing her gameplay. Not a lot of people play her. And like in theory, she should be broken in the meta because you got Spear, fantastic spot, very rewarding. Guitars. Guitars take half your stock in a single dodge. They do not have to be read sometimes. And Java being so confident off stage, he just has the delete key on his keyboard bound to stock taken. So still, I. I still really want to see like a huge clip you can only hit with like one of Queen Nine's signatures. In theory, she should be broken, but something about uh, maybe some of her signatures or some of her stats doesn't her quite bring as many people to her. Yeah, she has some, honestly one of the lowest speeds in the game, which is in a game like this, you know, moving in and out the way you dash, three speed, four with the plus one, it's, it's pretty tough to work with. But I've seen people make it work pretty, you know, sometimes here and there, but. Ooh. We're seeing we're seeing a full Queen Knight display <laughs> right here, man. Taking this game much more handily than the last one. Up two stocks, not even in the red. This is tough. Make these back against the wall. I'm I'm a, I'm predicting a character switch after this one. You know that low defense Ember is really tough for Meg D. Mm. And also just because Java is really speeding up the game out of Meg controls, and that's part of the reason why this match is interesting because it really just matters which one of them is playing their own game better than the other. Can Meg D slow down the game, put some breathing room in between him and Java? He's able to put in a little bit of room as he's able to punish the D sig, but Java just, I think, held that back. Um, just to kind of mess around a bit, knows he's in a decent lead in the set. Like, you know, I can I can mess with you a little bit. I can play some mind games. Here's a skill check. <laughs> nah, yeah, maybe. Cranking it up a little bit. Here comes the heat. Ooh, ooh. 
You know, he's not out right now. Hasn't given up yet on this game. That's the nice thing about Ember. Even though her defense is low, her offensive output is different. She has some of the best weapons in the game, some of the best six in the oh. game. Oh, Comeback is entirely possible right now. Yeah, Mendy's starting to have him red and is really starting to kind of over-aggress Java. And now we kind of have him on the back foot. There's even some chance he evens out the Ooh. game and brings us closer to a reverse three-stock. Weapon throw not going to be enough. d Sig would have been a fantastic way to end the stock. Oh, man. Like a way down light. In danger zone right now. What can he do? Oh. One Sig and he's out of there. Mm -hmm. Nice, my favorite sig on the Ember kit right there, that <laughs> end sig. Let's see, can he do something magical for us right here to even up the set? Because if not, he will be going down 0-2. Oh, Chiavas definitely learned his lesson to be a lot more careful in this game too. And at first, I'm going to be honest, I was down a little bit. Like, Meg D could play on the same character for a while, but after that last game goes, I think maybe character swap might be a little bit more likely, but nah, he's still no. sticking yeah. with the Ember. So I guess he, I was wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I was about to agree with you for a little bit with how that last game ended. Kind of. Yeah, I think it's the way yeah. he cranked up at the end. He's, he starts feeling himself. Maybe he thinks he found something. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know what's going through his head. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, he's got the plus one defense, taking a little away from his speed. We'll see what happens, man. He's really finding a lot of answers for the queen out with his bow. And Let's see what... so, do we have a map change? Yes, we yeah. do. The Moolah shot. Two, one. <laughs> Watch out, game number three. Yep, yeah, Megdi back against the wall right now. Loses this game, his series will be over and he will be in the loser side of things. So, let's see if Megdi can crank up and avoid 3-0. There we go. Let me see some more of that, Megdi. Nice, good read. Gets the full extension. Yeah, I'm telling you that, Bo. Oh my gosh. Goodness. This bow immediately stepping up. Java, I think throwing spear earlier for Katars might have been a bit of a mistake because now he's in a very, very difficult spot to come back from a ledge guard and actually oh. gets the reversal. Clashes out the recovery with a D sig to come back from multiple bow dares. Meg the weapon starving has bow doubled down. Java, all the work that Java had to do, like I said, very confident guy off stage, but he needed to channel all of his powers just to bring it close to even. I think this bow on Miami Dome working out. Great for Meg D. So, weirdly enough, not a character swap, but a map swap to pull this one through. Bring us a little yeah. bit closer. Dealer recovery job can take the first strike, though. But still, Meg D, when he's in control, he's in control. It's he's starting to get very, very unpredictable and is like slowing down the game when Java expects at least wears him down. Speeding up the game when Java expects at least. And he has a very hard time responding to that. Meg D flipping back and Fourth, making him very, very hard to predict as Java actually very commonly running out of options. One of these days, Meggy's gonna capitalize on that. Mm -hmm. Nice down there, pushes him off stage. He floats all the way to the right. <laughs> Takes the long way back home. He's taking his time with it. He's in the lead. Oh. And still gonna catch him on the way back though. Great job, Meggy neutralizing the stocks before it got out of hand. Right now, health pretty much in, the, in, in range. One or two little attacks, and he's back in the game. Throws the spear. He does not want it. <laughs> he, he wants the guitars, man. He's trying to cut something up, bro. Let's see what he can do. I mean, he's up in the set. Guitars do some good damage. Megdi is uh, still in yellow, so Java's a lot of work to do. And he's spending a lot of time on spear. Megdi's at the end of his stock. Both of these players agreeing to a bit more of a slower game. Both of these players don't mm. want to create a lead for the other player, but Java is slowly, slowly outperforming Meg D, but it's only by a little bit, as some of these signatures are starting to miss. As we have Meg D switching over to the bow, might be starting to hone his eyes in for a KO a little bit more. Some of these Ember Sigs like that end sig could KO very, very early. Java is using signatures a lot, lot 
less starting to get punished from a bit more realizing, hey, I should not be doing this as uh, Java is trying to dance around this bow, but it's not quite working. Megdi playing so slow on guitars finally bursts out the bow to bring Java out of his comfort zone and is at a fantastic spot to maybe go ahead in this game, but we do have Spear coming out from Java. That could be the KO getting, almost doesn't get punished for all these signatures. He's probably just playing around at this point. Bro, this is insane. It's been three minutes, 15 seconds, and only What's one stock that? has been taken so far, man. Chava. The amount of patience Dude. from all these players is insane. What is this? Oh, man. I think Java's just playing around. Nice, man. I'm gonna take the stock. Magdi taking the first game of the or lead of the game. You know, back against the wall. It's all or nothing right here, Magdi. Uh, wow, Java's able to make it work. Snags guitars, but still can't find a landing space with all the end lights and jump nares. Thank you for demonstrating for that. Uh, it can be very hard to find some landing space from uh, Bow, and that's part of the reason why Java wants to try and approach from the side and come back from a ledge guard rather than come back from above, risk an end light for recovery or jump nair or what have you. Java needs to try and defend this weapon, but Megdi able to hop over his head, find guitars, or Match a small lead in favor of uh, uh, Megdi gets evened out, but still, both these players need to try and build up some damage now. Megdi now uh, kind of putting his foot on the brakes a little bit, taking this a bit more easy. Tries to drain mm. Java of all the battery, but still, I don't think he's run on battery. I think he's run on something else completely. And <laughs> Megdi had the lead with Java, you know, taking that right back, making sure he's. Ooh, ooh. Position to take this series three go right now. One stock left. Megdi on his final stop. What can he do? Ground pound, not off stage, so he's gonna hang in there, bouncing off the floor. Yeah, spear in hand. You saw him toss it early. He's gonna keep it. Spam these six. The queen eye action coming in crazy. <laughs> Megdi, man, gotta get back to stage. Make something happen, or he will be on loser side of things. Java's in the lead, so he can really just kind of hang back and wait for Meg D to Ooh. approach him and uh, really just keep him at bay. Push that him down away. Is gonna do it, man. Rowing the boat straight to the top eight, man. 3 0 in favor of Java, man. Congratulations. Well played, Meg D, man. I like the Ember gameplay, but fortunately, you will be on loser side of things. Things are not over for the boy Meg D, though, man. He still has a chance to make it back. We might see him in grand finals, man. You never know. But. Java ultimately moving on to the top eight. And that game was crazy that in terms of like how long it took. I'm just thinking about it. I think I think they took that down to the three minute mark. That's insane, bro. A little bit past it too. <laughs> yeah. They hit it like what? 258 or something? That's insane, bro. That's what, five minute game? <laughs> Java was still in control for a decent part of it. It's the fact that the game went so slow that Java was still in control. He wasn't out aggressing Magdi. He was just beating him at his own game. Not a lot of people could do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after this game, we will be going to a short break, man. Stay tuned. I'll make sure y'all stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. We got a lot of great games going for you in this Magma Mayhem. So make sure you stay tuned. We will be back shortly, man. Quick little break, man. Yes, sir. Don't go nowhere. <laughs>
And we are back, man, with the top eight side of things, winner semifinal, man. I'm excited, man. Magma Mayhem, we got first set up, we got Luna versus Radis, man. This is gonna be a great one, man. What do you think, Graffiti? Any thoughts, man? Look at the earnings, look at the medals. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Both of these players have had a very interesting path to get here. Uh, Luna having to beat Snowy, his own teammate in a 3-1 to get here. And Radish uh, taking a pretty clean 3-0 over Clem to find a spot in top 8. Both of their top 8 qualifier matches done. And here they are. And one thing to note is that... um. Uh, Luna has a very, very versatile character pool. We could be seeing a few more of those faces come out to play. Meanwhile, Radish could be sticking the entire rest of the night on Petro. We could be going the rest of the day without seeing a Tesca. This could be very, very interesting. We are just banning out maps. I think Luna needs to ban out this last one. No, it's actually up to Radish to choose between Brawlhaven, Miami Dome, and we go to Demon Island. This map yes, has sir. benefited both of these players a lot. Both of these players should be very, very comfortable at home here. And I'm pretty sure this was actually the um, uh, the Winter Royale Grand Three, Finals. Two, and that was, I think, a nine-game Grams, was it not? That was a very, very tense set to watch. It went on for like an hour. I mean, it, was, it looked very similar to MSI Grand Finals last year. So if Radish is able to lock in, we could be having a very, very long set. Oh man, Luna right now starting his game off on very strong, man. Doing a lot of damage. Unarmed weapon, doesn't matter. He's not scared. He's coming in with the blaster. It's nice weapon Whoa. toss with the reverse recovery! Oh my god, Luna! Style points, man. Going crazy to start this series off, man. Radish, can he answer back? Really good. Slow down the game a bit. People commend Radish a lot for his ability to play defensively and um, really hold his own. We do have him really start to kind of actually find his way out of Luna's attacks a lot more. Whatever was working in that first stock, not quite working anymore, but Luna very well timed on the up dodge. Almost had a reversal cooking, uh, but it gets, uh, it gets taken over. Mm. Ooh, Clash, that's it's gonna, gonna be, do yeah. It. Yeah, not gonna make it back, for sure. Ice Man Light, do the trick. Not the most frequent KO on the orb kit, but he made it work right there. Game pretty much even. Luna with a slight lead, but anything can happen. Nice GC. Ooh, off to the dead. Anything can, and I got a feeling anything will, as there was a moment during the start of those first stocks where both players were being very, very cautious. They were stacked for what felt like an entire minute, and yet they still just chose not oh to really approach. There come some of those orb d sigs that we know Radish is able to delete. That just stocks games with, but it ends up being recovery to send Radish to last stock of the game. But the damage has been done, and there's not much extra credit Luda can get because this second stock is all also on its way out. Radish is also playing the offstage, very careful, learning his lesson from that first game. Like, no, 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 I almost forgot this kid is a threat offstage. And the only time I'm gonna be offstage is when I'm finishing off one of the floor stocks. And even then, I don't really have to do too much. If I send you far away enough, you're not gonna have enough options anyways. We now have a dead even game last stock. And this is looking very different from the start of the second stock. Radish, so much more confident than last. For sure, oh. man. Luna, master these high pressure situations, Luna. man. This, this is just trading momentum after momentum. Neither one of these guys have had the other in control for that long. They're both just escaping and then immediately reversing. All right, this is tough right now. Right now, you want to take this game number one, start the series out strong. Luna put himself in a position to do so. Raider Sweat Drops coming in. n going to catch him. Weapon toss. Not gonna be able to make it back, man. Game number one is going in favor of Luna. Look at the damage, pretty even on the damage, but Luna making it count where it counts most. And um, although that game was very, very back and forth, uh, it was the way that it ended that I would say out of a lot of faith in Luna 
right now. Uh, just because if, if we're going to be coming back, reads the dare to recover with a weapon throw. Luna's starting to have him red. And also, feel pretty kind. Look at the little dash dancing uh, over on the other side of the stage, knowing I, I got this. I could enjoy the last few seconds of the game. I don't even have to land any attacks. Luna's going to have a quick little restart. I'll be back pretty shortly. And uh, that first game, Radish. Radish found a rhythm, but Luna just kept ripping the headphones off and forcing Radish to listen to his own music, and I, he just found his way in. So I guess Radish either needs to find a way to repeat that original rhythm that he was able to find here and there in that game, or else Luna will just be able to take it away, because he now has the guy red. Oh man, right now, Luna up 1-0 in this series. You know, this isn't first to three, though. You know, it ain't. It's not over. Nothing set in stone right now. One don't mean nothing. Two don't mean nothing. You got to hit three. Right now, nice little class to start off the game. Luna, that aggression, man, is unmatched, bro. That's my favorite thing about Luna gameplay, his aggressiveness. My opinion, he's the best Blasters player in the game in the 1v1 scene. Like, just look at the flow chart, man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> nice recovery from Raiders to get out of that. Recovery not gonna do the trick on Demon Island, super high ceiling. Can Raiders find some strings of his own? Nice. It's really just been Luna in control. Is he able to come back from this yet? Radish is having a very hard time finding some of these punishes, some of these stairs. There's not quite finding their mark. Luna is quickly pulling ahead. Oh my god. The weird end line. Not a, I don't know anybody else who would go for that in that situation. But the way he wave dashing, that was too Nice GCN light. <laughs> Weapon toss. That's gonna fight in the back. Nice kill, what? for sure. He was He's super good. He's moving right now. <laughs> He's like a keyboard player. He's practicing the, the experimental mechanics where you can like dash jump like one frame after another or something. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but it feels like it. If you watch the way that people dash jump, chain dash jumps together with the experimental mechanics, oh, it is diabolical. Mmm. Right now, Radish needs to clean up this stock quick if he wants to stay in this game. Can't let Luna get too much extra credit. Luna's One light side, side light set might do the trick though. And there it goes. Yep. And it happened. Caught his landing. Opted for that kill confirmed. Luna was choosing to play his red stock lead very defensively. Trying not to go for that much extra credit and just trying to survive a little bit longer and get uh, any chip damage he can and wear Radish down. But now that Luna is now on a second stock, start to chase a little bit more, but there's a correction trying to get punished a little bit more from Radish. Radish now flipping the script. Has Luna read a decent bit? Is finding his way out of Luna's attacks a lot more. We can also find a different way to approach the TC Sanctions. Best way to start, but hey, it is a start. We've not really seen him use it that much this whole set. Nay, this entire tournament. And so it'll mm -hmm. actually be the guitar side. It's like Luna changing his approach very, very nicely, learning from his mistakes. And uh, although the 2 0 is, I'm not quite convinced on the 2 0 just yet, he's bringing it a bit more close. I do say could have ended his whole career right there. Oh, I, I'll lose him. Oh, no dodge. Not able to get the weapon toys. Very well placed there, though. I'm telling you, Luna's just too confident, man. I love his gameplay, bro. It's so fun to watch. That's the super villain in action right now. Developing a damage lead, even though he's in dark red. Radish needs to clean this up quick. One side like Sarah will do it. He's chasing. He's hungry for this KO. Oh, he almost has Radish in the red. This is dangerous. Not looking too good. Weapon throw down is pretty a weird option. Radish also trying to be very unpredictable, and it checks out. Able to punish uh, with a share, bring stocks even, and now Radish just has to rely on the good old defense we know and love him for. Uh, we could be seeing a few more weapon throws. We could be seeing a lot less saves. We could be seeing a bit more of the Meg D Tech dash jump in, All dodge right. out, but you can't dodge out of that recovery. Although it is oh to Radish, I think, played that last game, um, maybe not better than the first game, but in a way that I still feel, I feel like, if anything, I feel like I'd be, I believe he has more of a chance now than he did that first game, because that first game, it was just, they were constantly trading control. It was breakout after breakout, but this one went the distance, and Radish held up. The fact that he was able to keep even after a pretty long and grueling game, I think 
probably means a bit better for his success as uh, we will be touching down on game three on win for the for the for the map three on the dual drum roll <laughs> me personally i think after that game number two you saw the damage yeah. increase you know Luna this time putting 600 instead of 450 from the first game you see he's getting a little comfortable he had seven signature count versus three from the first game he's getting comfortable man when luna gets comfortable that's dangerous man and he, he won that game a lot more convincingly the first one so hopefully rage does get the download because i do want to see this series go farther but my gut telling me Luna got this one in the bag. Right now, Raiders doing an amazing job. Oh. First start in the lead. Dare to stop the six. Say ground pound. Ground pound. Gonna do the trick. Only in the yellow. Up a full stock right now in this game number three. Come on, Raiders. Let me see something. Put us to the game five, man. Please. I sound a lot of my praise about Raiders' defense. His offense is looking really good. When he wants to rush down and just hone in, he knows how to do it. But right now, he wants to mm. pick up some pace. Again, has to make Raiders recover away just to try and evade an attack. Luna still dash jumping and dancing all like the while. Right, just touch it down. Second stop. Luna immediately also evening out the game and just juggling not only the weapons but also Raidish himself. As now it's up to Luna to speed up the game, bring him closer and closer to a 3 0. Raidish needs this is looking a bit like that first game where they're just trading control. They're trading breakout combo after breakout combo. But Raidish having a very hard time finding his own. He started this game out incredibly, but look at where that got him. Nah, man, Luna, he was down that first stock, a full first stock, and you can't even tell, man. I'm telling you, in these high person situations, you want anybody on the line? I got Luna, man. I'm trying to tell you. He doesn't fear nothing. I'm mean, being so confident despite the fact that he's on red right now. I, If he's feeling confident, I kind of have to trust him. He knows so what he's like doing. Sure. Oh, for sure, it's looking real dangerous. That's definitely gonna be a ground pound confirm. Caught the dodge, you know, took a little too long to get back to stage. Radish on his series stock right now. He has to win this gun, this fight right here if he wants to win. That was Sweatbeat. Oh, no. That was Sweatbeat. Chase dodge. He's doing a great job. Oh my God, Radish. Radish. Like I said, Luna, no fear, man. <laughs> Raiders brought the game even, and he's still trying to maybe build up a little bit more damage in his favor. Sare after Sare, and Nair after Nair, not quite going to do it. We are back in a bit more of a slow game. Both of these players have had their time in the spotlight, really kind of show off, but Luna just going to get one more say in the matter. All it takes is one flashy little combo, and we have ourselves a very, very, um, uh, Pretty, out of all the game threes that you could have had, that was one of the more stressful to watch. Mm, I'm telling you, as soon as we would, the way the game started, you would have think Raiders had that in the bag. He had Luna <laughs> stock down. He was only in yellow, but Luna, man, doesn't matter what the number is, doesn't matter what the damage is. If he's in the game, he can still win it, man. And he did, man, winning the series 3-0, moving himself to winners finals, man. I'm excited because. We're about to find out who's going to meet him in winners finals. We got the next set coming up. That is Impala versus who is it? Let me see. Impala versus Java. And the winner of those two players will go on to fight Luna in the winners finals side of things. And shout out to both players from that last match. Even though it was a 3-0, I don't feel like it tell the full story of things. That was a lot closer than a look when you look at the series count, man. And it was a great series overall, but shout out to both those players. I'm excited for the two players we got right now. It's going to be a good one. As you look, you can look at the earnings. You know, Impala is the current world champion. You know, Java definitely got some 1v1 experience under his belt. We saw him going crazy against Megdi in that last series. So I'm excited. I wonder what character he's going to pull out. He was switching it up a lot in the last series, too. My heart really wants to see the Queen Nye again. <laughs> Sometimes I play a little bit of Queen Nye, and like in theory, she's supposed to be a really, really good character. Like I said, I play her from time to time, and she's actually a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just that speed, man. It's tough, man. When she got yeah. so so slow speed, it's tough, man. It's tough. Once you want to play around that, though. Yeah. 
Because, like, sometimes her... Si I mean, granted, they're pretty slow, and it can be pretty hard to punish, so learning how to use the signatures, it definitely takes a while, but once you grab that and you learn how to use the signatures to make the dis have the distance of the signatures make up for the speed, it can almost feel like how sometimes bow can be pretty annoying to fight in a way because of just how much range it covers, and if the bow player uh, places their attacks perfectly, you can just never find your way in, and I think that is what Impala is planning. So if we do see a Queen Nine, we might be seeing a few more signatures to try and uh, combat the bow. Both these players trying to use whatever they can in their kit to keep each other at bay, or who knows, maybe they might be feeling a little bit more rushdown style. We got Java in the lobby. Impala, take a wild guess as to what Impala is playing. There's got to be playing Kaya. There's just yeah. no other legend, man. There's no other legend. I thought I was, so. was going to try and, like, trip people up and, like, I don't know, try and make, like, a dumb little moment. He's playing Jay Young, man. <laughs> no, but he's taking, <laughs> he's taking a page out of my book, pulling out the great sword, man, trying to have some fun. No, I say, you know, I already know. It's Kaya, man. It's in Paula, bro. He's definitely going to be going with his comfort pick. Like I said, man, super epic time, man. We already know what time it is. The spear was looking extremely master for earlier. I want to see some more of that. Got to go against Java, though. Let's see what he can do, man. Game one on Small Brawl Haven. Yeah, no, both these players, they are ready for the fight. Fired up from their quarterfinals match. We do already see some signatures coming out. Actually, I didn't think there would be like two in the first 10 seconds. I know that I was saying that, but like, Oh my goodness gracious, mm. we do have the delete button coming out to play. Oh, signature gone. after signature, pogo dare after pogo dare. All it takes is 30 seconds for the delete key to become active. Java immediately pulling ahead. Paula did not get to play that much on that first stop. No, I, uh, Java. Oh, he's still gone. Orange. Still he's still active. gone. No way he steals another start right here. He's not <laughs> He's literally up a full start right here, not even a minute into the game. Pretty impressive. Ooh, that Sarah would have did the trick. Java could do something really funny. Overlap Impala. Right now, Impala is always trying to learn from mistakes and realize I'm like, all right, yeah, I gotta respect these signatures. And also, is playing a lot more time on bow to try to make it very hard to for Java to find his way in. So the game is fully starting to ramp up now. That first mm. stock was probably just Java showing off a little bit, catching Impala off guard. It definitely worked. Both these players, mm. they are fully wounded up and right now paul is able to even out stocks but still not completely unscathed java depending i mean i forgot what weapon he has has guitar so it's gonna take a little bit of extra work for him if he had spear doesn't use the ground pound as a bait just full sends how often do people see people do that that's insane and like again pretty clean <laughs> earlier he had the double gcd lights one on the left the side of the stage one on the right side of the stage definitely want to write that one down the boy fall is too nice for it but Bro. java looking extremely clean right now up a whole stop looking to take this game number one the both of the weapon throws hit and he still kind of has impala red a bit and it, or at the very least is someone's being very patient with these follow-ups but is also whenever the attack is about to hit always has his finger on the trigger someone just waits a bit to see where impala is running off to whether it be a punish whether it be a read java has got impala in the palm of his hands impala desperately has to chase up for that nair and it misses and that's just to try and even out stocks java is starting to slow down a little bit not quite trying to over aggress impala recognizes the state of the game but is still being very very confident off stage against impala's bow which sometimes is not the best idea but being off stage mm. at all against java is probably never going to be a good idea. Impala did really... Impala was playing from behind that whole game, didn't really get to play a lot of Brawlhalla. So if we have the game slowed down, that's going to work incredibly for Impala's stocks to last a lot longer. If we had the wedge graphs, that... I really wish we had the wedge graphs for that. I really want to see the Three, stocks. Three, two, stocks one no he took impala's first stock under a minute that first game and from there he, he never lost seconds. control he just maintained it throughout the entirety of that game Ooh. right now impala looking to reverse the script right here sweat beats coming out already got java in the orange right now oh whoa, whoa. 
Ooh. Off stage. Someone's gotta go. Someone's gotta go. One of you not making it back from this. And nice spacing. Still pushing them off. Ooh, the instinct not gonna do it. That's Queen Nine, man. She got too much defense. <laughs> Pivots the Sair. Doesn't get the read though. Oh. One sig will do it. Ooh, perfect dodge. A signature will do it, but a lot of the signatures that Impala uh, likes to try and toss out for these KOs not really quite working. Java is nice. used to seeing uh, Kaya gameplay. It takes a neutral. It takes a neutral air. Big Java off the top after some struggle. Every single uh, signature that Impala has thrown out. I think this set has missed, or at the very least in this game alone. And it's really taken Impala with the uh, quicker light attacks to build up some chip damage on a Java and then just patiently wait for the KO. But I don't think Impala wants to be patient anymore. He wants to respawn by pushing Java on that back foot, saying, I didn't get to play it all last game. Now you gotta go to the timeout. No, yeah, this is a complete flip script of, of game number one. You know, Impala looking like he didn't get to do nothing game one, like you said, but right now it might be a three stop, man. Java almost in the red already on his last stop this game number two. Impala with a oh get back God. game, that flip outro in the, the game, okay? Leaving him on a oh. 163 damage, man. What a game, man. 2-2, two, two, even up the stocks, man. All right, now, can we can we get the graph for that one? That was insane. Impala not even dropping a stock that game, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Gracious, we are changing. Java immediately recognizes, saying like, yeah, no, you have proved yourself. That first game, maybe I was a bit too harsh. We are dropping back down on to Apocalypse. But Java, although um, Impala has earned Java's respect, and Java's playing a little bit differently, not by much, and still trying to pick up the pace. It is now on Impala to either try and recreate uh, the uh, advantage that he was able to push for himself in that second game, or to just, if he loses control, that is Impala losing the first stock pretty early. Right now, Impala in the red, holding on to this stock, doesn't want to let go, wants to at least get some damage out, because right now Java's only in the yellow. Nice snares coming in. Impala doing a great job of doing more than he can before he goes down. Ooh, there. Oh! One sick definitely gonna do it. He falls <laughs> right into it, man. That's the gold player classic, man. Big serpent coming up. I was just about to say, it's so funny watching someone of like Impala's level get hit by a uh, nice spear D Sig. There's something so funny about that. Not for sure. It's such a slow move, too. That's the crazy thing. Ooh. GC side light for uh, Java on the guitars. Like I said, people are actually starting to get a lot more creative with the guitars at first. It was Pierre. Then we saw a little bit of that coming up from uh, Luna. Java's also starting to tap into that a bit. More players are nice. along. A signature finally connects, but it's not enough. The high defense of Queen Nye letting Java survive just a little bit longer. I don't think we'll be seeing him go up stocks three to one, but Impala has a has to really chew through this first stock. This is getting hard to watch. Wow, no, he's had about three confirms that would normally kill any other legend, but Java holding on, refusing to let go. Ooh, you had to rip that one out of him, bro. The weapon throw costs him. The time it took him to throw up the weapon throw, he lost enough uh, mid-air momentum, not like, you know, mental momentum, but actual physics momentum. Mm. Not right now, Paula. Orange. Got to try to do as much damage as he can before Ooh. losing this. Oh, nice dodge on the sick. See what he can do with this bow right now. It's not looking too good, man. Java looking extremely strong in this game number three. Six coming out, left to the right. Java oh starting God. to uh, respect <laughs> the aggression. What's his accuracy on them six? It's got to be higher than 50. <laughs> Also some very quick reaction times from Java, able to jump out from a weapon throw and also uh, being so, always knowing or always having a very good reaction to his speed as to where Impala is, where he's moving. I think that's really helping out his um, 
Uh, mm. Sig accuracy. It's not only just positioning, it is also his reaction speed to know, all right, I'm in a good spot for a dare. I only have a few frames to hit it, and I'm able to snag it. This is now Java really, really pushing his advantage far, and Impala's having a hard time punishing him for it and letting this queen run free. Mm, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, the weapon toss. He's dead. No, Chase, <gasps> Chase Dodge! Dodge! Get back to Java going a little too crazy. Uh oh. You do not want to regret that, Java. Definitely got to take this start right now. You do not want to regret that one. For sure, the game was in your hands. Baller moving like crazy. Catches the yeah. dodge. You know, Java's immediately starting to slow down a bit, realizing, all right, I, I can't let that cost me the game. I got to actually like play the rest of this game. And you also, like, you've earned my respect from that last game, so I, I gotta take my time and recognize I can't let this go out of my way. But Impala, now that the game is slowed down, I think this is where Impala's most comfortable. If Java, if Java had the confidence to step up and continue the pressure, that would have suffocated him because it's only when the game speeds up that Java is able to take a lead in the set. What has, what does Impala have left? I am now very curious. 2-1 in favor of Java, man. That last dog definitely got to hurt Impala. You know, that side sit gets punished, you know. Not sure if that was an accident or what, but you never know what's going through these players' head. Look at the sig count. My gosh. <laughs> Looking like Thea. He really threw up 13 sigs, and I guarantee you he hit at least six or seven. Three, you know? That's crazy, two, man. It's the way to play, man. But it's a 2-1. We can't say nothing. Right now, Impala... You gotta win this game or this series is over. Whole lot of back and forth. First game, Java's game only. Paul was barely on the map. Game two, three stock by Paul. And then game number three, a lot closer, but Ooh, ultimately Java taking it. Got D6 would have been huge as right now. Sure. Yeah, this yeah. game looking um, super close. Paul agrees to go nice back game. onto the last map, which is a very, very curious choice, but it might be starting to pan out for him as uh, this game is slowing down. When the game was slowing down, it would usually be in Impala's favor. Impala was only able to bring the damage to even and reverse Java's lead when the game slowed down. And it's Bro. only when Yo. that... Uh, are we, have we already hit double digits of signatures? We have probably Bro. already hit double digits of signatures. You've earned that little dance there. I think that's his sixth one. <laughs> No, yeah, that's crazy. I guess that's just the way you play nine, man. You gotta throw them out. Maybe the gold players are on or something. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, no. Hit 20, Java. Hit 20 for me, bro, please. You gotta break the record. The most I ever seen was like 24. I think it, I forgot who was playing D. I think it was Boomy. Oh, yeah, no, it was Boomy. Yeah. No, it was costly. It's my fault, but let's see, let's see. Impala back against the wall right now. Gotta make it happen. Lock in. Okay, so Impala has actually made this game look a lot better. He is down in the, the stock department, but if you're looking at the actual game right now, you can see a lot of the times that Java is actually intentionally trying to break neutral, apply pressure, land any nair or side light he can. A decent amount of them have been missing, Ooh. and as D Sig finally connects after all the signatures impala has tried to throw out that stock i think that i mean this entire set i think that's only like the second one as uh yeah no this game although the game states not looking great for impala the game play <gasps> is gonna have to look even better yo he's up in the let's racket. go java <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. See, that's optimal. You gotta span the six in between stocks to bump the number up. That's optimal yeah. right there. That's that's a speedrunner mindset. I like that. I don't want to up a whole stock. Let me see five more, bro. Please, bro. <laughs> but now, for on the real note, Impala, he's on his last life right here on the winner's side, man. He can't go down. If he does, he will have to fight to lose bracket, man. Who would have ever thought, man? This is nine gold player spam action working against the boy Impala, man. Somehow I'm gonna have to write down, man. 
we're just starting to play a little bit more defensively, respecting uh, the gameplay. Impala has been uh, <laughs> pushing on him, but the signatures are still working. Reads the uh, reads Impala crossing in with the end light, so still has this Kaya red a decent bit. Recovers up to the sky. Sing, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. He didn't do that at all last game. That caught me by surprise. Bro, he's up a little stock. He's having fun. <laughs> nice haymaker coming up. Chavo still able to find the hits where it matters, but so can Impala. Both these players have a very, very good clutch factor to them. Can Impala bring us back from the jaws of defeat like we have seen him do quite a few times in the past few months? Or will he Chavo. Comes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ensign, 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 Ensign. Ensign, come on, Ensign. Ready? Ready? I'm putting my money on Ensign. BC. <laughs> Yo, job is mad funny for this, bro. He come knows this is You gotta beat him up, bro. You can't let him do this, bro. Beat him up, man. <laughs> can't let him get away with that. Oh, He's yeah. Make him regret though. it. Make him regret it. There you go. One confirm. You got this, Impala. Do I smell another desig? One confirm. One Ooh. confirm. Impala almost was able to almost SDs off the side of the stage. Oh it was another desig, but it whiffs. And Impala, I mean, Job is actually unarmed, but he Job sees Job's a delayed uppercut. They can't find an option. Another desig is going to whiff. He missed the punish. Java is trying to let guard spear unarmed. Oh no, he's confident, yeah. Oh shoot. Dodgers the recovery! That's it! That's it! Throw the ball! That's the six, man. Let me see the six count, man. Three win. Java takes that ultimately with the masterful work of them nine six, man. Uh, uh, goal players, man. Y'all are on to something, bro. <laughs> Three one in favor of Java, man. But Impala is not out of the tournament, man. Well played, Impala. He does have a chance in losers bracket. This is double elimination. But Java, man, he really got thirty two. <laughs> Yo, he got me rethinking, bro. Harlem, man. I have not been approaching the game correctly, man. Java, you are different, bro. Like, props to you. Salute. I just, I can't believe it, bro. You really changed the game for me, bro. 32 oh, signatures in one game, bro. That's got to be the God. record, bro. And it worked. It's not even like he lost, bro. It worked against a player of Impala's caliber. It's different, man. It's different, bro. Man, man, have props, bro. 32-6. But that will be the last set for me and Graffiti, man. You know, don't stay tuned though. We got some good sets coming up. We got winners finals. We got Luna versus Java for the winners finals because Java did end up winning this set. We will have a lot of players on the loser side of things who still haven't got a chance to make it up. We have Balloon Boy. We have Mowgli, Radish. Now we have Impala. We also have Snowy. So make sure y'all stay tuned, man. But everybody, before y'all go, frame this one up right here. 32 cigs by the boy Java, and he won against a player like Impala, man. That was truly different. That's, that's something never seen before, at least for me, man. So, mad props. You got my full respect. Winning a game like that, the way you did in the fashion you did, man, salute. But like I said, stay tuned. We ain't going nowhere. We will be back after a short break, man. New cast is coming on soon. Graffiti, it was a pleasure casting with you, man. Once a y'all take care. Don't go nowhere, though. We will be back. Peace. See you in just a minute.
Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Moose Wars Magma Mayhem. I am A-Surge, returning from the stream yesterday, and with me today is Steeza, and we've got a pretty nice set of the Elimination Side matches for you. Um, and coming up first, we got Balloon Boy and we got Mowgli. Steeza, you got some thoughts? Man, well, initially this is a real, real upset in general. Like, seeing these two at such a low seat that they were placed in the top eight right now is a real amaze but i've been seeing mowgli trying to show his show his stripes and i think he's really in for it now so what about you Serge? yeah yeah i'm dude mowgli beating megdi is wow I, I was surprised to see that in in five games that's definitely impressive and definitely gonna be seeing the lance out of him i think for most of the tournament that's what we've been seeing and then from balloon boy definitely expect the uh the diana um or maybe you know some kind of switch balloon boy but known to switch a little bit but um, Balloon for Boy, sure, a bit more of an sure. established player at this point, whereas Mowgli coming in PR 366, if I read that correctly, which is yes, sir. pretty far off, but not a huge gap between these players. I think it's going to be a good one. At all. They made it here for a reason, so let's see what they got. Yeah, definitely. Let me get into the room. Um, but hey, I'm pretty surprised to see Mowgli here, too. We were talking about it earlier, but... Man, that, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. Beating a uh, top five PR, I believe, um, in Megdi. Right. So I think there's something to be said definitely about coming in on a big win, you know, feeling really great about yourself and looking forward to what we got. Definitely might see some schmoving and grooving from Balloon Boy and or Mowgli today. So we'll see what's happening today. Um, see the maps and we'll see if there's any counter picks during the um, sets. See if the momentum shifts or shifts towards one player. Um, I'm not sure if either of these players have played each other in bracket before, but I'm sure that this particular match, this particular set between them both of them, is going to be a big, big one in both of their books. So I'm sure this set means a lot to the both of them for sure. Yeah, definitely. And another win under Mowgli's belt would be huge. Um, been on the come up for a couple, couple tournaments recently, I would say. Just placing higher and higher in each major, doing well in community tournaments. And near as I could tell, they've only played once, uh, going back to November, where it was a 3-0 for Balloon Boy. But that, you know, seven months is a long time. I think for Mowgli sure. is a different, much different player than back then. So probably going to be a bit much of a closer set. Looking forward to it. Just waiting on Mowgli, I think, to get in here. Yes, sir. But, uh -huh. uh, looking pretty good so far. So what were your thoughts on the previous set, Serge? Oh yeah, the uh, Impala Java, that was surprising. Um, that was a really good set. It I'm, definitely uh, was. I'm a bit of a fan of both players for sure. Um, two of my like top, I would say top three-ish favorite players to watch. And you know, you always got to root for an upset. So as I was watching, I was sort of hoping for Java to win it out and make it into winner's finals. And he did really impressive on Queen Nine nonetheless, a character I think has been kind of written off for quite a while. So. Oh, for sure. That speed is definitely something to write off with the kind of character <laughs> meta that we've been in now. You know, with high defense, high speed. You know, she has that high defense and high attack, but that speed is really not there. It's really yeah. lacking, but, you know, it was definitely portrayed that we and I can do it. And speaking of speed, we got two seven-speed characters coming in. We got the Diana, we got the Artemis, more or less what we were expecting to see. And uh, game one looks to be getting underway as we go on to brawl haven a tight claustrophobic map perfect for uh perfect for bow i think and perfect for sight so gonna be a lot of high speed action between the two players ready mowgli just putting in work with this lance already yes sir coming in out with the side cigarette artemis looking clean in this raven's honor Lumboy is struggling to, to make it back to stage. Mowgli, right at the start, you know, at the start of game one, it can, things, they can kind of feel themselves out. Lumboy might need to uh, get in a bit of a comfort, but for the moment, Mowgli coming in with all the momentum, clearly getting a lot of these horizontal attacks, side signatures, Sairs, barely misses the down signature. That would have been it for that stock of Lumboy, but now disarmed. Mowgli in a bit of trouble against these blasters, and we know on Brawlhaven how fast they can find this KO. For sure. Now we have Balloon Boy picking up a little momentum, getting a little bit of neutral in now. That daylight recovery, catching the KO. Balloon Boy taking the first stock despite not being in 
you know, I would say motion in the beginning of this match. Yeah, definitely had to get used to this uh, matchup, but Loon Boy already back in the comfort spot. Ooh, misses the ground the pound. Ground oh, pound. Not good, but Mowgli might be able to clean this up with the late ground pound. Ops for the side light. Pretty interesting. Goes back Amazing to the side setup. Thing. Yeah. Just scary position for Balloon Boy. Felt like there wasn't much you could do in that situation. Mowgli had you red. Reading the future, precisely. Mowgli making these slight adjustments to Balloon Boy's offense. Reading his offense. Trying to catch some more change with these left guards. You see a lot of side signatures from Mowgli here. You see Artemis and his dexterity. I guess those come out really fast, you know. Moving and smoothing with the lance, whiffing that GC down light, cause him, but you see these players still in motion, whiffing that side light, trying to get back to stage. Boom Boy going for a lot of D lights here, trying to catch Mowgli off guard. But that a lot of these, definitely cost him. A lot of these GCs out of Balloon Boy are, are not working out, but still in the lead in this game so far. Just wants to find, maybe dare say or not gonna do it. Should work now, although ops for a recovery and now. Mowgli in a pretty great position, Ooh, but the over great dodge the into the dare. Yeah. Loon Boy smooth dodge to get out of trouble there and punish him immediately. Mowgli really wants to find this stock as fast as possible, but Balloon Boy seems pretty strong at stock tanking right now. Mowgli finally side signature is going to do it. That I feel like Mowgli curse. curse. Yeah, for sure. You know, we haven't seen much of that uh, bow from Balloon Boy, so let's see if he's gonna opt back for it. Maybe he's gonna stick to the blasters here now in the last stop. Cause that, those blasters are definitely strong. Tries to catch him with his GC sick there. He like recovery will do it, and Balloon Boy taking game one. Yeah, looking poised after a pretty rough start to the first game. It's going to Brawlhaven against Blasters. That is a scary position, Mowgli, with a switch back to Blasters himself. Onto the Lord Vrax, so definitely keeping the lance, but picking up those blasters on the side. Yeah, I man, I want to brawl having against blasters. I, I will never understand it. Those dealer recoveries were KOing so early Three, for Balloon Boy. Two, one, um, whereas on, a, on another map, on a fortress, on Apocalypse, something like that, it might be a little bit different. But now Mowgli, instead of switching maps, he just switches to blasters himself. He wants to find some kind of reliable KO that the lance doesn't really have. See if uh, the blasters are what the doctor ordered, but right now it is not. Balloon Boy reading the soul out of Mowgli. A tough situation to be in. Hasn't done any damage. Finally gets some in, but Balloon Boy built up such a lead that the deficit for Mowgli is starting to become a problem. Although, these are reads, touch on the dodges. Mowgli's blasters, pretty impressive, honestly. Yeah, I believe these players have a very similar playstyle with these blasters, hence why. It's like a lot of momentum shifting very, very quickly. You go one player from winning in neutral to getting high advantage to the next player, just doing the same exact thing with those blasters. But as we see Mowgli here off the ledge, getting that nair, grabbing the weapon, but still getting punished with the stair. Big weapon to us off stage. You know that lance, re that lance recovery. Ooh, getting caught by the bow recovery though for the knockout with the taunt. Balloon Boy going crazy right now. Yeah. Wow, commitment on the side signature. Balloon Boy already gonna get himself some extra credit. Mowgli just kind of hands it to him and just throwing these out. It feels like Mowgli doesn't feel really comfortable finding the KO on these blasters, which I would say not a lot of players do, but man, Mowgli right now just can't find this KO. These stairs aren't Looking doing it, it, and Balloon Boy's building up way too much damage. D I didn't think that's gonna do it. Caught the Big GC. punish on the GC sig. Balloon Boy feeling it right now. Dancing around, dancing around, trying to keep this third stock. Mowgli is not happy right now. Looking for this stock. Within that lance recovery and Sear and the side signature. Mowgli is looking a little lost right now. I'm, oh, Balloon Boy. Opting out for the bow. Finally, signature catches with the taunts. These guys are having fun right now. You like to see that. From what, I know about, madness. from what I know about Mowgli, I, I know that, that he talks a lot. I think a lot of players know that. So in the middle of the games, Mowgli likes to say some stuff. I imagine these taunts are uh, not very kind taunts from the Loon Boy, who is uh, putting the hurt on Mowgli so far in this game with the Diana. And isn't really even forced to play the bow, which I think is, oh my god, reads Ooh. the dodge out of a delight. The Loon Boy, as I say that he wasn't doing good on bow, just clearly <laughs> knows what he's doing on that weapon. 
Try to there. get the clip for the immediate time. You know that's exactly what he was going for there. These boys are fighting for bragging rights right now. Unarmed <laughs> play. <Victory>. Sheesh! <laughs> Blue Boy takes game two, but man, it feels like that was the final game because they're just basically screwing around at that point. Man, man. It's good to see players still having fun and making it to the top eight. You know, as we said, C22 and C32, man, rocking it out all the way at the top, taking out some high seeds, some big upsets, and they're really doing their thing right now, regardless. So it's good to see that these players are still having fun. May go back to Brawlhaven. It looks like they're locking back in on Brawlhaven. We're seeing a switch right back to the Artemis. We'll see how Mowgli can answer back with the 2-0 in Balloon Boy's favor. Yeah, not a not where you want to be down uh, 0-2. Three, pretty tough situation, two, but back onto the Artemis, back onto Brawlhaven. Mowgli, just, I, I think it's a comfort thing to go back to this character. Feel like you weren't doing great on the Blasters, which it wasn't looking good. I know Mowgli has a pretty impressive sight, so we didn't get to see a lot of that in the first game. Maybe we'll see it yeah. this time around. Mowgli's definitely put in some work. Definitely has been hoarding on the lance the last two sets. Um, Trying to opt out, I guess. See what the scythe is about. Um, very interesting neutral being played here. These players are just looking to forward their advantage immediately. It looks like <laughs> kind of an experimental game, if you ask me. I'm not really sure. But going for the ground pound. Moon Boy using his options very well off stage there. Getting that last touch. Now Moon Boy at disadvantage. Trying to make something out of his options here. Two explanation parts made it back. Instant GP for nothing. I mean, it's not a great position to be in for Mowgli right now. Just trying to find this damage onto the side, although gets a read oh, on now. a jump. And yeah. now Balloon Boy, the one in trouble off stage. But uh, Mowgli ground pound, it doesn't connect. And now Balloon Boy, with all the control with these blasters, almost gets the dodge in. He got the right read, just wasn't able to punish it correctly. Now Mowgli, an end light, not gonna do it, dodges Ooh. away, Balloon Boy knows, reacts to it, finds the Sair, and takes the lead in game three. I think these dudes is playing for clips, Serge. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think so too. I might see this set back on Twitter later. Let's see. Nair, oh, Nair, man. Nair. Well, end light, end light. We love the end lights. Yeah, Balloon Boy's bow, oh, looking. Pretty impressive. Doesn't get the dodge in read that he saw last time, but gets the dodge Ooh. up and away read with the neutral signature. And Mowgli's stock evaporates. The little the little boy boy just mode. clicked his clip shortcut. Uh, that's why he just got um, side stick. <laughs> Tough, but it's all good. Back in the game. He used to find a better button for that so he doesn't get so distracted trying to press it. Easily, right? You know? <laughs> Mowgli starting to put it together, but. Now the Balloon Boy is a weapon, and on this bow, this does not feel like a disadvantage for Balloon Boy, who I would say I know much more for the Blasters, but the bow has been putting in work this set, starting in that and game we have too. Mowgli, Mowgli on his tournament stock here, really looking for something, at least bring it back to last stock, but Balloon Boy is fighting back off stage, unarmed, no options, made it back, still floating. Oof, it's not looking good for Mowgli right now. Misses his weapon bounce off the stage. <laughs> Balloon Boy really is going for clips. <laughs> I'm funny. telling you. He doesn't get What's it. He finds an unarmed GG, the outro. Man, Balloon Boy just cleans it up. That that set was, I wouldn't call that particularly close. Balloon Boy just mopped up Magli, who, you know, found his, uh, he beat Meg D to get here. So definitely an impressive permanent run. Made it to top eight, but Balloon Boy just a, a bridge too far for, for Mowgli. Balloon Boy moves on to fight Radish. Man, I don't know if I was overwhelmed or underimpressed. And underimpressed is not a word. <laughs> for the players that had some upsets here, this, this was kind of an anticlimactic set. This looked like a real clip worth game. And that could be between the players, you know, they could just be friends having a good. Have a good time. You see 500 damage from Balloon Boy's Dirty Diana going crazy on the Blasters and Bow. 304 damage from Mowgli in that last game. But. Yeah, man. And pretty good showing from Balloon Boy, though. Pretty dominant on both weapons. And to move into our, our next set, we got Snowy. We got Anonymous Alex. This is a 
a clash of titans honestly um because snowy uh fell off a bit a couple months ago but since then has been quite on the rise and anonymous alex uh you never know right can be play very off one tournament and then an hour later show up to a different one and dominate anonymous alex that's why anonymous is alex his play style is anonymous you know some days he's popping off some days he's not but yeah. hence we see him now in the top eight going against moonless snowy let's see what's going on against um let's see what these characters selections are because i think snowy may go with his asuri you may see a caspian here i think he was playing a lot of caspian during this particular tourney might stick it through with those guitars still you know that's his main weapon um and we'll see who anonymous alice decides to lock in and where they decide to go uh i'm looking to see a very intense set here you know yeah and see who's going with a lot of the so anonymous alex i would say i definitely know for the axe um has been playing that forever for a while was the taros way back when um when taros was big when luna was playing it when snowy was playing rayman um but oh. yeah since then has been playing more of the the jala even some some great sword i would think with the the jay yun um so anonymous alex uh, locks in the terrace i would love to see that but snowy onto the caspian man this is pretty much the opposite of the last game where it was like a lot of really high speed now we have high attack and high attack yeah, yeah. this is gonna be this is scary a couple hits and a ko for both players especially with those caspian signatures we know the side signature on guitars the uh, side signature on gauntlets pretty much everything gauntlets has in its kit for caspian is just k-o-u and yes percent it's it's done so it's gonna be pretty interesting. same that's the same with taros and both of his weapons his hammer and his axe any sick from those probably catch three of them you in the red one stair that's a stop three two so these players got to be careful let's see how they brawl out and ball out already landed some nares looking aggressive snowy anonymous alex right onto the axe i would say uh known for a bit more of a, a slower axe play style a bit more methodical but very rarely i would say does anonymous alice miss a move or multiple in a row it's always these end lights these d lights you know it's just keeping snowy out walling out guitars which is exactly how, to, how you have to play this matchup right you have to throw out your end lights and d lights and nares try to keep guitars from coming in with the, the dares and the side lights so Anonymous Alex doing a great job of that right now. Gets onto the hammer. Snowy is already in KO percent, basically, from a stomp there. So, Anonymous Alex, yep, he's hunting for it with them stomps. Absolutely. Snowy's movement, though, looking very nice. This new update, man. I'm pretty sure everybody's enjoying the movement. So it looks like he's almost wave dashing on these guitars. Excellent. But <laughs> trying to rack up this damage. Ooh, and sick. Like I said, these six can really turn around the game just like that ground pound sending him downtown <laughs> i love seeing that it just shows you like this is what you got hit by this is what you got hit by this ground pound right here <laughs> and honest alex just showing him a little bit but able to make it back loses the axe probably wants to pick up hammer so he can get axe to start the next stock yeah he's able to get that and man that might be big damage gets the dodge with hammer you never know that can actually be a lot he's able to get a beast Decent punish, though, by Anonymous Alex. We'll take those. Yeah. And look at that. It's been, what, three hits? Ooh. And Snowy is out of white and into nearly orange at this point. Taro's damage. Man, <laughs> it's so much. That neutral. Ooh. The weapon tosses. Catching him. Sticking with the guitar is pretty much the whole game so far. Snowy... Clearly favoring one weapon over the other. Anonymous Alex looks pretty good in this matchup. Just push him off stage a little bit. Snowy already in orange. One more hit will put him into red, and that's where Anonymous Alex can start cooking. A single off stage could get the knockout right here if he does. No options. Ooh, looking very scary for Snowy. Catches the GC be like ground pound. I feel like watching anonymous alex he doesn't he isn't incorporating a, a lot of movement into his game but it doesn't look like it's hurting it, it just seems waiting to be for able snowy to, to approach yeah punish knows exactly how to react when his opponent's in his space that's a very good axe player if you ask me because as an axe or a hammer these weapons with a lot of slow startup and very long with i don't think you want to really like you know approach 
against weapons like guitars and gauntlets with those fast startup moves. Like, you know, because when you get into this in this range where they're playing, where Snowy's trying to play, it's hard for Anonymous Alex to fight back. Like, Snowy is stacked. He can do things like side light recovery, catching that stock, making it one to one in stocks. But Snowy is down in damage, trying to even it back up here, switching to the gauntlets for the first time in the set for real. Yes. See how it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, one more of those might be broke. Yeah, this hammer, any hit pretty much. That was always the, the best part about hammer is when they're in KO percent, you can just press, you spin a wheel, press a hammer move, it will find that stock. So even a side light is pretty much a 50 50 out of it. Anonymous Alex kind of struggling to find any hit. And any hit will do, but if you can't find a single one, that's a problem. Snowy on the Gauntlets is starting to put in some work. Double recovery. Double recovery. But not on Apocalypse. That's not going to KO. Too high of a ceiling. Anonymous. Ooh, punish. punish. <laughs> Snowy just thrown out a signature into the heavens. Gets punished for it. And Anonymous Alex takes the first game. Alex don't play that YOLO stuff, man. He took that YOLO personally. He said, take this. Big punch. <laughs> we like those. Oh, am I see a change in map here? Nope. Oh, right back to Apocalypse. Which back to Apocalypse. I think it's kind of funny. I'm pretty sure Apocalypse has like the second highest ceiling in the game behind Spirit Realm. And you've got these two really high attack characters and really far away Blast two, Zone. So it's like brawl. playing mediocre uh, attack characters on Brawl Haven, basically, because you kind of scale it farther out. Pretty interesting that they're doing that, but Snowy already. But it's some work on the cars. Has been doing a pretty good job this set of finding strings but anonymous alex has been doing an even better job of keeping him out with the axe so might look to switch weapons but right now the hammer is putting in more than enough work already in the lead felt like he only hit him four times this hammer that's all he needs man snowy has to be very good on the movement the mix the weapon toss but the d light into the side air catching him snowy snowy with the yolo n6 man He's loving those. Oof. Didn't look like it had enough knockout power there, but it definitely sent him packing, I guess. Yeah, Taros. I think he's on attack stance too, so. Pretty strong. Ugh. That's tough. Yeah, and Anonymous Alex just makes it look easy. All of his stocks are just like, uh, bait out move, punish it, find the KO. And all of his strings are like, find out what they do, punish it. Snowy finds the side signature. Is yeah, kind of way dash, speaking of punish. Bit. Speaking of punish, great neutral dodge there into the safe to find the knockout from Snowy. But yeah, we see Anonymous Alex playing that traditional brawl hauler that with punish. That space. That dodge. We see Snowy playing that modern brawl hauler with the movement, the movement, the baiting. And honestly, kind of surprising. This is very even so far. Anonymous Alex, a little bit behind at the moment. Side signature, oh, not gonna do it. These signatures hurt. Into the side air, weapon toss, just for just for good measure. Snowy looking alive this game. Yeah, definitely made an adjustment, but it only take one or two hits from this Taros. As we know, oh man, almost just hunted him down with a nair, caught every option, but was able oh. to dodge it. Snowy's still in trouble. Anonymous Alex is taking not touching just a no weapon weapons. Throw. Great jump into dodge into Nair. Looking for something cheap there. Couldn't find it. Ugh. Put him on his last stock. But Snowy still has a little lead here. Just playing a little bit of that under stage control game is Anonymous Alex. Not letting him get into the center stage. The Nair's pushing him out. Still no hits though. Fairly slow. No dodge down or spot dodge. Snowy really hunting for that. Going for that size like two ice. Interesting. Oh. Great GC on life from Snowy there. Oh. Looking for momentum. Punishing that sick. Switching off to the gauntlets. Not finding nothing yet. But Snowy's still with the lead. But Tarot can change that in a second. Wow. Just like that. Players Just like that. I was about to say that when Anon Anonymous Alex does not throw out those... Uh hammer neutral signatures much but when he does it feels like they always hit or they always should hit and he threw one out and it missed and i was like man i feel like that should have hit him and then boom goes right back at it knows he has the read down and 
finds the stock. He's up 2-0 on Snowy, who, by the way, before this set, typed out in chat, said this was a free win. I think he's uh, reconsidering that one. Already, hammer putting it work. Alex. No, he seems to struggle against this hammer with the guitars. I think he's one of the tougher matchups for him in this set so far. Has no options left and just gets down signature. Anonymous Alex um, has not been touched. It's been 30 seconds. Hello? It's, that's the duality seconds. of Alex, man. He'll just take a stock in 30 seconds and then sometimes it'll take him two minutes to find a stock. <laughs> this is looking rough for Snowy. Not a lot of hits at all. Finds a side signature, but... Finally. That should be the stock. Snowy finishes it with a dare. Go to two stock apiece. Ooh. Still looking scary for Snowy here. can't seem to find a way in. He's really looking for it. It's not like Snowy isn't throwing out some risky moves, but he's not finding it. It's just any. a scary space to get inside with Taros finding that in there. Trying to look for more weapon throw into nothing. It's a big stare in the face from Anonymous Alex. Oof. Finding the ground pound. Can't find nothing off of it, but even up the damage just a little bit. But the big Nair coming out from Alex, sending him on to his last stop. On his tournament stock, will Alex get this 3-0 right here? Pretty doable. Although side signature, now we have a completely even game. Which is surprising. Anonymous Alex was in the driver's seat for most of the game prior to this. And now Snowy, just one signature on the Caspian like we were talking about. That's all it takes. Man, these high attack characters, man. These legends. It's anyone's game at any time. You catch them lacking, send them packing real easy. Yep. And wow, the wake up stomp on Hammer against the guitars works out. Snowy's struggling. Brave, Brave attempt by Niners Alex coming out in his favor. Looking for these D lights. Just might be it though. Last option? Oh, no. Ooh, the reversal. Oh my goodness. Player two wins. Anonymous Alex in a flash. Takes that stock, takes the 3 0. Look at dominant over Snowy. Not playing around. Showing him Big Taro's power. Whew. That was a spicy one for sure. Oh my goodness gracious. Playing that, playing that nice neutral anonymous Alex, just baiting out, sitting down with those D lights, playing his game, playing the patient game. That's all it takes. Really coming out strong. Damage numbers. Last not... reversal into the ground pound, sending him downtown. My goodness gracious. Look at the damage. The damage is pretty even around the boards. It's just about the, the knockouts, about who's getting the most effective knockout and where. And it seems like that hammer was really putting in work. 494 damage for Anonymous Alex, 451 for Snowy. And man, it was just a low signature count, but the signatures counted when they counted. Four signatures apiece. Yeah. For both players here, but my goodness gracious. Playing that real basic Brawl Hall of playing that, that 101 fundies with Punish. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And Taro's definitely a good, good, good legend to do so on because those Punishes mean a lot. Catching Snowy lacking a lot in the air, finish him off with those Nairs, those neutral six, or those ground pounds on the edge. Those were almost all of his knockout options throughout that entire set. So shout out to Anonymous Alex for, you know, playing his game, playing his game very slowly and getting it done. Yeah, it never felt like he was out of the driver's seat in that set, pretty much. Just always in control. And uh, that was exactly what it was in the set before that, too, where Balloon Boy never felt out of control, except for at the very, very start of the set. Um, and our next set that we got, it's Balloon Boy again, and now it's Raidish. And this is a, a different beast entirely from, from Mowgli, for sure.
Radish just came off a, a 3-0 from Luna. Probably not happy about it at all. Might take out some some of that anger onto Balloon Boy, who <laughs> has a bit of momentum going his way. But man, this is this is going to be a tough bout. I don't know, man. Balloon Boy might go out and clip Radish right now, man. I'm calling it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Balloon Boy is looking for clips. Balloon Boy Media. That's what we're calling it today, man. He's coming out on top. That's what he's asking for. He's not playing around with his Diana. So, but we know Petra, the legendary Petra from Raiders and his orb, not a game. And Petra's attack, once again, a high attack legend, not a game. So let's see how Balloon Boy answers to this. Already. Radish, I love the, the trip that he's got set up on this Petra on the, the Raven's Honor. Just looks really nice. Oh, for sure. Cold. I'm loving the Diana. Her specs looking like a beautiful blue aviator. You know what I'm saying? That's a good point. Yeah. It's pretty good. And I love the bow selection as well. Balloon Boy with the flavor, the taste, the drip. Man, already. Just dancing around each other a little bit. Pretty even game so far, but Balloon Boy really hunting for these dodges in, some kind of wake up. Whenever he hits him with some kind of Sayer side light, he's backing it up. Hoping Radish will do some kind of mistake, but finally commits. Still not finding anything. I think it's a big part of Rage's game is that it's really hard to follow up on him. Although, man, Darren to just jump in there and freeze the soul out of him. Now, Radish, trying to find this edge guard. Not going to do it, though. <laughs> Ooh, whiffing a Sig for nothing but L punish from Radish. Could have got something big out of that. Bloom Boy hunting. Radish missing that recovery. Bloom Boy making it back to stage. Whiffing that Nair, sending him off stage unarmed. Ooh, great Burp. spot dodge. Ooh, into the unarmed Seer. Getting the first knockout of the game on Raiders. Bloom Boy have something to prove today. Yeah, already starting out with a lead. Not what I would have expected. Raiders came from behind a little bit. Let's see if we can find the stock. Yeah, recovery. Nice recovery. Raiders does such a good job at finding stocks like that. Not falling too far behind in any game. Already putting in some work. Starting to get these... Weapon starves out. It feels like only a little bit of damage, but it, it starts to pound on. He's caking it on. Petra, so, man. So much attack, too, like last set. It's so much damage that Bloomboy has to take. It still can't find a weapon. Finally, the blasters come out, but he's still taking damage. Definitely. Bloomboy showing some movement, though. Is definitely showing his capabilities on the controller the keyboard whatever inputs he's on right now he is moving right now unarmed arm flipping around with these blasters trying to find some damage onto radius this radius got room going into the red radius looking for these jumperies into the recovery not finding them finding the cerdo sending both off stage looking for the oh the sick catching him at the last active frame that was so tough radius so good with those off stage on the ledge now Radish in the lead. Kick the game right back to his hands. And we'll see if Balloon Boy is able to find the stock, but a bit of a bigger deficit. A bit of a tougher AO for Balloon Boy. Still can't find this weapon. Radish, these weapon stars, man. It's brutal. I don't know. Radish might have found the fouls and got the download. Because it's looking like he cannot be stopped. Balloon Boy already in the red on his last stop. Radish, feeling the <laughs> flow. Balloon Boy finding the sig, sending him off stage. Well, now we know he's not just doing that to find a clip, because this is a, a pretty stressful game, I'm sure, and he throws it out anyways. Exactly what he did to Ma uh, Mowgli in that last set. That dodge in. Hey, read on a dodge in, man. Ooh, going for a dirty kill on the blasters. Oh my, oh my goodness! Balloon Boy, like that, looking for clips. He's looking for clips. That was beautiful. What an edge guard. What a sequence from Balloon Boy. Just dare ground pound, dare weapon throw from White, and Petra is done. I said Balloon Boy is looking for clips, and he found clip number one. Hit that F9, hit that shift, whatever he just clipped, he got it locked in. See you later on Twitter, man. Wow, <laughs> Balloon Boy is going crazy right now. Oh boy, that's, that is such a momentum killer for Radish, too. 
That's the biggest problem, is that he was doing so well in that game, and it just, it's just gone. Like, it completely disappeared. Now Radish, I don't know, man. That's, it's tough to come back from that. That was like a zero to death from Balloon Boy almost. It was, yeah. That was insane. And he is picking up right where he left off. He finds a dare. That's it. Radish is done. Ooh. Another dare. Balloon Boy dominant so far in this game, too. I don't know. Did Balloon Boy re upload his files and gave him the wrong download? This is a new Balloon Boy. Yeah, the, the, Just a matter of one life. But Radish said, no, sir. Right back at you, buddy. Yeah, this set broke open. And now both players just clipping each other back and forth. A beautiful edge guard from Balloon Boy and then a beautiful edge guard from Radish on the gauntlets. Now we got an even game again. Boy, they're just playing around center stage, hoping to send each other off stage. Maybe putting some more work like they did earlier, but now it looks like it's time to play the neutral. Let's see who's better at it, because I don't expect either of them to get gimped again in this game. I feel like they might have learned a lesson. Oh, for sure, as we see Radish even going for it. The jump or dodge in read with the recovery. Not even going for off stage pressure. Trying to keep this stock alive for both players, I guess. Get Radish or Balloon Boy down to lower damage before even going for the full knockout. Whoa. Great dodge. That might be the first time I've seen someone dodge that sig perfectly and punish it. Dealer recovery, not going to do it on Apocalypse, but another one will probably send Radish into his final stock. Tries to play around it. Clearly doesn't want to touch the ground. Doesn't want to get hit by one of those. But Balloon Boy knows how to play around that. Radish hunting with that ground pound. Doesn't find the recovery either. Balloon Boy barely makes it through that. Radish remembering that weapon toss us from last set. Dodging it perfectly. Getting out of the way. Ooh, going for that dare. Almost had Balloon Boy off the ledge. Balloon Boy finding his way back to stage. D-Light recovery. What? Sending him out into his tournament stock. I am not sure what just happened there. That knockout. Power did not look like enough, but Radish somehow did not make it back. Okay, I think that when you use Orb Dare, it ever slow slightly moves you backwards. Now, that, that's my only reason that I could think that that happened, because he definitely moved out of hit stun there. He was fine, and then he dares, and he just gone. But Radish, again, yes, it same matter as before, now. answers right back with a stock of his own. We're back to an even game on Final Star. Let's see what Balloon Boy can cook now. He might be clutch. The Radish might shut all of that down. Uh oh, that could have been serious. I think there was a misinput on the recovery. He was looking for an end sig, but man, he caught him perfectly with that dare. And now Balloon Boy, that's still a lot of damage. Even if he's not able to find the edge guard, Radish is starting to get into a little bit of trouble. If one signature, sure. one delay recovery, and all of a sudden we've got AO percent for Radish. A lot, of, a lot of prancing around, a lot of baiting out of moves going on here. These players are looking for someone to whiff. Balloon Boy finding the whiff punish first. Oh my. Went for the deep ground pound, still caught him. Sarah, another weapon toss for game. Balloon Boy. Wow. Tossing him up. Balloon Boy is up 2 0 on Radish. That is impressive right now. He is playing phenomenal in these two games and the way he's made it back in both games to clutch it out with a weapon throw like you said it's just working out great for him. oh boy locking in right now man three two one locking wow. it in right now man balloon boy media maybe you can find another clip in this third game he might be looking for it i think you're right a little element of balloon boy's gameplay is he's just looking to embarrass you a little bit get some of these Crazy hits, AO you in a way that you just don't want to. Feel comfortable and hit Blue Boy gets double the lead. there. Yeah, unfortunately he's not able to find anything off that. He caught a dodge and everything. Nothing else. Picking up that bow, only catching one there. The movement from both of these players. We're not trying to take damage here. Great spacing from Balloon Boy there. I think. Balloon Boy's in his head. He knows. He saw that NC coming a mile away. Radish needs to change it up, or Balloon Boy is just going to take this set in a 3 0. As he did there, that sideline there, catching him off guard. Fire was expecting the same SIG. Got caught jumping in. Yeah, maybe Radish has made the adjustment needed. Starting to look good on this orb. 
the extra credit is going to start piling up. That high attack of Petra becomes a problem at this exact point where you don't want to get hit. You want to take this stock. He's not able to do it. Oh, big, big there. Big N. Big Dare once again. A little bit really finding those. A really great job of it, but still what he's not finding is the stock. Finally, Delight Sayer, is. that should do it. But not much damage. Radish put on on the extra credit, so Bluma can make this into an even game with only a couple hits. For sure. So we see Radish here up in the stamina gauntlets. Not a weapon we see him on very much so, but he is not necessarily weak on these weapons, so... We have seen Radish get some great knockouts on these weapons. At the same time, recover back from the other side. Bloom Boy not having to catch him with the down air once again. Ooh, wow. going low away from that ground pound. Into his own ground pound. Radish making it back ever so slightly. Yeah, but this is so much damage for this boy. And Radish really, what's getting oh, him in this might game. might be it for him. Oh, wow. oh my goodness, Balloon Boy offstage is a demon! He really is. What's going on? Dude, Rage needs to suck one offstage. It's what's getting him knocked out every time. And again, the read from Balloon Boy catches the dodge away and gets three more hits off of it. And finally, a dodge The whack. movement! He had DLA in there. That he just opts not to do so it. Bad. Oh, man. This is... Yeah, Balloon Boy's Balloon got Boy, it. Balloon Boy, please. Please. Balloon Boy! Balloon Boy Media! Balloon Boy Media is live and direct today, folks. Balloon Boy Media is live and direct today. I don't know about Balloon Boy. That looked like a balloon man to me. He was dominating. My goodness. Balloon Boy Productions is in the building. Do we have a Moose Wars montage coming from Balloon Boy real soon? Subscribe to his YouTube, man. He's going crazy right now. Oh my goodness gracious, Balloon Boy. With the re get in the oh. A mere 285 damage from Radish that game. Balloon Boy dominating. Almost doubling his damage. 508. My goodness gracious. Yeah, the, about Balloon a Boy Productions. About a 40 PR difference between the two of them. PR4 to PR41. It didn't matter. It, Balloon Boy is on the come up. It's been a minute, but he is here. And taking out a top five PR, man, that is impressive. Both Megdi and Radish going out early in this tournament. And now our top four is starting to look a little interesting. And the last slot oh, that we have sure. left is going to be decided in our next set. It's Impala. It's Anonymous Alex. And... I, we might have another upset in store. Who knows? But Anonymous Alex is looking good in that last set. Whew, man, I'm living for this right now, man. I'm so glad I got to catch these sets. I did not know. I did not know that Balloon Boy Productions was in the building and Fundamentals 101 Anonymous Alex was in the building coming to upset the people. My goodness gracious. Well, you know, we have D Impala. Rocking out with the Kaya. Casting in Paul Let's see what happens. Dream for me. I, I, I'm a bow player. I love the way that he plays that weapon. I think it's really exciting. But not, the way Anonymous Alex plays neutral is just really smart. You, there's so much you can learn from watching Anonymous Alex play neutral on Axe. And already as we get into it, on the Axe, on the weapon, starving. Anonymous Alex just is so great at this weapon throw. Side light and air. There's a lot of damage put onto a Kaya. High attack legend. It doesn't matter. Impala can't find these hits. Impala can't find a weapon. My goodness. There it is. Whoa. Casting the DLI into the NLI. Wow. Was Alex just playing around Impala so effectively so far. Although Impala is starting to put on the hurt with this bow. Oh, man, Anonymous Alex. Going for a lot of it there. Ooh, and the nice down signature bouncing. of this game is turned on its head. Impala looking great. All of a sudden, finds Delight and a Sayer. Easy. I mean, that looked easy. Impala also playing the Brawl Hall of Fundamentals 101, catching the jump with the Delight into the Sayer. 
me being a spear player myself, I also like watching very high level neutral with spear. Ooh, last option. Goodbye, Alex says. Can't fool anonymous Alex. He knows. He knows what you have. He knows what you can use. Finds that dare. Waits out every option left. Now, again, the weapon starving comes out, but this time Impala starting to play it a little differently. Playing a little bit more aggressive, unarmed. Anonymous Alex throws out one of his rare signatures. Man, that would have been it, that recovery. Anonymous Alex says no, but now the double delay comes out. Ooh. Anonymous Alex in a lot of trouble here. Impala still not done. It's a weapon. Anonymous Alex is disarmed. Finding his hammer. Oof. Ensign from Kai is so fast. Yeah, the second Anonymous Alex missed that delight, it was either hold down and get side sigged or de sigged or jump, get end sigged. And guess is wrong. Anonymous Alex pretty far behind. Wow, the wake up nair? I did not know you could do that against Axe. I guess only in that situation, really. And Impala he can't find the follow ups off of Side Light Nair. And Anonymous Alex is struggling with that. He keeps getting hit out of it. It's like it's negative on him. The like. The like stacked weapon tosses from Impala into Nairs are so impressive right now. Just some. But Anonymous Alex keeping on to his last stock, trying to get Impala to his. Big Sayer coming out. Putting him on his livestock. Taros can do just about anything here, but Kai with his high defense can also stay in the game and get this quick knockout just where he needs to. Impala finding the recovery. Not enough. Looking for the. Ooh. Oh man, that could have been scary. If that ground pound connected. Yeah. There it is. Anonymous Alex threw out some, uh, some pretty punishable moves. Doesn't work out. Impala able to snatch the game away. Go yeah, right back GCN to the that GCN sig was not catching the likes of Impala, not there. He had the lead, he had advantage, no reason to press. I'm gonna stay right here and wait. Great decision making from Impala there as we go into game two. Three, two, one, brawl. Alrighty. Man. Love Brawlhaven. I love the Brawlhaven pick for both of these players. Classic. Yeah. It's just I love when when sets are completely played on this map. There's no shenanigans around the, the platforms, the high movement. It's just all neutral all the time. And so far, it's all of it seems to be winning it. But right now, it's Anonymous Alex on this Ooh. hammer. Side signature. Apollo's only got... Oh, man. Oh, my goodness gracious. Was that like a true read that what he had happening? there? He charged it. He charged that SIG. <laughs> Wave him to recover onto the stage to catch him. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. Alex, in the future, in Apollo's head right now. He, he what a had quick the edge guard. On the first stop. It, he had the edge guard with a ground pound, opts for the down signature instead. It doesn't matter. He doesn't get hit again. He just stomps Sarah's him on a wake up. That was. I don't know. Anonymous Alex has completely shifted the way he's playing this game. And now Impala looks lost in this game. The hammer is putting him work on him, and Impala has to try to pick up the pieces and recover. Yeah, he had to switch from that modern Brawlhalla 101 fundies, man. He's. He's going to that modern Brawlhalla route. Look at the movement, the shiftiness. Wow. He's getting swifty now. Anonymous Alex not playing games. Three stocks to one. Anonymous Alex is going to answer right back in this game so far. And Paula can't even find the town signature. Wow, what a ground pop. Anonymous Ooh. Alex, that was wild. Satellite into recovery. Getting the knockout there for Impala. Finally getting his first stock. But whole stock behind is scary situation and you're against Taros on Brawlhaven. This stock is not going to last very long for Impala if he plays this aggressively. He's got to play perfect and so far doing a good job but every stray hit from this Taros hammer it, it hits so much harder with that high attack. It's yeah, starting so to become every, a problem for Impala. Everything counts. For sure. Everything Anonymous Alex throws out from here on out really counts. And Impala knows that as he's moving moving around, trying to get all these whiff punishes and beating out with attacks, jumping into his range and not trying to get comboed. Oh, but big sick from Anonymous Alex taking game two confidently. With a swift answer back into that game. That was, wow, that was impressive. Those side signatures. Anonymous Alex very rarely throws out signatures of any kind, and he took two stocks with a signature in that game. So 
playing he knew great. exactly where they was going absolutely back to the brawl haven Three, getting two, them brawling one, brawl. impala anonymous alex once again going into game three yeah and now he's got the axe there was almost no axe in that that second game so maybe that was the issue and it was paula can't deal with the hammer so anonymous alex on this axe so far is looking out great but finding a couple hits they're just trading back and forth one player wins neutral the next player wins neutral anonymous alex with the side light nair gets the hammer and now impala might be shaking a little bit I don't know. It wasn't working out last game against this hammer. Finds the Sair. That's a meaty one. And now Anonymous Alex, if he could find another one, that's just an edgeguard stomp Sair. Not going to find the KO, but scary position. Anonymous Alex trying to go for style points there on the weight. Did not necessarily catch Impala where he wanted to land on the stage recovery. Great movement there from Anonymous Alex denying Impala the weapon into the knockout. And a perfect reaction. Impala dashes in and spot dodges so we can get some extra frames in there. And Anonymous Alex says, okay, you're just going to hand me your dodge? All right, get dared. You know, you're done. Now, recovery. recovery. Not going to do it. Not enough. Man, Taros has sneaky high defense. And it's working out in this game so far. All of a sudden, Anonymous Alex, breath of fresh life. One or two hits will be a lot of extra credit. His weapon throws are starting to stack up for Impala. Oh, my God. Perfect read. This Hammer is so good from Anonymous Alex. Is Hammer back? I think Hammer might be back. Yeah, we're seeing a different type of gameplay right now from Anonymous Alex, but that D-Light recovery will do it for Impala. But, you know, Anonymous Alex was on a lot of borrowed time there. Did his damage, got his damage dues in. You know, on his second stock now. About to make quick of Impala's. As Impala is answering back, I'm not trying to let that happen. Yeah, but pretty far behind in this game right now. Maybe a couple hits will put him back into even. Already, just one or two more. Impala will be in the lead. This axe, this is the issue for Anonymous Alex. It's the hammer that's been doing a lot of the work. He clearly does not want the axe. Gets the stomp, but not able to find a Sarah out of it. It would have had to have been a sidelight. He didn't want it. Sometimes Anonymous Alex, I noticed, if he's not able to find the KO when he's in KO percent, wow, what a there. I'm just recovering perfectly. But if he's not able to find the KO off of a side light or a stomp, he just waits. He wants you to use your options so that he can find the punish and find the KO. He's not interested in that little bit of extra damage. He knows he can find the stock if he plays it Correct. And that is the power of Taros. Ooh, trying to go for the smooth read there with the Spear D-Light. Did not find it, though. Are we? Are, are we going to see Anonymous Alex and Balloon Boy in top four and Impala out? This is... If things go the way they're going right now, Anonymous Alex looks amazing at the moment. And Impala just can't seem to deal with this hammer. He still can't even find the stock. Finally, a Sarah Ooh, does it. Nice Impala Sarah. has so much damage on him, though. Anonymous Alex, we know, can find that stock rapidly. We can never count Impala out. Remember, this is a champion we're talking about here. What? Oh, God. That was so fast. Anonymous Alex just couldn't react to it. But now, Paula disarmed. Anonymous Alex onto the hammer. This is where it counts. This is the moment for him to find this stock. You can tell, hunting for it with these stomps. Another one, Stomp Sarah's gonna do it. Anonymous Alex take a 2-1 lead over the world champion. Oof. Upsetting upsetting games we have here today what an elimination right back to the brawl haven and, and in winner's finals right now is java which i don't think a lot of people expected to see maybe you expected to see him in top four but not that high Three, so this has been two, one, quite a tournament four. so far and anonymous alex looking to keep it that way it looks like we're gonna have a reset here maybe some kind of internet issue but has been, with that hammer, has just been dominating Impala at the moment. Just taking leads and not losing them. At all. And we see Impala has a switch to the <laughs> different spear weapon there. I love me the John Cena ladder. One of my favorite spears. Oh, but, yeah, um, nice, nice ladder. I love seeing that. Hopefully... 
Interesting. Okay, same map. I guess the issue was fixed. We are rolling back into it. Anonymous Alex versus Impala. Impala on his tournament game here. He has to answer Three, back or two, Anonymous one, Alex will roll. advance. So let's see what will happen here. Yeah, this might be uh, Anonymous Alex showing people that Hammer is back on the menu. It is not the weapon that it was a year ago where it felt like it was unplayable in bracket. All of a sudden, Hammer can get it done. These side lights in particular are just working wonders for Anonymous Alex. I'm so glad to see him back on the Taros, what he was cooking with a while ago when he made that wild run in the major a year and a half ago at least. Back to form, I think, for Anonymous Alex. Onto this axe now. It's the axe that's putting in work. Three nares. Going at it right now. But Impala answering back, not trying to take as much damage. But off stage with less options. Impala answering back with the Sair. With the Dare. Alex. Stock. Gone. Impala in the lead. Beautiful find there from Impala with the reads. And all of a sudden, this lead. This is his first lead in a while. It's starting to be pretty good, but no. Sair comes out. And there it is. Anonymous Alex brings it right back onto the hammer. We've been seeing so much of. Really hasn't lost a lead on the hammer, so. Paula needs to make some kind of change. Signature. Down signatures. Not connect. Now Paula putting it work on this bow, actually. Anonymous Alex can't seem to land. It, although I think he might have been able to jump a side like D light, so an interesting choice from Paul to try to side like that. Top position to be in for sure. Oh, doesn't really have great options to cover it. Now, Anonymous Alex with the weapon starve coming out. He's got hammer queued up and hammer in his hands. And it's putting it work. Picks up the next one. Oh, no dodge from Impala, but Anonymous Alex just barely misses on the stomp. Finds one again. Stomps there. Anonymous Alex doesn't really want to go for these edge guards. I like agree. I was just about to say, um, Anonymous Alex has not been going for any ground pounds against Impala here at all. Um, but Anonymous Alex getting the knockout here, putting Impala on his tournament stock. Will we see another upset here from Anonymous Alex versus the world champion Impala himself? Yeah, that would be an impressive feat. I'm not sure if Anonymous Alex has beaten Impala recently, at least in a very long time. Now, onto the axe. Has a lead, wants to build it up, get some extra credit going. Paula catches the dodge, dealer recovery is going to do it. Not a lot of damage taken on this final stock. So this is definitely doable for Impala, but Anonymous Alex has a lot of momentum on his side. He's been playing amazing in games two and three. He's been playing great so far. Just one final stock to lock in top four for Anonymous Alex. Anonymous Alex here really playing it slow and Taros once again does not need that much interactions in neutral to get the knockout and he knows that hence why he is taking his time and Kaya has to put in a lot of work as we see Impala has not been going for a lot of things this set and he might need to start going for nothing because this game is looking real close to Anonymous Alex taking it to the top four. Yeah Stomp Sarah on the corner could do it, a dare maybe could do it, a nair at the top of the screen could do it. As Taros, we know the KO potential that it has on this high attack, but Impala clearly does not want to get hit of any kind. Barely misses the stomp. Anonymous Alex, and there he's going to do it! And Anonymous Alex knocks out the world champion and makes his way to top four. Anonymous Alex playing out of his mind today. Wow. Yeah. And now what all the what Hammer players set. on Twitter need to stop talking. Your weapon is good now. This is a great showing from Anonymous Alex. It takes a lot to beat the PR number two in North America. And now, I think our top four is Luna and Java in winner's finals. And the elimination semis, it's Anonymous Alex and Balloon Boy. Balloon Boy, yes. Yes. We have a spectacular top four. A very intricate and interesting top four we have here for you guys. And I believe we will be having a set of new casters for these top four for you guys as we will 
Um, be right back shortly after this break. Um, it was a pleasure to cast these amazing, amazing sets with you guys and my guy Serge. For sure, I am excited to watch the rest of this tournament because Balloon Boy Media, man, has been going insane. So is Anonymous Alex, and we see a classic, classic Luna in the top four, not playing no games. And, of course, big job as well in the top four. We're going to see an amazing set from these two coming up soon, man. So I hope you guys are locked in and staying tuned. Moose Wars, always a pleasure. So uh, I don't think we have any more thoughts. I think that's going to wrap it up for us. The, uh, Steeza at Steeza Sama on Twitter and A Surge at A Surge on Twitter. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the next couple sets. It was a pleasure to cast with you. Really some great sets. And uh, we'll see you guys in just a couple minutes.
Welcome back on in to Moose Wars Magma Mayhem for the 1v1 segment. We are here with the top four players remaining in the tournament. My name is Hackle. I am here with Phil. How are you doing today, man? Yo, I'm Phil. Uh, I'm excited. Two of my favorite players are in here in the in the winner's side, Luna and Java. So I'm excited to watch this one. And yeah, I mean, they got, they got a long history together. They've played like, I'm looking at it right now, 45 games one for java and 46 one for luna pretty crazy these guys have been playing in tournament together for like a long time and i'm excited to watch this one yeah absolutely these players have a, a very long history i mean java and luna both sort of came into the scene around a very similar time frame mm -hmm. in the in the past couple of years and in in that time i mean obviously luna crept into into that top place a, a lot a, a lot more you know dominantly than java but java definitely has not been behind whatsoever and uh yeah. i mean we we see it's a slight difference in those stats and the, and the medals and so on, but that doesn't mean that these two players are, are going to be, you know, like, it's not going to be a dominant match whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we know these two players are very, very neck and neck in terms of skill level. And I think it's just been, Luna has been creeping out these wins a little bit more frequently, but it, this set genuinely could go either way. Yeah, I think a lot of the times Java's, you know, kind of kind of in the shadow of Luna, but he's a really underrated player he's he's one of the best players i've ever watched and he's he's really fun to watch too his play style is very unique mm. he incorporates like a lot of weapon throws and unarmed combos It's very entertaining to watch java play and same thing Absolutely, with luna too yeah. luna is really fun to watch he's super aggressive he goes for crazy reads and usually gets them and he has some insane comebacks all the time so it's very fun to watch both of these both of these yeah, players I mean, it, it's it's very like explosive i think is the way you describe both of their play styles it's very like they're not afraid to play that more, more that more slowed down neutral if if the game mm -hmm. calls for it but when they're given that chance both of these players are like they they will take you all the way off the, like I, I mean especially java i've said it before in in sets that i mean his his home sometimes is just off stage like you yeah. let him take you off stage and and it's 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 his home turf and that's really really dangerous Locking in both, I mean, the legends that we would have expected with both these characters. I was kind of hoping to see the Knight coming out of Java because he did lock it in earlier in this tournament, yeah. which is an insane pick. But uh, yeah, the Hattori coming in, and of course, Luna on the Lucy, and that has been the pick that he's been rocking for a very long while over the past few months with the current meta, and it's it's been working. It's really been working. So I think, I mean, both players, they're going to be comfortable with what they're rocking here, but going to Demon Island for this first game, I'm not sure who that favors, really. Yeah, I think it'll be pretty good for both the characters. It's got a high ceiling, so kind of hard to KO for uh, for Luna here with D-Light Recovery on Blasters. But mm. still, I think it'll be very even match. Three, but getting two, into it, one, Java on the Hattori, Luna on the Lucian. Luna gets the first weapon, Katars. Gonna starve Java here a little bit. Gets a nice combo Ooh. in. Java gets unarmed damage off of that. Gets Spear, Spear versus Katars. Kind of dancing around. Luna opens up with a weapon throw, gets a end light off of it, and the recovery. Java D light stare in the recovery. Wow. Super yeah, even here. We've seen both of the like already, both players have not been afraid to like wake up out of these options that they've been throwing out to try and find their own damage. And that, that's mm -hmm. sort of shown by the fact that both players are now both in that red state of damage. Java just whiffing that D light, almost finding the knockout with the recovery, not quite enough. That is that high ceiling coming into play here. The D sig will come through. The gravity cancel time to take a shirt, and that will secure the knockout. Java taking the first stock. Less than a minute into this game, and that is that pace difference that we see with these two players. Some some top level players will take a very long time to find, especially that first stock. Mm -hmm. and so that, that that pace is definitely gonna be a big, big trend for this set. Yeah, and that GC D sig that Java does, that's like a thing that he started to do recently on Hattori. He spot dodges an attack and then immediately gets that GC D sig, which catches like almost everywhere that they could drift off of any attack. So that's a super uh, good tech for Hattori players to use. And he's uh, kind of pioneered that. For sure. And I mean, he's yeah, he's holding this lead a little bit. Like yeah. he has, he has you know down into this this deep orange spear in hand now. That is the more damage build oriented weapon on Hattori. But Ooh. I mean, if you throw out a D sig like that, you could be finding a bit earlier knockout stage. Also, recovery not quite going to be enough. Java still holding a C D that recovery, and there is that high C again combined with the high defense of Lucian. Java struggling a little bit to find that knockout there. Wow. And again, not afraid to go in with the unarmed. Finds the Pogo and two stocks up for Java now and making use of that new dash tech to just zoom yeah, the movement is crazy. Right <laughs> He's just dashing around so fast and two stock lead right now for Java. He's super damaged, but luna has been unable to find any kill options here. Gets an end line. That's just more damage. No kill. 
Java has a big lead that he's working with. Lands an end light. Lands a ground pound too. Goes deep. Ooh. He gets punished by Luna. First KO for Luna. Java has a whole stock lead. We'll see what Luna can do here. I've seen Luna come back from, from scenarios like this, honestly, so many times now that uh, mm. I, I could see it happening. I could see it. I could see him doing yeah, I mean, it. We, we've, we've seen Luna clutch these, and I, for that reason, Java cannot afford to get too comfortable here mm -hmm. whatsoever. I mean, he's ripping out those down signatures right there, and that. That sink has a lot of force on it, so Java doesn't be careful around that. Is actually trading this damage out pretty consistently. I mean, if you're in Java's spot, you can afford to be taking a few hits and trading up the damage. Although this, but that's not a trade. That's just damage in Luna's favor. If you're Java, yeah. you can't really Ooh! afford that as the GC end light into recovery. And Luna, I mean, like we said, finds the clutch, finds the end light into the recovery. And that is huge in terms of equalizing up those stock numbers. I mean, the damage is still in Java's favor, but... Oh my. Goodness, the Haymaker. It's a really big lead in Java's favor that's falling apart right now. Yeah, Luna just kind of has this like last dog buff. He just starts clutching up mm. off stage. Oh no! Oh, oh he no gets the way! <laughs> wow! Dude, that was a reverse. I, I feel like that was crazy. <laughs> I feel like he took like three hits at most on that final stock. After he got Java onto his final, he took like three hits tops. Yeah, and then just boom, gone. Stock absolutely out of there. Like double down air finds a clash. That is, I mean, that that's efficient. That is about as efficient as you can get. And I mean, if, if you're Java, you need to make sure that doesn't shake you at all. Because, I mean, if it's me in a Tony bracket and that happens to me, my mental is is like that that hurts. That hurts quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so if, if I'm in Java's spot, I need to be like stealing myself to say, okay, I held the lead for the majority of that game. I'm just going to do the exact same thing, but not afford to get stoppy on the final stock. Yeah. I mean, Java is known for his offstage, but Luna is no... No, uh, he, he's really good at offstage as well. I mean, mm. Java did 100 more damage than Helm almost, but still lost the game because of offstage there. Luna got that gimp at the last stock. But yeah, Luna's got that clutch factor. He, you know, he could be down Definitely. full two stocks and still bring it back. It's just crazy watching this guy and the amount of times that he, uh, he clutches up. Yeah, it's, it's like, like you were saying, I mean, Java, the offstage is really comfortable for him, but Luna is no pushover when it comes to offstage whatsoever. And, and for that reason, if you're Java, you have to give that respect, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, you ha you can be confident going into an area where you're really, like, comfortable, but you can never be too comfortable. A against a player like Luna, you have to give the respect to say, okay, I might be in my comfort zone, but anything can happen, especially in that sort of, like, end-of-game situation, like you said, where Luna has... I mean, it, it's it's real. It's a last stock buff. It's it's real, and it absolutely happens. And we've seen it countless and countless times. So, I think Luna is going to be restarting his game for lag or something. Yeah, for that reason. But uh, and we'll yeah, see. I mean, we'll see if there's any delays because Steam the Steam servers have been like kind of bugging as of now. They said that mm. you know a lot of times you can't connect to the Steam cloud. So, Luna's back online though. Let's see, uh, yeah, 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 and he joined up. There, there is, we go. There he is back in the lobby and of course the exact same legend picks coming in and mm -hmm. java actually banning out demon island despite the fact that we said java is very comfortable on that off stage mm -hmm. actually opting to get rid of a stage that has you know a lot of advantage if you're if you're holding that edge guard the really short wall on demon gives you the opportunity to get a lot of like advantage and pressure out of the fact that you have less space to play on if you're coming back to the stage and so going to, a, I mean, APOC is, is not like a, a rare map to see in 1v1s or yeah. This is a very standard map, um, but it, it does have a slightly longer wall, um, mm -hmm. and it's a bit easier to go underneath. And I, I feel like that is going to, I think, slightly shake up how the offstage play does come through in this game. Okay, already Java starting off oh, on the Oh, speaking of! Woo! That was close. That was close to a Gimp offstage. He was, he's not afraid of going on unarmed. That's something that sets uh, both of these players apart from the rest. They they really like to aggress on unarmed because, I mean, a lot of players expect uh, when someone's unarmed, they just go for the weapon. But both Java and Luna. Oh! <laughs> nice. He like ground pound on the edge with unarmed there. That was huge. That is a statement. That is an absolute statement to say, <laughs> I am not scared of your offstage. I will go out and I will just rip out that unarmed combo regardless of what state i'm in i will just do it and i mean speaking of respect that's luna's got to give that respect he's yeah. got to give respect to the fact that Ooh. java is not afraid of that off stage and we see more off stage work coming in with this spear and java already has a full stock lead just from mm. just from these spear reads 
Goes for the same read, the dodge down and in, but I'm gonna switches it up. Oh, no Zing, way. No, not enough to KO because of Lucian's high defense, but it's gonna put a lot of damage onto Luna and a lot of pressure. Luna just can't get back on stage. Finally gets back on stage with the D-like ground pound. Trying to get a weapon, gets a weapon, lands a stare. But uh, Java, oh, Luna goes underneath. Makes it Full back. Respect. Full respect by Luna coming out of that. Just to say, okay, mm -hmm. you're gonna edge guard here, you're gonna throw up your weapon, I'm just gonna let you, I'm just gonna go around. Woo! I don't need it, <laughs> but the weapon throw down into the GCD stick. And now Java has to play this carefully because this is the exact same spot <laughs> he was in, in in the previous game. And we saw what happened. So now he's gotta play it careful. Has got a little bit of down into Luna with that spear, but he either needs to get a very big damage advantage or needs to play a much more safer game. And right now, I think he's opting for the former. So he the unarmed side heavy as well. But still a big lead here for Java in the second game. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the situation we saw before, but Luna was a little bit healthier whenever he took Java's first stock. And uh, he's just throwing out the d sig there. Java's going to get a lot of damage. It's looking like Java will probably close this one out. No way. No way three the stock. Oh. No way! Wow. Three stock for Java there. That is huge. Less than 200 damage put out by Luna in that entire game. And I mean, that first stock was back and forth. I mean, we see it there right before that, that D-Light into ground pound. I mean, it was very back and forth, but Java, just the hyper aggression, I think really caught Luna off guard because he was aggressive first game, but mm -hmm. nowhere near as much as those that, that second and third stock that we saw. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, Java just really put Luna in his place and said, you, you took the first game, cool. Don't get comfortable because I will shut that down. And it, it came in absolutely. Yeah, he really put the pressure on Luna off stage, just staying uh, right up next to him. Any any mistakes that Luna makes off stage, Java capitalizes, and he hit that D like ground pound, GC D like ground pound off stage on unarmed twice that match, and you know mm. that's that's a statement right there. Absolutely, almost yeah. almost back to back <laughs> three stocks for Java there, but the first game, he uh, well, slipped away from him. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean that is sort of like a demonstration of what we've been talking about with Java knowing that offstage and knowing when to get rid of the weapon and just make use of that unarmed kit. And I mean, yeah, we, we saw it firsthand with uh, two D-like ground pound knockouts, which is just so, so efficient because no weapon, no problem. Mm -hmm. You find the knockout and, and, and secure that lead. And going back, I think, to Demon Island for this third game. Yep. Now neck and neck, one and one, and of course no legends. So I would honestly be very surprised if we see any legends of either player here. I think yeah. worst case scenario, we might see Java swap to something else like a Naya or a Bolivar, but I honestly, Luna, I think the only character I've seen him play outside of, of the Lucian has been Caspian in the past like few months. He's been really solid on this pick mm -hmm. and he's been very confident in said pick. So I think this may just end up being the exact same legends every single game. And now Luna's starting a lot more, a uh, lot more uh, in the lead here. These previous games, Java's been kind of explosive off the start, but a lot more even here. Luna actually uh, in the lead for once in this uh, in this set. Java hit the haymaker though, but Luna's got the guitars. Dodges that side light. Oh, goes for the decent, oh! but gets punished. <laughs> Six cents dodge and then probably. Yeah. Prepared for that signature. Sword in hand. That is the more optimal KO option, but we'll actually swap to the spear. Although we have seen that Java isn't really having much trouble knocking out, regardless Ooh. of what weapon he has in hand. And the D Light into recovery will secure that first stock. Java once again taking the early lead in this game. Luna did have the damage even this first stock, but Java managed to close it out a bit earlier than Luna. And now Sword in hand. It's kind of odd how he's pl he's always playing sword more often for damage build than spear. I don't know if that's an intentional choice. Oh, but the weapon though to catch Ooh. the recovery perfectly, and that will equalize up the stocks very very quickly here. Yeah, this game a lot more even than the previous ones, and uh, not as much off stage that we've seen. Here we go. Uh oh, there's an opportunity. Uh -oh. Do you like ground pound? Uh oh, oh but the wake Ooh. up recovery. Wow, Java just plays off stage that so well. He gets back like from almost everything. And it's just crazy the things that he goes for. Oh, D6 is going to connect. Recovery there. That is absolutely huge. It's like a knowledge of knowing that Luna's going to try and pressure that even further. And he knows that he can just go for that and, and, and give himself that space. But mm -hmm. unlike the previous games, this has been very, very neck and neck. Both players entering the orange on their second stop right here. Luna very slightly in the lead. Ooh. Recovery will not connect. So that Java going all the way up to the nair won't be able to find it. But giving himself a little bit of space right there. And the blasters by Luna. 
Do a cool. decent bit of work here. The Ooh. spear, the dealer ground pound once again! And Java still holding onto this lead just slightly here. Yeah, this game is very close, but Java inching, a, inching away here. And then to Sarah getting back on stage. Racking, racking up some damage here. But Luna gets that GC side sig on Katars. Gonna even it up, barely damaged. And uh, he's gonna stick with Katars. That's kind of the damage build up weapon on Lucian. We'll see if he weapon stars. Yep, weapon stars Java here. Gets a Katars combo in. But Java really utilizes those uh, exhausted recoveries a lot. Not a lot of players expect that, and that really gives him an edge with those. Yeah, throws away the sword right there. We're gonna be <laughs> armed. He falls onto the unarmed for a second. He falls the spear. Small damage lead in Java's favor. Right oh. Could go the other oh. way quickly. The clash, and Java not be able to make it back. Wow. It's a very unfortunate offstage interaction there for Java. And in fact, for the damage, incredibly, close incredibly game. close. Yeah. yeah. Four more damage dealt by Java Van Luna in that game. That was really just neck and neck the entire time, and Luna just finding. The hard read with that that edge guard right there and finding the clash and java just not really prepared for it went for the recovery didn't manage to find his way back up but still right down to the wire both players absolutely on each other's heels for that entire game yeah that was like a triple there from luna and then i think that's a, pretty much the same way that he finished the first game with the dare into weapon throw knowing that java is going to instantly recovery because when you're off stage you want to get rid of recovery first since it's the easiest thing to punish when you're coming back. Mm. So Luna knows that Java's going to do that and he stuffs it out with the weapon throw. This time Java's going to ban yeah. Demon Island. We'll see if we go to Apocalypse here. Oh, rebanning. There we go. Yeah, I'm expecting Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't really see much Western Air Temple and Enigma yeah. in, in ones especially. I mean, very occasionally on some of the, the less orthodox picks, you might see those maps. But yeah, going back to Apoc for this fourth game and i'm praying for a game five i mean yeah. we love a game five here we, we love to see the right down to the wire and i mean with how it's been going so far java absolutely could take Three, it to game five two, all, all the way it's going to be roll. down to how he adapts in this next game and how he deals with you know, approaching this you know grabbing the first weapon katars in hand will actually starve out and grab those glasses as well java not afraid to get in and dirty with the unarmed though yeah that's something that you see from him a lot goes for that read he knows Luna likes to dodge down and in. There, there you see it right there. And uh, that's one of the things he's actually talked to me about. Catching Luna with the down and in dodge. But yeah, Luna on unarmed now. Damage is super even. It's in there. Another nair. Oh, getting all of these oh, nairs nah. goes for another one. <laughs> Light and yeah, light. I mean, that's just the strength. That's just the strength of having like a very quick surrounding option as you can just throw it out and it's very, very difficult to punish Java. Mm. Spear in hand, weapon Ooh. throw down. Ooh. Ooh. Running out of options, doesn't manage to find the punish though. Wow. Well, the Nair is dangerous and Java's just going to pop right out of there. Luna taking the lead here. And if you're Java, that's not what you want. You need to win this game to secure a game five. You don't want to be going down in a 3 1 fashion. So Java needing to find this knockout as soon as possible. Side air comes through. Not going to be quite enough just yet. Weapon talk to protect the recovery. Wow, very risky to go off stage at like white health, but Java's not afraid. He knows what to do against Luna here. Goes for the oh, dude. GZ daylight. She relaxed. Luna hasn't found too much value, although he will find the daylight dead, and there will not come through. But every single hit that Java takes is a minor win for Luna as Java still needs to find this knockout and he flies up those stocks. And Luna now about to get Java into the orange here. Luna very damaged on this first stock. One Sair from either weapon will almost likely be enough and there, there it is, is the yeah. fooling Sair with the spear. But Java has to play it a little bit safe, has taken a little bit of damage here on this second stock. Needs to make sure that he doesn't allow Luna to just hold this lead. Yeah, goes for the end save but gets punished. Really needs to, to play safe here. Luna's getting a lot of damage and uh, no answer yet. DC comes out, punished by Java. And uh, Java slowly inching his way back, but Luna's still getting hits in. <laughs> Goes for Ooh, a ground that's pound. Actually, on stage. a really nice punish. Yeah, the ground pound on stage, punished by the. Oh! Dash on the possible there and. Damage still very slightly in Luna's favor, but the job is on a decent job to keep up at least, which is what you would like to see. But 
needs to find something relatively major here. Finds wow. a down air. The neutral signal not going to get punished, but the end light will by the GCD sig and Luna within range to knock out Java on this second stock oh. here. There goes for the second one. Won't be able to find it. There's Luna's KO. And uh, he just needs to extend his lead. Look at that dash movement. <laughs> so hard to do. I can't, I can't do that. But uh, Luna, he's he's got it down. Oh, Ooh, he's that's the dodge in. That was crazy. And just like that, the game is evened up again. Perfectly even. Java goes for the sword instead of the spear to build up damage. And uh, Luna's going to get that D-Light ground pound on unarmed. Armed with blasters here. And I think may maybe the sword's a, a counterpick to the blasters that he knows Luna is going to have. Hmm. I, I think so, because I think that if you're playing Spear into those blasters, especially the way Java's been playing, he's been struggling with getting into the dead mm -hmm. zone that Blasters has and, and not making full use of it. Now we're onto the Spear, finds the sidelight, no read is going to come in, but has found a lot of answer damage here. Okay. Sidelight doesn't find the read once again, but still holding this lead. Downstick is going to get punished Ooh. by the ground pound. That could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Java just to make it back up. So holding the damage lead, but no weapon in hand. D-Light into the gravity cancel. Neutral heavy not going to be enough. Luna deep in the red here. Java only in the orange. Luna has to play safe here. Gets a punish for that end sig. And there beats out the D-Light. Oh, goes for a GC side light. Damage is evening up here. Both on the red. Java with the sword. Luna with the blasters. D-Light. Whiffs. Java gets the end light. Edgar opportunity. There. Oh no! Oh! GC side. So down to the Y. That's he has nothing. Would have been... Wait, he touched. He touched. Did manage to touch Java now with the spear in hand. One oh. polo will be enough with the exhaustive recovery. This is coming down to the wire here. Luna end gets light. the end light. Doesn't find the recovery. <laughs> GC end light. Oh, Found and he gets a recovery, punished. and that will oh, do it. Java taking us to a game five, 650 damage. Jeez. I mean, both players doing almost 600 damage that game. And 600 damage is a very large amount. I mean, that's technically an inefficient amount of damage, but if you take the win, I mean, it's a win regardless. Yeah, that that was a crazy match. It came down to the, just the very final hits there. Luna whiffed a, a GC end light right in Java's face, and he gets that easy punish. But yeah. Java's kill kill rate has uh or kill efficiency has been rather low. Six hundred and fifty-two damage is not what you want to see. Mm. I mean that that's over two hundred damage for Sulk. And yeah. if you're doing over two hundred, you're not finding the knockouts when you need to, because two hundred should realistically be like the peak range. Because a lot of knockout kill confirms like Swords D Light Recovery will find that KO earlier than 200 damage so mm -hmm. it means you're you're relying on single hit confirms to find those knockouts like a falling side air or a signature and i mean you just like it's not the worst thing in the world to be inefficient as long as you're taking the win mm -hmm. but it's it's difficult to be consistently inefficient yeah and i mean that was the first match that we saw java drop over 600 damage so you really see how how long luna has been living there not really giving java many opportunities to get that ko Java taking a quick breather after that one. That one was that one was intense. That one came down to the very last wire. And uh, yeah, that was uh, crazy. We're going into game five here. I'm excited, man. I I, I mean I expect nothing less from from Java versus Luna. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if I if I am seeing a Java Luna set, I'm praying for a game five. And yet here we go, Java locking in the Hattori once again, Luna. Sticking with the Lucian, expecting either Apoc or Demon Island for this last stage. I think that is really good because I'm pretty sure both Demon Island games have gone in Luna's favor, yep. if I recall correctly, right? And both Apoc games have been for Java. So going to Demon Island, that's favoring Luna. There has to be something Java can do here to get rid of that trend. Yeah, we'll see I if think... Java can do something about it. Mm. It's getting a. Uh, it's gonna be kind of crazy. And just a reminder: these two are are two v two teammates right now. They're gonna team together for Valencia. And I believe they won yesterday in the two v two segment of uh, Moose Wars. So. Yep, they did. Absolutely. That's pretty crazy. Winning the last tournament, and both now in winners finals. In game five, so evenly matched. And uh, we're getting into it. Almost. Oh, that's a really bad start. Oh! Your Java. What a game That's from Luna. That's such a huge lead for Luna. Less than 30 seconds into this game and only in the yellow on this first stop. Java has to play 
such a flawless oh. game, and Luna just <laughs> making the Katars work oh. so well. The dare is huge, though. Luna has Ow. no options. Okay, if your job with that is exactly what you're looking for, that I mean, to make up a deficit like that, you need a gimp of that caliber, and Java finds exactly that. I mean, he has taken a little bit of damage on this second stock, but not so much that it's sort of like a major situation. The ground, the ground, the sort of gravity cancel the down ticket show is going to be really, really huge. Yeah, that damage very early on. That was such an explosive start there. Two knockouts back to back. Luna kind of overextending there, getting a little too crazy after hitting that huge guitar read. And uh, yeah, we're back to completely even. Chill. Here. Things are getting, yeah, things are getting crazy. Actually taking, taking a small lead for a second there, but I mean, it's so back and forth that one player will find some amount of damage and the other will find their own. D-Light into the side air, will disarm, but won't be enough for a knockout. Goes for the dare, won't be able to find it. Java just sort of tempting this edge guard here. Finds the D-Light set and will actually take the lead here over Luna in this game five. This could be huge, but he needs to find unanswered damage here to get this momentum and get this value out of having the stock lead. Because there's no point getting a stock lead if you can't find the subsequent hits to make it worth. Yeah. And Luna doing good right now. Now spacing Java. Oh, oh no! no way! No. What a terrible way to go out. Just barely missing the stage there with that dare. And back to an even game here. Luna only been hit a couple of times and already evening it up with guitars. Has Java on the edge, putting pressure on him. Wants the guitars, but unable to get it. Blasters in hand. Java's gonna pick up a weapon now. Dead even. Sword in the blasters has been kind of favorite for, for Java here, getting into the dead zones with blasters. There's a the D lights there. Luna just can't seem to do anything about this sword Ooh. right now. Ooh. This is huge so far for Java on this final stock in game five. You need to be fighting this lead and it's big so far, dribbling with this sword. Neutralite as well. Luna has to be close to getting disarmed here and that could be exactly what Java needs. Can't afford to get too comfortable here though. There is the disarm mm -hmm. with the neutral light. One signature will do it over onto the spear. Up and go down, gonna lose the spear here. Gets the sword in hand, D-Light into the recovery. Wow. And that's gonna do it, Java. Taking the set over Luna in a game five. Last stock situation, what a set. What a game, that one was crazy. Just back and forth, games after games, and that, that was insane. That was actually insane. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you look at this replay, you can see the fact that Java was like a full stock behind at the start of this game. Less than 30 seconds in, he lost that first stock, and that final stock, he just exploded with the sword, mm -hmm. found those dribbles and found that final knockout. And yeah, almost 100 damage dealt by Java over Luna, and that is really, really huge. I mean, getting into Grands on winner's side, that's a guaranteed second place in worst case scenario. Yeah. And a full stock, a full set to fall back on if you lose that first Grand set. So that is huge for Java. And the sword was working really well for him, for him as a counterpick to the blasters. He was really getting into everywhere that Luna couldn't hit him. Staying stacked, you know, Luna couldn't get that D light since it was changed a long time ago. And, you know, Luna couldn't really get hits at the end there. Luna, Java was just, just pressuring him and getting tons of hits and that was that was crazy super well played by java absolutely yeah and that means we're going to be moving over on into the lower side of the bracket for the losers semi-final which is mm -hmm. going to be anonymous alex versus balloon boy of all people yeah this is a crazy match we don't really see these two uh up here that that often and i mean balloon boy pr41 but that's that's kind of a criminal placement for him. He's so Don't be good. fooled by it. Do not be fooled by it whatsoever because Balloon Boy is coming off a 3-0 victory mm -hmm. over Radish, who has 1v1 gold medals yeah. under his belt. Yeah, Balloon Boy is, is insane. I mean, he's been grinding ranked as of late just nonstop, and he's, he's so good, man. It's crazy, the things that he does. Anonymous Alex, yeah. though, he just 3-1 mm -hmm. Impala, so both of these players... <laughs> showing showing their best right now absolutely yeah i mean playing the terrorist into kaya is definitely a bold pick but it worked out for anonymous so they're coming off with two players who are coming off really major upsets here and going into this first game we're seeing the picks that we expected to see from both of them. the terrorist that alex is very much known for and the diana for balloon boy mainly that bow player does play zario in the two space but diana is honestly the thing that balloon boy is most known for going into this first game I'm honestly curious to see if, because Alex played, I think, every single game against Impala on Brawlhaven. So whether or not 
Pokemon Boy is going to allow Alex to take him to such a small stage with such a high strength character. No, there it is. Mm -hmm. Straight to APOC for this first game. Yeah, this is a uh, this is going to be crazy here. The winner of this is going to play Luna, PR number one in NA. So Three, two, one, that's a that's a pretty big match for for these two players. I mean, if you're either of these players, you're you're not only thinking of this match, you're thinking of the battle to come, having to face Luna, and then if you beat Luna, you're gonna face Java as well. Yeah. You just beat Luna, so I mean, this is only the start of a very very big climb for both of these players if they make it through this set. And so far, no answer coming out of Anonymous. Yeah. The loss is slaughter that Balloon Boy's been putting out wow. so far. Just so much unanswered damage. One more side, I could have done it right there. Won't be able to find it. Goes for the down air. That is gonna be dangerous, Balloon Boy. The little way around, Anonymous hit by the very last blast of that recovery. But oh Anonymous my god. Hasn't found a hit. Almost a flawless stock coming out of Balloon Boy. One more recovery will be enough. Finally, <laughs> there it is. the end light. At least not getting a completely zero to that stock, but Anonymous has a lot of work to do to catch up here. Mm -hmm. Slowly, you know, getting some, some more hits in now, but Balloon Boy has just been kind of dominating him here. Now Anonymous Alex answering back, but the Nair's going to come out. Not enough to KO on Apocalypse. Oh, goes for the D6. Right, Another Nair. Still not enough still? To, KO, to KO. Another one? That's going to do okay, it. Finally. Wow. Yeah, if you're, if you're Balloon Boy, you're wiping your brow. You're, you're trying to chill out after that one because Anonymous was starting to get a bit of damage in there. Does have Balloon Boy entering the red right mm -hmm. here. Oh, Ooh, the unarmed side heavy. Just... So confident with that. It goes for the weapon as well, but that is the strength of Exhausted Boss recovery that we see firsthand right there. It gives you so much vertical movement, but Anonymous is not afraid to get in with this axe and get a lot of damage done. Such a short amount of time that we saw in that last stop. Yeah. And he needs to find the knockout right here. And I mean, Balloon Boy has been landing a ton of hits, but Taros, you just get a couple hits and you can even it up just like that. Absolutely, Little string starting yeah. up from Balloon Boy there. Oh! Punishes that spot dodge with it there, and Anonymous Alex evens it up in the light yellow here. Gonna stick with the uh, axe. And this game is so much more even than I expected right off the bat. I mean, Balloon Boy came out just absolutely swinging, destroying on Anonymous Alex there, but it's back to even. Yeah, very slightly in Balloon Boy's favor, and realistically, Bo should be very Ooh. good in this matchup. Weapon throw down isn't going to catch, but... Oh, Anonymous finds it! Would he have been knocked out right there? I feel like he might have without that chase dodge. I think Balloon Boy getting slightly overzealous. Trying to go down for that edge guard, and... Anonymous now is going to find a bit more time on this stock. There, in the side, not going to be enough. Balloon Boy holding onto this bow right here. Edge guard. Yes, yeah, down even here. once again. Bow into Hammer. Very unfavored for Hammer, and that's going to be the KO for Balloon Boy. I think he's going to stick with Blasters. There it is. He's been racking up tons of damage with this weapon. And uh, doesn't go for that for the weapon guard there. Let's not honest, Alex get Axe, but he's just putting in damage. Not as Alex gets the Sarah, goes for a dash Sarah off the edge. Doesn't get it. Still has this pressure though. Small punish from Balloon Boy with yeah. that side like there. Still just getting damage. Every little safe. chip. Oh, uh, yeah, there goes the D-Light Sayer. That is so much force. But every little chip that Balloon Boy could have found there mm -hmm. is just a little bit of extra value, but not quite enough to make a noticeable difference here. A couple of hits for Taros, and that will equalize up that damage so, so quickly. Balloon Boy now over on to the bow. Caught by the neutral light weapon, though, as well. Yeah, and just like that, the damage is virtually even here. Notice Alex playing, trying to play outside the range of bow here. Get some punishes in. Gets an end light, gets a nair, but Balloon Boy answers back. Super even now in this last stock. Oh, that's oh, that's a in. big catch. Gonna catch the dodge in there. Can't quite get the, the recovery. recovery doesn't yet. quite go through. Side light misses the nair. Missing the side light nair. Yeah, Anonymous looking to try and find some big hits here. The side air gets interrupted the down air by the glasses nair. Down air into the side air won't go through. Another damage is equal once again. Anonymous. Eking Ooh. out this equalization here. Balloon Boy needs to stop the bleeding as soon as possible. One D that recovery will probably be enough, but the neutral light is almost going to do it for Anonymous. Oh! The side signature going all the way. Not going to knock out, though. What an Balloon option. Boy does have the disarm advantage, but gets disarmed himself. Oh my. 
Oh, no. Wow, that was a crazy game. I mean, Balloon Boy had just a huge lead off the start, had almost an honest Alex in, in red just right off the bat, but he brought that one back. That was crazy. That was, that was absolutely yeah, insane. I, I feel like it's down to the fact that Anonymous is not afraid to play that long game and force Balloon Boy to slip up after playing those, those long interactions. And I mean, we, we saw it there, like almost a five minute game coming out of both players, but Anonymous was just very prepared to, to get strapped in and, and play the longer game. And it, it, it really, Three, I think, two, caught the Balloon Boy wrong. off guard, especially in that, that final soft situation where Balloon Boy was getting kind of desperate for those knockouts. And Anonymous has had so much time and space to build up that damage. Yeah, and yeah, that was just very well played by Anonymous there. Super close though. Getting into game number two, still on APOC. And uh, hammer into bow. Not not a favorable matchup, but Anonymous Alex is still putting in work here. And I mean, he just played this versus Impala and came out on top. So, oh my goodness. Ooh, went for the down signature there as well. That would have been absolutely Ooh. Team Balloon Boy. They used that signature a lot. They're almost ripping up the side sig there. Oh, look at small damage lead here. But with Terrorists, any small damage lead can become a major one with just a couple of hits. Mm -hmm. GC D Light's gonna catch Sarah for Balloon Boy. Small lead. Oh, but the GC oh, side no. sig! Wow. That's so brutal to get hit by that. And they're almost taking the early lead in this game. Yeah, Balloon I mean, Boy. Balloon Boy was damaged, but still, that, that KO'd very early. And I mean, that's what you expect from Taros mm. there. That is just a huge thing to get hit by. Down sick Speaking of KOing early, wow. that down signature is, I mean, a hallmark of early knockout since. Mm -hmm. Does come through the Loon Boy. Move on to the blasters. And just finding these side lights to break up that neutral. Still holding a small damage lead here. Yeah, throwing out Nairs gets a couple, but Loon Boy answering back. Still has the lead. That's scary. Gotta be careful here. That's really scary. He gets back. Boom Boy opting to disarm himself for that whole situation and doesn't actually get punished for it, but still anonymous. Almost within range to knock out Balloon Boy here, and Balloon Boy still has some work to do. The down air not going to do it, but one more almost certainly will. Balloon Boy finds a three piece combo. Ends with the side air. Oh! Did anonymous touch? No, he didn't touch. Wow, he what an option. GC D Sig and. Anonymous didn't touch there. That's going to KO. And, I mean, Anonymous had the lead there, but it just gets stolen from him with that huge play from Balloon Boy. Sarah's going to even it up and perfectly. Brings even it here. right back. Yeah. And that That is the force of Terrorist. Just fight. I mean, both weapons can just equalize things up so well with a well placed side air. Mm -hmm. So now Balloon Boy has to be careful because, once again, Anonymous is not afraid to play this long game in this final stock. Balloon Boy cannot afford to get too desperate here. Yeah, and he's oh, in hand playing really good around. Finds a three, four hit. Oh! Doing it on, on. That lag! <laughs> Hello? <laughs> like, that might have been a little bit of lag. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he thought he had yeah. a jump or a dodge and tried to input it. Didn't matter. I mean, it's happened to me before where I thought I've had a dodge or a jump, mm -hmm. tried to input it. Not done it in time and just, just fooled him because didn't react quickly enough. But, I mean, we do see Balloon Boy take that second game. Yeah, and two, going into the third one. Two DC kills for him too. He utilizes yes, sir, the sync I mean, so well on Diana, and I mean, last game he had that GC side sync to get back on the three, map. That was like two, one, so unexpected four. and so good. That's what happens when you have so much like knowledge of a character. I'm both of these players coming from console and having immense knowledge of their character of choice from console, mm -hmm. swapping over to the PC and. Balloon Boy has always had incredibly good knowledge of Diana as a character, just not quite been able to find those incredible placements that other players have been able to find. But so far, the damage equal with Anonymous here <laughs> is forced off the side, and just to make it back up without being punished. Side is very precise by Balloon Boy, might just to find the neutral as well, not going to be anywhere near enough quite yet, but Balloon Boy. He can good use these platforms, does get disarmed by the D-Light Sider though. Yeah, nice D-Light Sider coming from Anonymous Alex, putting the pressure on here. Hits a side light, goes for the end like, oh, it gets the stomp Oh, the turnaround! Wow. I mean, that was that was crazy how fast he could do that stomp after whiffing the, uh, the end line. Boom Boy does not expect that from him. That was, uh, that was crazy. Gets a side yeah, light. I mean, that's... Nair goes for another one, but 
Gets punished by Blue Boy. Oh, goes for the oh, ground pound. that's risky. And Onanos, he doesn't want to, doesn't seem to want to put much pressure off stage. Just wants to play on stage and get some damage in, but not going to get a whole lot off of that. Blue Boy barely in yellow. Officer Bow here. And uh, Anonymous Alex going to get the weapon. The Balloon Boy really making use of the speed difference that Bow has over both of Anonymous's uh, weapons. I mean, we saw in that first game that Balloon Boy put a lot of work in with the blasters, but I think once Anonymous got used to Ooh. those weapon differences, Balloon Boy opted to find a bit of an adaptation. Doesn't manage to close Ooh. out the edge guard off that, and Anonymous whipping out these signatures now. Yeah. Balloon Boy, the lead he had, starting to dissolve a little bit. Oh, what a combo. Ooh. I mean, that would have been absolutely huge if it knocked out. Won't quite do so. Another Still unarmed recovery, living. but defensive terror is keeping Anonymous alive. The interesting thing is not going to be enough because it bounces off the stage, but just ripping that out. <laughs> Double <laughs> unarmed down heavies. I mean, that's very ballsy. You have to respect it, but Balloon Boy will punish accordingly. And now Blast is in hand into this axe. Yeah, and I mean, Balloon Boy, uh, he had a big lead there, but Anonymous Alex brought it back a little bit. Both got in red, and now Balloon Boy has a stock advantage. Trying to get a little damage in here. Has the bow, but gets nared by Anonymous Alex. Evens it up. I think he'll probably stick with Axe here. That's what he's been dealing the most damage with. And uh, Balloon Boy has blasters in hand. Lands the sideline there. Balloon Boy answers Balloon back with the like really there. well around this axe so far with the blasters, finding these punishes that are very, very well placed, but he needs to be careful about any trades he's finding because he has to be finding like almost two hits for every one that Anonymous finds in comparison to how much damage the two weapons do. So mm -hmm. there's a bit of pressure put onto Balloon Boy and the amount of efficiency that has to be put out here. Finds a side oh. like finds a side for the read. Won't knock out, but going out for the side air, won't be able to find it, gets back to the stage, finds the D light into the recovery, and that is going to do it. Balloon Boy taking game three and putting him one game away from facing Luna in the losers' finals. Yeah, I mean, Balloon Boy, he he doesn't throw out that side take often, but whenever he does it, it always seems to hit. He gets that, that read with the uh, with the dodges, and I mean, he he knows Diana's sigs so well. He uses them so well. Like, that that was insane. Very well played by Balloon Boy there. No character swaps and honest Alex still on the Taros. We're going to two, Apocalypse here. One, Game number four. Balloon Boy's up two to one. And uh, the winner of this will play Luna in Losers Finals. That is enormous now. Needs to try and find two wins in a row in order to win this to with a game five and then a victory in his favor to go up against Luna in those lower finals. But so far, Balloon Boy starting out very confident. Has found a decent bit of damage here with this bow. Nothing too crazy, but mm -hmm. I mean, then again, Terrorist just trading that out so comfortably with so few Ooh. hits. Yeah, super. Wow! That's huge, though! And the side uh, And that's gonna. Anonymous. Oh! But I have the options to make it back, in fact. That was crazy. So well played by Anonymous there. And now the damage is so even. Catches what? the jump with that end take. He's done that twice now. That, that's such a such a strange option to go for, but he knows what he's doing with that. That's like. That's just goaded right there. Goes for the Boy jump there. Avoid those vaccination marks. Now back on the stage, the lead he had now fallen apart here. Needs to try and close out this first stock. Oh, but the nair is almost going to do it. One more center stage will certainly be enough. The down air could have been enough for side air. Not quite going to do it for Balloon Boy. Wow. Down air, that is going to be it for Balloon Boy's first stock. Anonymous taking a small lead here. Balloon Boy can close this first stock of Anonymous very quickly, but. Anonymous is aware and is going to play around it accordingly. This has to be a very, very quick equalization for Balloon Boy. Yeah, and not quite enough there with that Nair. Looking for another one there. Gets the D-Light into Ooh, recovery. That's, that's going to do it. Bro. Very yeah, nice. I was saying this yesterday that gravity cancelling that bow down by is a lot harder than it seems in comparison to on ground because of the lack of that splash hitbox. And so Balloon Boy landing that 
is a very, very good way to close out that first stock. Mm -hmm. Anonymous opting to build the damage here with the hammer as opposed to the axe that we've seen prior. That could be dangerous for him considering the bow being in the hands of Balloon Boy, but I mean, so far, so even. Yeah, and I mean, Anonymous doesn't seem to want to really do too much off stage here. Likes to play on stage, you get these big hits. And I mean, it's it's totally different from the last set that we just watched where both players just are not afraid to go off stage and get their hands dirty. But Anonymous Alex taking this lead here. Balloon Boy's in red. Not quite able to get anything off that. Balloon Boy gets an end light. GC ending, that's gonna send Anonymous Alex down. Goes for the dare, doesn't get the kill though. And now the damage is evened up. Nair comes out from Balloon Boy. Stomp's coming out from Anonymous. Can't get a hit. Dare's not gonna KO. Anonymous you know, just once again, around. Once again, both have both players deep in the red on the oh! second stocks. The unarmed <laughs> gravity kettle side heavy is a very interesting option. Balloon Boy narrowly surviving in the recovery. He's gonna send off the top. Balloon Boy taking back the small lead here, but very deep in this red state of health. If he can try and eke out just a little bit of value here, the side light though gonna go a little too far. And I mean, this is this is Anonymous's last stock if he doesn't win this here. This would send him out of the tournament. Balloon Boy needs to get as much damage as he can. Anonymous needs to get this KO as quick as he can. Goes for the hammer. Dash oh, up that's there. risky. Ooh. Wow. Evens it up just like that. In yellow. Needs to play this super carefully. Balloon Boy. Resting him. Has the blasters in hand. Goes for a DC D light. It's so much. Oh my goodness. That's really dangerous if you're anonymous. That's so much value for Balloon Boy. I mean, Terror does do a lot of damage, but not so much that, like, you can just come back from a huge deficit like that. D-Light into the recovery. Not going to quite do it. One more, though, will almost certainly be enough for Balloon Boy. You see D-Light into the set. Gonna throw the blasters away. Gonna go after the edge guard. Got to be careful against the hammer that has so much vertical Ooh. pressure there. The recovery, wow. even in the top left corner, Balloon Boy going to close it out 3-1 over Anonymous Alex, sending him into the lower finals against Luna. Yeah, and I mean, guaranteeing him a top three. Anonymous Alex, great run from him, getting fourth place in the tournament. That's huge. I mean, he beat Absolutely. the world champion Impala 3-1. That's that's just crazy. So well played from him. I mean, that's that's awesome. And uh, now Balloon Boy facing the number one seed for the tournament, I believe, and PR number one in North America. I'm excited to see this. I mean, I've seen these two play in ranked, but here in tournament, it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's it's the tournament mentality really does have a, a big effect on how you play these out. And I mean... Diana into Lucian, I think, is going to be a very interesting one as well because Luna is going to be opting to rush down Balloon Boy mm -hmm. a lot, especially with those guitars. Uh, but when Balloon Boy is forced onto the blasters, those dead zones are going to be really dangerous if Luna gets in with those guitars and forces him to back up to find those hits. And so, going into this, I mean, Luna has the tournament experience over Balloon Boy, but yeah. this genuinely could go either way. With how Balloon Boy's been playing today, and who he's been taking out in tournament. I have faith. I have, I have full faith. This could go all the way to a game five. This could be either player's victory. So, I mean, Luna obviously is going to be hounding to get that rematch against Java in the grand finals, but I'm opening up with a good bit of Katar's damage to start it. Yeah, and honestly, I think that Luna gets a loser side buff. He, like, kind of realizes, you know, all right, I, I really got to start playing my best here. And... Oh, oh, dude! Wow. <laughs> Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's really just not afraid to, to go in off stage and I mean already the game is so much faster paced than the previous one. Luna always trying to put pressure on the opponent. Gets that D-Light in the recovery, not enough to KO, but still big damage lead for Luna. Oh, what is that? <laughs> Dude, this guy that's is crazy. A, that is some freestyling. That's some absolute blast of freestyling right there. I mean that's not necessarily the most optimal option, but if it works out, yeah. Go off, King. Yeah, I mean, this guy is this guy is just crazy. He is the game is just so much faster paced whenever he's in the game, and it's it's honestly so much fun to watch. Oh, that's dancing. really ballsy and Balloon Boy. Oh, the weapon throw! Wow! No way! 
the calculations <laughs> on this man, the maths that he's doing in the background to find that weapon throw. I honestly half of me would say that wasn't deliberate, but I mean, you, you never really know. Hey, you know, uh, and already Luna's answering back. Okay. Wow. Dude, calm down. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all here for a good time. Whoa. Dude. Okay, Dude, yeah, just, just completely crazy. shutting that down. Yeah, that, that neutral signature is just such an amazing way to punish that that dodge. And, and you know, a full stock ahead, the Loon Boy. Even to play catch up once yeah. again. Definitely not afraid to do so. I mean, we've seen him, like, once the game gets faster, he can definitely adapt to it. Oh. The Clash as well. Doesn't opt to punish it any further. Getting good damage and in here. Decider. Has Luna in okay? the red. Okay! Oh! What a combo! Wow, that was like, that was so good. Evens up the game <laughs> just like that. And I mean, this I game feel like is. These two players. I feel like they're taking turns to find like yeah. incredible hard reads and, and just big turnarounds. And I mean, technically now it should be Luna's turn on this final stock. <laughs> and, and the Loon Boy, he can try and shut that down. Both players blasters in hand, and Luna, a small damage in here finds the down air. No follow up, but still making that space. He's like into the recovery. Wow. That's gonna be just enough, despite the low strength of Lucy. And, and I mean, despite 200 less damage being dealt by Balloon Boy, that was still a very close game. Yeah, I mean, the pace change is crazy coming in from like that last end of this one. So much faster pace, just insane combos from both players coming out. That that little weapon throw coming out from Balloon Boy on the on the second suck. I mean, and just the reads all around. These players are insane. That, that was so fun to watch. And Luna yeah. restarting his computer a bit. Oh, my bad. No, <laughs> I in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here is that weapon throw, Balloon Boy. Going for that neutral signature. Weapon throw up. Wow. Back up on Luna just getting a bit overzealous there and just getting stopped out by that weapon throw. And I mean, really just... I, I think that is one issue with being a really explosive player is you can just be shut down by the littlest things if you let yourself get too overconfident. Mm -hmm. The Balloon Boy was ready to punish it, but regardless, Luna just had more momentum that game. I mean, they were going very back and forth with these really big plays, but in between those big plays, the, the little chip hits and the, the little bits of neutral breaking were going in Luna's favor, which gave him that win in the end. Yeah, I mean... He's just coming out, swinging. The pressure is insane from this guy. He's always, always in his opponent's face. And mm. yeah, that was, that was crazy. A lot of offstage, like very different from what we saw last game. Both uh, Anonymous Alex didn't really want to go offstage against Balloon Boy, but Luna, not afraid to do it. A lot of offstage there. And I mean, we're getting into game number two, I believe on the same map. Was that Miami? I think so. I mean, the map stuff where Enigma uh air temple in miami so i wouldn't expect miami and yeah there it is Three, miami two, one, for this second four. game and yeah a, a change of scenery as well from the previous sets we have had because it's been a lot of a lot of apocalypse a lot of demon island but miami done double platforms the inability to go under the stage that's that's a bit of a welcome difference and so far luna once again opening up with some good unanswered guitars damage looking for a gimp right here down signature gonna ride down that wall not gonna be able to find the knockout and blue boy barely finding any answers here Okay, starting up a little bit there, getting two side lights in, but Luna answering back, gets that end light, side light, end light, goes for the recovery, doesn't get it, but goes for end sig, doesn't get it. Still a huge lead for Luna, another end sig, no punish, side sig, he is, he wants this kill right now. He's spamming. And uh, Balloon Boy just getting, getting damage, little by little here, punishing Luna for these, uh, these options. Oh, GCD sig, and that's gonna catch at the very top. And I mean, with the with the banning the stages, I feel like if you want a map, you can just leave Enigma and Western Air Temple, and then boom, whatever map else you left yeah, is the map. It's that they very can. unlikely that someone's gonna opt for those two Ooh. options. But the neutral signature, Luna, running out of options, but Balloon Boy can't close out the edge guard. We have seen that quite frequently. Balloon <laughs> Boy isn't able to find these final hits to secure an edge guard, and now Luna staying alive for it. Recovery though will close it out. Not too much damage dealt by Luna. But still, Balloon Boy having to play slightly from behind here. Yeah. You know, getting getting closer to even, but it just feels like Luna, as soon as he respawns, he's just right back in it, getting a bunch of damage off the bat, and then, you know, maybe struggles to kill a little bit, and then that's how Balloon Boy gets a little bit of damage in, but it's just been explosive. Just right off the bat from Luna. 
And like in the it's kind of crazy how the pace changes when Luna has blasters in comparison to Katars. Because we uh -huh. see him here now, he's, he's playing a bit of a slower game with the blasters in hand, but the moment he gets Katars, yeah. he is in your face all of the time. And that is a very scary player to play against when their playstyle almost completely shifts depending on different weapons. And now Balloon Boy looking for an early knockout with that neutral engine. We'll be able to find it. d into the recovery and Luna will take the second stock off Balloon Boy, poised to get up 2-0 here if Balloon Boy can't stop the bleeding. Wow, that movement is just crazy. I, the, the dash changes are so cool. It's so fun to watch people who can just move around like that. Balloon Boy, though, not, not, too, not too far uh, behind here. Needs to get a KO on Luna, who is in the orange, now in the red. But, oh, Ooh, huge DC. Yeah, that that's is big. yet another bow down signature that Balloon Boy is so good at spacing that sig and knowing exactly when it's hit. I don't think he's actually whiffed it. Yeah, it feels like he has I 100%. Have, he, might, he might have whiffed it like once or twice in our, in our block so far, but he's hit it more than he's whiffed it, definitely. Yeah, it feels like all these bow sigs that he throws out, they're, they're like like 99% accuracy on them. But I mean, Luna, it just feels like as soon as he spawns in, he just gets a lead somehow. This guy's crazy. It's the jump scare buff. I mean, he spawns in and just absolutely jumps you with whatever <laughs> weapon he has ready and, and it, honestly it's getting to balloon boy a little bit i think i mean he, he's once again playing from behind here he needs to find some damage but that's a big read oh but the fact that luna's off stage he's not down that down might isn't going to have that splash hitbox but the string isn't going to be guaranteed and balloon boy now in danger just about going to touch luna not going for the edge guard there giving a bit of respect katar's swapping over to the blasters for the knockout potential Balloon Boy still no weapon. Luna still starving this out, just keeping Balloon Boy out of any resources here. Neutral Light, will he find something to knock out? Won't go for the recovery. <laughs> it's still starving. <laughs> oh, oh, no that way. would have been crazy <laughs> if he hit the triple recovery. And there oh, it is. That's gonna do it. Yeah, Luna. Going up 2 0. I mean, Balloon Boy kept it close right to the end there, but Luna just kept him starved out the entire time, and Balloon Boy. Yeah, I mean, now needs to reverse 3 0. Every stock was like very similar there. Luna starts off, has a huge lead, has Balloon Boy in like almost red, and then Balloon Boy slowly gets it back and then falls and then evens it up. Boom, Luna gets a huge lead again, evens it up. It was crazy. I mean, it was like just, it was just like that, like every stock. Yeah, and if, if you're Balloon Boy, you got to be figuring out how you change the pace, right? Mm -hmm. Because if there's a consistent trend like that, there has to be a way around it because it isn't just an issue of, of inconsistency. There is a game plan that Luna is is working with, and there's definitely going to be counterplay for it. But Balloon Boy has very little room to find it. Like he needs to get that done as soon as possible, otherwise he may be going out in third here. Once again, he is down 0-2. He needs to get three games in a row to win this set. Yeah, and gonna stay on uh, Miami. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Luna starts off, doesn't get the weapon. Balloon Boy has the advantage here, but immediately on blasters versus blasters. Balloon Boy gets the first hit. It's a nice read. Big damage coming out from Balloon Boy here. Hasn't been touched yet. Gets another down air. Gets another D light. Okay. Okay. Wow. Complete reverse of the situation. Now Luna kind of playing from behind here. Guitars in hand. Still hasn't gotten a hit, and Balloon Boy has him in near red. Into red, could this be a flawless stock? That'd be crazy way to, to start the comeback. Last time we saw Balloon Boy get close to that, he did actually start to lose out a little bit. D lines the recovery, and that's gonna be it. Balloon Boy, wow. one hit taken on that first stock. Very good blasters play. And I mean, we're saying he needs to turn the tables, and that is a really good start, Luna. But we know Luna has really good clutch games, so Balloon Boy cannot afford to be celebrating anywhere near yet. Needs to secure. <laughs> this lead and, and make sure it, it stays in his favor he cannot get you know overconfident overzealous because luna will take that away from you if you let that slide yeah i mean he's getting good damage here making sure not to take much that's huge when you have like a, a lead like this getting hit a little bit there but as long as he goes even that's huge for him and he is just trading hits after Ooh. hits Crucial like that is a very interesting mix-up option, but it does work out very well. And Balloon Boy still, yeah, trading out this damage. Do you like the recovery? Not going to quite do it, but I think one more probably will be Ooh. it. And size signature once again, just jump scaring Luna there with the <laughs> big recovery. Not 
going to catch, but still Balloon Boy keeping this even. Regardless if he loses his stock right here, he's still got a big advantage in this third game. Right? Yeah, I mean, Luna is deep in the red. Almost anything's going to knock him out here from Balloon Boy. And, I mean, Balloon Boy hasn't even lost his first stock here, and he still has the advantage. Like, that's that's crazy. Still not enough to, for Luna to knock out. Sayre, not going to do it. Tries to get the Ooh, weapon. Oh, that was through. close. Oh. Oh, no, oh. no way he touches. Wow. And the punish as well. Balloon Boy just stopping that Sig in its tracks. And now oh. we've got a whole stock up here. The grounded recovery still not enough. Balloon Boy holding on for dear life to this stock. And I mean, every hit, like I said, it's, it's going to be big value. And trying to go in deep. I mean, if you're Ooh. on your last legs on a stock, going in deep for an edge guard is honestly not that bad of a play because you could secure something that... I mean, could just win you the game. And if you, if you lose all that interaction, not a huge deal. Yeah. But Balloon Boy, still a full stock ahead. Gotta be careful though. No Luna has. Yeah. He has that final stock buff. This is not the time to get overconfident. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen him do it in this in this tournament. But right now, Balloon Boy is doing a great job. Gets him in the red. It's not looking like Balloon Boy is ever going to lose this. Recovery, oh, not enough recovery. to do it. But Luna deep in the red now. Another one will. Gets this air, do that air, and that's gonna Fair. do it. Wow. That was a convincing yeah. victory as yeah. well. Like that was almost double the damage dealt by Balloon Boy. And he he had control for almost the entirety of that game. There's that first knockout having only taken one hit's worth of damage. And we see it there with that side air that he was on his first stock while Luna was still was on his final. So Balloon Boy really I don't know what the adaptation really was there besides just almost being more aggressive than Luna in that game. Yeah, I mean, he was playing that super well, hitting most of his reads. And uh, yeah, huge win for Balloon Boy there. Definitely going to switch the momentum up. That's what he needs. Still down in the set, but uh, that was a big win. That was a big win for him. Luna, I think, experienced some problems and I joined the room again. And uh, he's going to restart his game and then get back in here for game number four. Yeah, and, and I think Luna needs to to be careful because we, we I mean, this set has been a demonstration of the fact that Balloon Boy is capable of playing at any pace. Like we saw with, with Alex that the pace gets slowed down, Balloon Boy can deal with it. Pace gets sped up, Balloon Boy can deal with it. So, I mean, regardless of what happens, we know Balloon Boy is capable. All right, Luna, Luna is gonna get getting back, back in, in here. here. We'll see if he bans not, Miami. Not losing. He's been uh, so far. Balloon Boy has been, I think, banning almost every time. So he's gonna leave Miami, and Balloon Boy is gonna Going pick back that. to it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, this it's it's a good start for Balloon Boy. We have to keep in mind though that Luna. I mean, he still has the upper hand in the set. He mm -hmm. still has, you know, he's one game away from securing that victory in the set and going back into the rematch against Java in Grand Finals. Balloon Boy still has his work cut out for him, yeah. which gives Luna a lot of space and a lot of time to breathe. And, and I mean, even if he loses this game, yeah. if he gets the read that he needs and, and the download that he needs for that final game, it won't matter if Balloon Boy takes this. So Balloon Boy needs to keep things mixed up enough that even if he, even if he wins this game, he can still keep the pressure up on Luna in the final game. Yeah, and gonna make it back from the edge there with uh, with the advantage, getting a lot of damage on Luna here. Starting off the lead, big DC no gonna come way, out. Dude. Wow, that KOs. That is huge for Balloon Boy. And already, just a huge lead starting up again. And I mean, that is just, that is exactly what you want if you're Balloon Boy. That has to feel good. The momentum is super in his favor. And, uh,. Uh, Luna getting a little combo there. Gets the read. Balloon Boy's in red. Close to find his knockout onto Balloon Boy, but Balloon Boy is finding a few hits here and there. Luna not able to find the read for that knockout of Katars. That is one of the few weaknesses of Katars is the lack of a KO confirmed combo. Balloon Boy Ooh. is going to actually slip up there on that edge, forced to use that recovery. And Luna, the perfect punish mm -hmm. coming in. Yeah, great punish from Luna there. Gonna opt for the guitars to build up this damage at the start. And uh, 
Blooming Boy still has a big lead though. It's another Not DZ. Again, wow. Not again, bro. <laughs> He's just... How many times is he gonna hit that sig? Like it's it's honestly too much at this point. Yeah, I think I've seen him with it with it one time, and he I mean he just uses it in the perfect scenario. Like that is that is huge for him. Two D light stairs coming Wait. back to back. Yeah, it's taking a damage lead over a stock ahead now technically in terms of damage, and Luna needs to catch up. I mean we know Luna has that final stock buff, but so far we're yet to see it, and Balloon Boy. I think a little bit overzealous with that neutral signature with the recovery. Almost going to be enough already. I mean, this game, we're barely two minutes in. Luna's already at risk of losing Ooh. the neutral signature and ascend at the weirdest possible angle. He might into the recovery. Going to drop the dodge coming in for Luna. Yeah, I mean, Balloon Boy feels like he's going to win this one, but you never know with Luna. Although he is deep in the red. I mean, almost Luna anything. Oh! Dude. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how is that is there even enough startup on, on Lucian Blast's side sync to react to it to dodge or was that just a perfect dodge by Balloon Boy? I mean Yeah it does like, equalize up the stocks. Okay, I mean you gotta you gotta still be a little bit careful here, but that's gonna do it. No, well, right, there it goes. Balloon Boy taking us to a game five, getting two games in a row. And despite that one being a little bit closer, still a full stock mm -hmm. to close out that game. And two bow down signature knockouts in a row for those first two knockouts. And that is every Diana player's dream right there. I mean, Diana players lay in bed at night dreaming of just finding those those early knockouts with that bow down <laughs> signature. And I mean, it, uh, Balloon Boy's making it a reality. Okay, this time Luna is going to ban Miami Doman while wow, we're going to Enigma. Really? Yep. I look away for a second and they bring us to a very, very strange pick. I mean, I guess if you want to keep like the multiple platforms and, and you don't want to have to deal with some of the other niche aspects of Miami Dome, you take us to Enigma, but that's dangerous because, I mean, that top platform is going to give a lot of opportunity for very early vertical knockouts. And both players having blasters means Ooh. that is very scary. But we're opening up with a nice signature to end that three-piece combo. Yeah, still starting off with a lot Ooh, of damage. Gets he actually it. whiffed the down sig. It's real. <laughs> he can miss it. He can miss it. Still though, sizable lead for Balloon Boy here, getting them into the red. Then he needs to get some hits. Gets the dare in the end light. Doesn't get anything else off of it, but still needs to come back slowly here. Nice try there, giving him that space down there as well. Balloon Boy needs to not afford to get. Floppy there on the edge. Does find the side there as Luna comes around to the left side. Another one. Well, wow. Again, and will take the lead head. There's no way we live in a universal balloon boy reverse three O's Luna for grand finals, right? Like there's no way. Yeah, that I mean This is this is kind of crazy. He has the lead here. When he gets Ooh, the recovery, recovery, evens it up. Perfectly even here. Two stocks each. And I mean, it feels like it's happening, Balloon Boy. Has had the lead right now. Can't it's even curse though. It. We can't afford to curse it. We really can't. For Balloon Boy's sake, we cannot afford to curse that. You know, we know how scary these guitars can be in this edge guard situation. Balloon Boy needs to be careful here. Spacing it very well. Finds the T-Light into the neutral. Air. Two neutralized, mm -hmm. in fact. The slap side air will come through. Luna trading this damage very well. Yeah, super even right now. So this is the first time Luna's had the lead in a long time. And it's just it's just by one hit. So I mean if that doesn't say how well Balloon Boy's been playing, like, what does? This guy's this guy insane. Oh, uh, Actually making good use of this Enigma pick and making use of the platform very well. Balloon Boy not so much, but the oh. into the recovery! Not quite gonna be a pick. Oh, another one! Okay. Oh, what?! That, I, I feel like that was a misinput, input, I feel and like yet it, it too. still worked out. <laughs> but, yeah, he, he, got, he caught the, the correct dodge with that end and that is gonna KO. No way he... okay. I was gonna say, if Luna instantly equalized that up, that would be like a poetic way for this game five to go, but still, he's he's capable of doing it. The clash. Wow, oh, catches the dodge. the dodge! Wow. And last stock here for both players. This is this is their tournament stocks. This is gonna decide who goes has to be in careful. the finals. This is I mean, this is the territory for Luna to really start to, to demonstrate who he is with that final stock buff weapon. Okay, this is dangerous. Last time we saw Balloon Boy getting starved like this, it was really, I mean, it, it led to 
a very, very painful final stop for him. Yeah. That was managed to get the blasters in hand. No punish on that neutral light. And I mean, players Blue Boy, it down a fair bit. He doesn't have as much tournament experience as Luna, so he's got to be feeling he's got to be feeling something in this situation right now. Oh no! Luna's starting to take it, take off. Gets another side light. Has the, a big lead here. Bloom Boy finally on his back foot. I mean, this is like one of the first times in the entire like since it, since the comeback that he's been down. You know, floating around every Ooh. option that Balloon Boy is trying to put out side here. And that's dangerous. Goes for the side air. And now he's forced onto the edge. Down signature not going to connect for the recovery. Wow. And that's going to be it. Luna snaking it away from Balloon Boy <laughs> at the last possible moment. I mean, that was... What a close set. That was crazy. That was such a good set from Balloon Boy. I mean, he almost took it all the way. Reverse 3-0 against the best player in North America right now. Yeah, I mean... Still, it's a loss, but he has to feel good about that. He played insane. Yeah, dude. I mean, what a close way to go down. Like that. It was just that last stock situation. I think the nerves really did come in for Balloon Boy because he started to realize I'm one stock away mm -hmm. from knocking Luna into third and getting into grand finals. But that place is going to be going to Luna going into his grand finals. Balloon Boy still third place. An incredibly amazing placement given the power ranking of 41 going into this. Yeah. Coming out in third with some incredible upsets along the way. Very well played by Balloon Boy. And that does mean that our grand finals is going to end up being the run back of Luna versus Java that we saw in winner's finals that went down to game five in a last hit situation. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited. I mean, that, that is a fantastic grand finals to have. Yeah, I mean... It's honestly crazy. Both these players have been in grand finals in both the tournaments. So, like, that's that's incredible. They won 2v2 together, and now they're both in grand finals of 1v1s together. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's almost poetic, to be honest. <laughs> I, like, it, it, it just works out like that. Now we're just waiting on Java to, uh, to get into the lobby. But, I mean, if, if Winner's Final was anything to go off of, I mean... This is going to be one hell of a set because Nella put up a very, very good fight against Luna. In that final game, he just managed to close it out. And the momentum, especially by Java, was just very, very impressive. And so going into this, Luna is going to have that hype of coming off mm -hmm. of a game five. He's going to be really, really psyched up going into this because obviously that last set, if you're Luna, it being that down to the wire, you're really, really on edge. You're, you, the adrenaline is flowing and you're going to be feeling it going to that grand finals. But... I mean, they've got to play the long game because regardless of what happens, if Luna wins first set, there's always the, the second fullback set to go into. So Java has that room to work with and that space to breathe. Yeah, and right now Java kind of stalling. He's in training mode right now. Launched the game immediately <laughs> when he's in training mode. So, I mean, let's get this guy in the game. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you got you got to make sure you're uh, you're, you're warm and ready for uh, for that that final grand final set. And it looks like we do have a Moose Wars avatar popping up in the bottom left of everyone's screen. Hopefully, someone can get their hands on that and join the gang of people with Moose Wars avatars. Congratulations to whoever gets that. Yeah, it's just going to be waiting on Java to get in here. I'm curious to see that if. If we go to a, a bracket reset, and if we go to like a very down to the wire thing, I'm curious to see if we see a legend swap by Java. Yeah, Java right now, he's ready to get in. I think Luna's AFK because Java's asking for an invite and Luna has not done that. Okay, there we go. There we go, there we go. Into the lobby, into the lobby, Java comes and I'm expecting the Hattori lock in. I mean, that's what he won the... Uh, the winners finals with yep. yet there it is getting into our grand finals we will be in a moment and I i'm just i'm looking to see whether luna is like he's because i mean we realize even as casters that the sword for java was really working out well against luna's bosses um getting into those dead zones and, and making really really good use of that positioning I'm curious to see if Luna is going to be then opting to stick with the Katars anytime he can when Java is on the sword to mm -hmm. try and get more rush down and not have that dead zone. Yeah, I feel so like he probably will be... because, I mean, the sword mm. was working so well for Java into the blasters. Like, with Katars, you have, like, Nair and other other stacked options to deal with that, but on blasters, it's really hard to, to deal with someone that's just staying right on you. Yeah, it's... 
Yo, I think we are just uh, waiting to get into this, and yeah, here, here we, go. we go into the map banning. And yeah, we see it there. The stats. I mean, Java being on the uh, on the worst side of the bracket is is very big because it's very rare for Luna to even be on the lower side of a grand grand finals, especially mm -hmm. in a North American tournament. Like, if it's online, Luna is expected to win, and he's almost always on the winner side of those grand finals. So, I mean, the fact that Java is is on winner side alone is a very very huge Three, thing. Getting two, into one, this first game on Demon Island for grand finals. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, Luna gets the first weapon. Java gonna get armed as well. Flashes into in the spear, probably what Luna wants here, but gonna gonna get rid of the blasters immediately. Goes for the guitars, but Java kind of kind of not letting him get that. Finally, though, Luna picks it up. Gonna gonna get some some good damage off the start. Catches him with Ooh, the end line, yeah. but Java gets a D light off of it, and uh, very even here. Off stage, Luna goes for the end take, doesn't get punished for it though. Go hit some end lights. Still and so Java's even. slowing this down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, you the recovery not going to come through. The recovery to punish the neutral signature, but you know, still with a small damaging. The D-Lane to recovery again, Ooh. and that will do it. Finding the first knockout on Luna. Not too, too damaged on this first mm -hmm. stock. I mean, he's in the orange, but he's not like really deep in it. Like one, one warplay signature won't quite be enough, I don't think. And Luna now, the Katars in hand, a really high momentum weapon that we see does have. I mean, Blasters definitely can rack up that damage at Katars. Nothing really builds up damage like Katars when you're really in that flow state. And so Luna opting to find that right here. Java, mm -hmm. the sword in hand, not the weapon he's been opting to use against Luna's Katars so far. And that's not a good start for him, really. Yeah, I mean, Luna's getting some damage in here. Has Java in the yellow, getting closer and closer to orange here. Deep yellow now. Luna's getting damage, but that side zig's going to come that out. That is huge. And I mean, Hattori's side zig on Spear is, I think, one of the best zigs in the game. It's so fast. And it has actually like a lot of priority, surprisingly. And now yeah, you're, th you're you're throwing out that kick, Ooh. which is a, that disjointed hitbox, and and Java makes really good use of that sig. I mean, it's it's probably his most used sig on her toy besides maybe sword neutral sig, mm -hmm. which we see a fair bit. But the sword now, I mean, there, there, there it is, is, that signature, and we do see the sword into blasters matchup coming in again. Ooh. But the vertical game of blasters really, really punishing Java here. Yeah, I mean, this game right. is still, you know. The pace is still rather high, but not as high as the last uh, last winner's finals that we had. Big game from Luna there with that weapon throw, and he's got a sizable lead here. <laughs> Goes for the ground pound. That's that's crazy. It's absolutely absurd to go for that. Luna <laughs> starving away once again. Mm -hmm. Another Ooh. going for the unarmed side heavy. That's very very interesting. Still no weapon in hand. He's been doing a really good job at starving out his opponents here today, and yeah, almost lapping Java in damage now with this stock lead. Yeah, and game number one looking more and more in favor of Luna here, getting oh, a big edge guard. No. Oh, a lot of damage though off of that. Java hits a GC D light there. Luna trying to get back to stage, not going to be able to with Java that perfect. getting that perfect edge guard with the GC D sig on unarmed. Now, I mean Luna has a pretty. Pretty fair lead here, but Java's gonna be weapon starving him. Wants to extend as much as he can here with the weapon. Luna picks up blasters though and hits an end light. Sends Java into the red. Gets a Sare. Luna's barely been touched. Java. Oh, Java. Luna gets the D light in the recovery. recovery. Wow. Game number one goes to Luna here in grand finals. And I mean, just a reminder, Luna needs to win this set and then win another one too, since Java has that advantage mm. from being in winner's side. Yeah, absolutely. And Java banning out Demon. I mean, we're seeing a, a repeat of what we saw in the winner's finals of bouncing back and forth between Demon Island mm -hmm. and Apocalypse. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we see that continue yeah. throughout the set. But uh, yeah, obviously, Java sticking with the Hattori off last because, I mean, Three, we saw two, it go to all the way to game one, five and Java oh. stuck with the Hattori. So. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I think the only scenario we might see a swap is is if you go all the way into a bracket reset and it gets really tough for Java with that uh, Hattori. But I mean, so far, it's getting a little bit tough Ooh. with those guitars. A little bit dangerous there for Lunan there, but still going to come out on top. A lot of damage. Java's in orange, Lunan's in light yellow. Still doing really good at weapon starving there. Java doesn't pick up the weapon and uh, is still going to get starved, but he is still... He's still a, a threat when on unarmed. He always gets some some sort of crazy option. But Luna 
Getting a lot of damage in here. Outspacing the swords, uh, swords Sair. I mean, this is the matchup that we were talking about that has been kind of favoring Java, but now Luna seems to have figured out how to play it. Goes for the NSYNC. Wow, yeah, really that's going to catch. Adapted really well, and, and that's a really big lead for Luna. Like, deep in the yellow, early in the orange on this first stop, Java playing a very big catch-up game here. Mm -hmm. and if you're if you're on winner side grand, sure, you can afford to not put in too much energy in the first set, as long as you don't let your opponent get too Ooh. comfortable. And speaking of comfort, Java, exhaustive recovery after exhaustive recovery will be able to make it back to the wall. A not too scary. much damage taken as a response, but I think the spear is really struggling into these blasters right here. The spacing is just not working out, especially in this vertical play. Yeah, I mean, Luna seems to have figured something out here. Gets another NSYNC KO, and this is like the first time that Luna's had a big lead versus Java. It's always been, you know, Java kind of kind of on top, Luna coming back a little bit, or Luna getting a big lead and then getting gimped, but this is the first time Luna's got a full two-stock lead here almost, and uh, Java needs to do something about this. Getting a little damage in, and this is where, like, this is where the kill efficiency really comes to hurt Java. I mean, he hasn't been able to really kill Luna at any lighter percents. Finally gets the KO on Luna, but Luna was deep barbecue sauce red. So, mm. I mean, if Java keeps playing like that, Luna just needs to go even with him and he'll come out on top. Java needs to get something big here. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing some of that sword dribbling come in that we saw previous that really gave Java a lot of momentum, but Luna... Shutting it down pretty quick and Java throwing away the sword, but that is a sort of weapon throw tendency that we have seen Java have a little bit that sometimes works in his favor and sometimes really bites him mm -hmm. because wow. you're, just, you're risking disarming yourself. Ooh. And speaking of risks, Java taking a huge one off the side here, Luna. Dude. Holding him out there. That was crazy. Java over a full stock behind, just going for all of these little neutral lights to try and find space. Yeah, I mean, Luna played that offstage encounter like so well, dipping down like really far, farther than Java expected, and he was not ready to punish Luna for that. Luna what already has Java in red. Oh. I feel like Java is more confident now on this final stock than he has been this whole game. Like he's going for these, for these plays and, and these interesting options that we just didn't see. Maybe that's an, an issue of just getting warmed up and getting ready for this set. Yeah. Having been you know off the game waiting for this set to happen, but. Don't. This is not when you want to start getting confident when you're a full stop behind in your final stock in game two. Like, it is, it, this needs to be happening earlier. The neutral light. And there it is again, that KO efficiency job. I still just not finding the knockout. <laughs> Fighter, you know, still gonna live. Weapon throw down. The ground pound will finally secure it, but now Java needs to play a perfect stock here in order to take this win. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Java get gimps, but a lot of pressure's on him right now. Luna's not going to go off stage. doesn't want to give Java any any, uh, any room to get this comeback. Although Java getting a lot of damage in here. Okay. Wow, okay. Okay. Oh, oh no, the DI. <laughs> we had, like, the same <laughs> reaction. It's, it's amazing the moment you, you see the D-Light catch in a pro-level game and, and your opponent's in red. It's like, okay, well, I don't even need to see the second move. I know it's over. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, that, that was, I mean, that, that's what I was saying, is like, Java finds these dribbles with, with the sword just at, at like some of the most opportune moments, but Luna was just ready to, to, to shut down the flow state right there, just right at the end. And I mean, Java did do more damage mm -hmm. that game, just 20 more damage, but still, that shows the fact that that's just the, the issue of efficiency, right? I mean, yeah. Luna did less than 600 damage and still, he, he wasn't getting like early gimps, he was closing out the socks just at a very early point because in Vasa's d recovery, while it's it's a little bit tougher to catch that d on the ground oh. with how Telegraph that move can be, it does knock out very early in comparison to other KO confirms. And, and Luna now playing a very confident game going into this game yeah. of three. And, and... It feels like Luna's just like kind of felt or figured out what he needs to do against Java here. He's up 2-0 in the set, but even if he wins this, the set returns to even, 0-0, zero, zero, and he has to win a whole nother set. So, we'll see. I imagine that if Luna wins this, Java's gonna take a little little five-minute break, try to ice Luna out, and uh, 
trying to reset his mental, but we'll see. Java still not out of this, both in the red here. He's gonna go for the NSIG, gets that D-Light into the recovery. Has the has the lead in the first uh, first stocks here, but it is in the red. Is a nice now, the dare spear in there. into the blasters matchup, which Ooh. really hasn't been favoring Java Ooh. too much. Luna knows exactly what Java's gonna go for. Recovery. Not gonna knock out. Java needs to find something efficient as soon as possible. It has to stop this bleeding. Mm -hmm. In there, not gonna be enough. The recovery <laughs> finally going to do it, Java. That's that's one of the more efficient stocks we've seen out of Java so far. I mean, finding the mm -hmm. recovery to knock out there, that's that's very, very safe. But still, the damage has been dealt on this second stock. I mean, he has he's once again being forced to play catch up. And when Ooh. I mean, even though he has this room to work with, don't want to let your opponent get that grand finals reset. No, you definitely do not. I mean, with a deal out recovery, not enough to KO though. Another one will. Oh, goes for the N-Sig, but uh, unable to get it. And it feels like once Luna like, throws out a SIG, there's just many more are going to come out until he gets punished and then he starts to, you know, go for something safer. Hmm. Gets that weapon throw. That's just... Oh, that was nice excited to find the chase dodge as well. Yeah, and I mean, Java has brought this back. Oh, just barely misses that end take. Doesn't get punished for it, though. And then dash jump there off stage. Punishes that Very ground pound with this air. Punish. Oh. That, a bit less so. Oh. oh, Luna knowing he's going <laughs> to go for the D-Light there. Wow. Well, the side sig to catch the dodge as well, Java. Very well played on that second stock there. Mm -hmm. Finally taking the lead in this set. Java needs to get some value here though, because Luna can he plays this up very, very efficiently and the grounded recovery will do just that. And now down to final stocks in this game three of the first grand finals set. Luna immediately opening up with some explosive wow. guitar play. Goes for something big there, but you know, get, gets a, quite a bit of damage off this. Java getting closer and closer to the orange. Java finally gets his first weapon on this stock. And uh, starts answering back now. Oh, catches him with that D-Light. Oh, a little dangerous there from Luna. Uses a GC on the edge there, but doesn't get punished for it. Gets a lot of damage now with the blasters. Getting closer and closer to D-Light recovery range. Drop a side, side light into the recovery. Weapon throw into end light. Weapon throw, no end light this time, but goes with oh, the D-Light. Oh, the d Wow, for I some feel reason. I like that recovery would have been optimal. Though, yeah, for some reason, no out. KO from Luna there, but still a lot of damage. But, I mean, you can't really be doing that in this kind of situation. Oh, you know, okay, well, yeah, jump recovery. He, gets, he gets away with it. He will find it, yeah. Wow. Down to the last stock situation, but yeah, 3-0 in favor of Luna for the Grand Finals reset. Yeah, that is crazy. Going to be a bracket yeah, reset here. Fuss. And Dude. Java's just going to lock in. Usually he likes to, you know, ice out his opponents. That's something that Luna does as well, but he's ready to get back into it. He was playing a lot better in that, that last game there. It's a lot more even. Went to last dog red there. So I think he's, uh, I think Java's finally warmed up. And this is our final set for the day. One yeah, that it will be. And going straight back to Apocalypse for this game number one. If you're Java completely cleanse the mentality that you've had from that final set. You can't afford to get tilted off getting 3 0 on that first set because you've got a whole extra one to play against the exact same opponent. And so far, very back and forth in this first game. Oh, it doesn't catch the human dodge. He had the correct read, but doesn't manage to catch the dodge. Yeah, and I mean, this this start is a lot more even. Gets that GC D-Sig punish. And yeah, the damage is like almost perfectly even here. And it goes for the... Oh, goes for the GC side sig and almost got exclamation okay. points there. Java though, starting to starting to come out, come out big here. Catches him with the NTIC, not enough to KO. Oh, knocks off the platform. That's really, really unfortunate. Neutral light. Java kind of running away with his first off a little bit, but now that he's on the spear, might struggle to find the knockout. Ooh. Never mind, the side sig actually does come through with Java looking a completely different beast in this first mm -hmm. stock of this first game in the reset. Yeah, he's looking a lot better here. Taking lead off the first stock. I mean, Luna answering back. Puts Java in the red. Java still hasn't gotten any hits. Needs to get some extra credit here. Recovery from Luna gets punished by Java. Oh, catches him with that side light. And uh, has Luna in the yellow here. And oh no, the option's just not there. Yeah. Unable to get back. Still good damage. Not, not the best, but... 
I mean, he's in yellow. And any advantage is an advantage here. I mean, these players are so close together. But Luna, weapon starving Java here. But I mean, as you can see, Java's not afraid to go in unarmed. And uh, both of them are going to pick out their secondary weapons now. Luna has the guitars, Java has a sword. Both in orange. Java I see the matchup has been like... slightly tougher for Java here with the sword into the guitars, and we're seeing from far away the sword now. Right into the recovery, not quite going to do it. Luna holding onto the scene. Wow! wow. The, the unarmed D-Light into the weapon throw. I feel like... I don't know if that was true. But that has to have been very close to I think least. I think it was true. That, that was so optimal from Luna there. I mean, like, unarmed recovery was not going to KO, but he picks up that the blasters and gets the KO. And, I mean, now this game is starting to run away uh, in favor of Luna. Getting a big lead here. Had Java deep in the orange. Getting closer and closer to red. Full stock lead. Overtakes him in damage here. Java gets the No! Delight. Doesn't have the dodge for the second downlight as well. Side signature will come through. Not quite going to be enough. Luna is still surviving. Goes for the recovery to get that, that verticality right there. A side sig punished by the net as well. There's a side sig. Once again, side sig coming through. And now Java again playing from the back foot here. Luna going to spawn in onto this final stock with a big advantage. Mm -hmm. Guitars in hand. Java. Ooh. Throws it away. He picks up blasters. This is what he wants to kill. Java gets the read. Stays stacked. The D-Light doesn't hit. Starting to get some damage here. I'm getting some deja vu from a previous yeah. uh, game right here, to be honest. Oh! What? Dude, no way! <laughs> he doesn't touch! Wow. What? What a terrible way to what? lose. <laughs> what a way for that first game to go. I mean, that was that was the Luna show for, I mean, the majority of that game. And then it, it's something about not only Java in the final stock, but Java in the final stock with sword is terrifying. Yeah. And then Luna just didn't have the options to get up there. I don't know quite what led him to being out there without those options. Yeah, I mean um, that was that was crazy. He was he was definitely feeling the pressure from from Java there. I mean, outputting so much damage on the sword, and reading him. But that's just that's unlucky. That's uh, something you definitely don't want to die to. But yeah, getting into game number two here. Java's gonna be up. One out. Starts with a double D like. That's really big. Getting a bit overzealous with the down signature there as well. Down to the side air, bro. You know. On a disrupting momentum with these blasters here. Rather not finding the reads with the spear too consistently. Sword in hand now. Disarms at the side air. Goes wow. for the down air as well. And that's going to be it. An explosive first stock. 30 seconds needed for a whole stock taken by Java here. Yeah, and it feels like that mm. last stock on the previous match just kind of killed Luna's momentum. It's kind of getting a... Uh... Oh, well, as uh, I say it, not. as I maybe say not. it, wow, oh, the dodge perfectly timed as well. He knew exactly where he was going to go for that side there to get that chase dodge. That was very well played by Luna. Exactly what you want if you're in his position to trade out that momentum. And now, yeah, I mean, and now the socks are completely even after Java had such a big lead there. That's that's huge for Luna. I mean, you, you definitely Red. like you need something like that after throwing away the last game. Big gimp for Luna. Weapon star catches him. Tracking like, up as ooh. well. Very close to getting an early KO there with a crazy weapon throw combo. And Java just can't get a weapon. Finally, he gets one. You know, opting not to weapon star, but gets that dealer recovery. Not enough to KO. I feel like the moment Luna has Java above him, Java tries to go for these recoveries and they just don't quite go through, especially on the spear. Luna has a really good understanding of how Java's going to play this vertical game. Yeah. It's when they're in this neutral, especially with Java having the sword in hand, that it gets very, very comfortable for Java. But, you know, into the third four, Luna will find that stock and the momentum turned around for Luna here as Java playing from behind. Yeah. On this final stock already. Finally gets a recovery, but Luna... Hasn't gotten much off of this stock here. Java's barely been damaged. Oh, gets back barely with the Nair. Wow! Just barely getting away with these Nairs. Canceling out Java's Dare. And uh, Luna getting a little bit of damage now. Has Java in the orange. But I think that's going to be it. Luna 
can't make it back. That so is, close, yeah. though. Java. Probably opting to stop with the sword. Yep, sticking with the sword for this final sock situation. We've seen him get a lot of work done with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, his but sword, hard. especially on the last stock, has been rather uh, rather explosive. He gets all the reads, but. Wait, no he throws it there. away! Still no dodge. Oh. And Luna really making those guitars work. And Java, I'm going in for a punish there, but doesn't manage to find one. And Luna looking poised to take this game. The side air comes through. Weapon wow. throw as well, and that's going to be it. Enough force on that weapon throw, despite it being incredibly slow. And 1 1 on the scoreline now as we head back to what I assume is going to be Apocalypse here yep. for this game number three. And yeah, there we see that, that beautiful dodge by Luna there. Perfectly. I mean, if you're Luna, you cannot afford to let Java get back from that game three. Right, like yeah. if if you put in all that effort, that is the last thing you need. And so going into this three, game three, two, I think one, the mentality is going to be a very important thing here because Luna did take that second game, mm -hmm. barely lost the first. Yep. Java needs to be incredibly careful about how he approaches this because I feel like he's going into a pretty confident Luna right now. Yeah, Luna, it definitely feels like he's he's got Java figured out here, and he's not afraid right now. He's just going in, trying to get all these hits, all these reads, and he is. He's coming out mostly on top here, but even even for this uh, for this stock, can he make it back here? Java. Oh, the dodge through. Ooh. But he catches the recovery, and that's dude. It. Wow. Java is making sort of like a string weapon with how he's playing in this set. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's so crazy. He's like one of the only players that that plays sword this way. Like Megdi, you see him play sword. It's very you know patient, get one interaction win, and not too much after that. Java though, on that consistency, really. Yeah, Java's just he goes for he just extends sword combos like so much it's crazy. But Luna Ooh, evens it up. Weapon pick up into the recovery as well. Luna reading that movement down that Java was gonna fade to the side there, and I mean th this is what uh is uh keeping the set so close is the fact that neither player is really letting a big lead run away from them too far, mm -hmm. especially Luna. He's, his equalizations have been so, so efficient. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it feels like as soon as he's done... Oh, oh no, no, no. Doesn't have the weapon to, to really extend that, that edge guard further. Double dare, though. Gets the weapon throw, stuff out the recovery, but Java makes makes it back, touches. And, I mean, Java has a damage lead here, but it's still Luna's pressure doesn't feel like it's, uh, it's diminishing at all. Now, for the first time, we're starting to see a little bit slower gameplay. Java tries to outspace him. Oh, the weapon will pick up into the D-Light. And the Pogo as well, Java. Ooh. He'll find a more efficient knockout right here. And pretty healthy on this second stock to do as well. Mm -hmm. Luna's been equalizing these stocks very consistently, but he needs a bit more damage to do so this time, although Java cannot afford to let that happen. He's already been pushed into the red right here, but these blasters hasn't Ooh. found a single hit to equalize. Does find... Gravity cancel down things with the D-Line to the recovery. I mean, we'll actually do it, and there's that equalization. It felt like Java was gonna, you know, run away with that lead, but it's just crazy. Luna just equalizes it so fast, and now Java has the lead here. Dark yellow, getting closer to orange to, to very, very light yellow uh, from Java. He has the lead. Spear in hand, gets a Sair, goes for the Pogo, doesn't quite oh. get it. Luna starting to get the some The play is really where it's been dangerous for Java here. And Luna, I think, trying to Ooh. make use of that. That's a very dangerous situation to just rebound and try and go for that Pogo. Going to go unpunished for the time being. Damage starting to equalize a little bit here. Java, one good signature away from a knockout. But Luna, we know, can equalize up the damage so quickly. And we're seeing it again. Coming down to the wire here. Both players in red. Java needs to get a kill. He goes for the side sig, but gets weapon thrown. And oh, the neutral sig wow. is gonna catch. Wow, that came down just to less hits there. That was crazy. Luna comes out on top with that end sig, and Luna is up two one now. And it's that issue of KO efficiency again, man. Like we, Luna, Luna was like in in properly into the red on that final stock, and and Java just took a fair bit of time to try and find those knockout options. Then when he went for one, which is the uh, the Side sticker show with the spear on the side. He's used that enough that Luna knew he was going for it. He threw the weapon down, punished that side sticker shirt, and prepared himself to get that knockout. I mean, 
Java, we we've seen his damage build is is really really good, but mm -hmm. he's almost opting to knock out with the spear more often than the sword, which is very unorthodox for a Hattori player. And sometimes it's very impressive, and sometimes it really comes back to bite him. Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, it's been very very even as of these last few games. Luna, for the first time, you know, kind of getting more damage there than Java. Java. A lot more efficient there in his kills, uh, and I think that's been really helping him equalize these these games. But right now, Java kind of icing Luna out here. Uh, probably gonna wait for the whole five minutes, make sure to <laughs> to make sure that Luna is not not you know feeling himself as much getting into game number four. Yeah, I mean. I even then, like, if you can take a break in, in between tournament matches, like, no, nobody's mental is completely flawless, and sometimes mm -hmm. you just need to take a second to just let yourself reset, let yourself calm down and, and think about how you're approaching this, and Java is going to lock in uh, Hattori. Go back to Apocalypse for this game number four. Java, once again, he's, he's in the same position he was in in a winner's finals. He was down 2-1 and won two games in a row. He needs to do the same thing once again here, and... Uh, Luna one game away from Three, getting two, the reversal one, onto one. Java, getting the reset victory and claiming him himself another loose rules victory. So Java already playing a much safer game, mm -hmm. demonstrating the fact that he's he's respecting how close things are getting here. Yeah, Luna catches the dodge there with the blasters, blasters versus sword. And it feels like, I mean, Luna's kind of figured out this matchup, doesn't struggle with it as much. First time getting hit there, Java getting some more. And uh, Luna has the lead. Gets a, gets a D light, but hits in such a weird spot. Can't get the stair off of it. Lands a stair though, Katar's in hand. And um, we'll see, gets that Nair into the dare. Reads reads the cross up, goes for a side sig, and has a huge lead here. Java's in the red, but hasn't touched. Oh, oh wow. No way. Wow. He was done as well, I think. Honestly, Java. Should have got away with just letting Luna fall right there. The neutral signature is not quite going to be enough. The weapons are almost connecting. Java, Ooh. very, very patient on this return to the stage. The neutral sig. They get thrown out here. Exclamation marks coming through. Does manage to make it back to the stage. Spear in hand now into the bosses. Luna's forcing Java to play these matchups that he isn't as comfortable with. And see it there as the down save comes through. Java now onto his second stock. Yeah, and I mean, both these players. They play their offstage so well, like Luna, he he really waited there and didn't try to go to touch the stage. He just wanted to land a hit on Java to, to guarantee his safety when he's coming back there. And I mean, that's just what separates like these two offstage. They're like so good from like most people that you see play offstage. That's why they're so comfortable to go down there versus each other. Because they know what they need to do to get back. And now Java evened it up has a small deficit here but very very slight could be evened up with just any any real strength but luna though Ooh, catches these dodge strings but big okay, string answering back from java oh my god with the spear the oh my god in. But they have a oh. no <laughs> way in the there as well wow that was insane red java's dodge like that was incredible that was like such a crazy interaction just there. Luna gets a huge combo. Java answers back with like a combo of his own and then Luna just gets a crazy kill off the top. And I mean, this is this is Java's tournament stock, no? Yeah, I, I mean, if, if he loses his stock here, then it's gonna be over. The D-Light into the neutral signature is the most efficient way to knock out there if you are Java and now he needs to play this stock very, very safely. He does have the sword in hand, but a damage coming in here. Mm -hmm. Throws it away, and now Luna over onto the blasters. Java going Ooh. in with the unarmed, though. Still, Java has this lead, starving. even though he's been on unarmed. That's like, that's pretty crazy. Both on their last stock here. Luna just needs to get this kill. Oh, oh. No, that's big damage. Still at the deficit, though, but he has the weapon. Definitely still trying to weapon starve. Java finally picks up sword, even in damage here. Java can't afford to take much more damage. He needs to needs to get damage on Luna here. And this is so even. They're both just trading blows. Java lands in there. Luna lands a Sare. Getting closer and closer to the red. Yeah, the end sig doesn't launch over the corner though. Bounces off the stage, and that means it's not going to knock out. 
Gava playing a very patient game here. Doesn't find the side air. Luna finds the string. Doesn't manage to get the recovery or anything out of it. Oh. Speaking of recoveries, there goes Java's. Go for another one. Maybe Ooh. the side air won't connect for either player. The down seek is going to get wow. played by the initial signature, and that's going to be it. Luna is going to get the grand finals reset and win it 3 1 in the second set. And he, that, is mean, that means he's going to be crowned as your Moose Wars Magma Mayhem 1v1 champion. Yeah, that was crazy. That was actually so insane. That was a crazy set. Luna really just clutched up there, brought it back. Was it 3 0 for the loser's bracket run? I think that was, uh, th was it 3-0 in the loser's side versus Java there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 3-0 on the uh, lower side set and then 3-1 on the uh, on the reset. What an incredible yeah. way to go about it. I mean, dominance all the way throughout. Yeah, I mean, the wins, they, uh, they kind of speak that Luna kind of dominated, but the matches were so close together. But honestly, it should have been 3-0 twice, I feel like, for Luna. He kind of... He kind of had a little bit of an SD on the first game there and then came back though, came back swinging and he is, he is the champion. That is, that was insane. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Incredibly well played by both players, by all players who made it far in this tournament. And uh, I mean, yeah, Java coming in second, incredibly, incredibly well played. Very, very good placement. Balloon Boy going out in third in the game five against Luna as well. Some very, very incredible placements by some very unexpected players today in a really entertaining tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was so fun to watch. I mean, that was those were great sets to cast. That was so much fun. And those were like Absolutely, insane yeah. plays too. Insane combos, insane reads, especially that KO off the top. Like that whole interaction from uh, from Luna and Java there was, that was incredible. Yeah, and with that being said, though, we are going to be handing it over to the big boss himself. AJ Moore is going to come in here and close things out for the end of this tournament. Uh, yeah. Regardless, though, yeah. Yeah, and I'll actually be sticking with you guys here a little bit as well. And, and I mean, overall, you guys brought up overall how the event turned out. Luna is your Moose Wars Magna Mayhem 1v1 champion going crazy going fantastic in this event and coming in from the loser side beating uh java there up in the grand finals and grand finals reset uh balloon boy getting third anonymous alex getting fourth impala radish getting fifth and snowy and mowgli on getting seventh as well congratulations to luna on winning the 1v1 event and also congrats to both the grand finalists of this event java and luna for winning the 2v2 event yesterday and uh really showing what they're made of so with that being said uh do you guys have anything to say before we hop on out here up on the screen there uh phil and uh hackle well i mean thanks for having us it was a blast had a lot of fun and uh i'll see you guys at valencia yeah, honestly, everyone have an absolute loss of NCI. I unfortunately won't be able to make it, but come BCX is going to be absolutely fantastic. So amazing, amazing Brawlhalla tournaments coming up. Thank you to everyone for uh, tuning in and joining in on such an amazing, amazing tournament. And thank you for AJ uh, for hosting this whole thing. Yeah, and uh, with that being said, NA, EU last week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed Moose Wars for June. We will see you guys in the very future with more Moose Wars events coming up later down this year and have a fantastic rest of your nights and also check out some of these people that were involved with moose wars in the background over these past two weeks here you guys go have a fantastic rest of your night peace out guys Places you've never been What about feeling?